at Trilogy.com. to our special live coverage of Tropical Storm Cristobal. Gulf Coast states bracing for landfall within the next 24 to 36 hours. I'm meteorologist Alex Wilson. We've got live team coverage along the Gulf Coast and here in studio. Our hurricane expert, Dr. Rick Nab, with us, along with Chris Bruin, meteorologist for Alicia Combs, and Mike Seidel. They are scattered along the Gulf Coast. We'll get out to them in just a moment. But, Dr. Nab, let's start with what the very latest is with this storm. It's a large storm, so we're already beginning to feel the effects. Yeah, we've got a lot of bad weather in Florida, especially central to northern Florida. We've had tornado warnings and we've still got some very heavy rainfall. Got a flash flood warning I'll share with you in just a little bit. So here's the center of circulation, but weather wise, this has been the center of action. This big band way off to the east, but there's a lot of wind and a lot of weather to come that's in between. And the winds of tropical storm force from southwest to northeast extend about 400 miles. So this is a large system, even though the center of circulation is still way off to the south. Conditions deteriorating on the northern Gulf Coast as tonight goes on. Uh, the visible imagery shows how you can see the exposed low-level swirl, but there's some thunderstorms perking up at times near the center, but even in the dry slot, there is some strong wind. Okay, now here's that band that extends from western Cuba all the way up through Tampa, and then there's some bands even in advance of that that continue to plague the area just east of Ocala. That's kind of where we've had some tornado warnings just uh, along the east of I-75, and we still have a flash flood warning in Bellevue, Florida in Marion County until 845 local time. Locally, near half a foot of rainfall in this area, and there's still more on the way. This is what the outer bands of a storm like this can do and cause big time flooding way away from the center. Now, as the bands on the northern side start to come ashore more frequently on the northern Gulf Coast, tomorrow, tomorrow night into Monday morning, this is the area where flash flooding is likely, especially Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Pascagoula, Biloxi up getting close to Jackson when we talk about uh, Monday, and then that will extend northward into places like Little Rock with a flood risk going up into Missouri, even Illinois. The rainfall totals, we can't pinpoint who's going to get exactly what, but the potential is there for somebody isolated to get a foot of rain. And when you consider that in Florida here we've had a half a foot today, it's not out of the question at all with a two day duration of an event to get eight to 12 inches locally. That model depiction of nearly a foot has been bouncing around. Sometimes it's been over New Orleans. We don't know who's going to get the worst, but the threat is there in both of the models with a lot of rainfall, eastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, but then it's not over. You take this big low, you move it northward through the Mississippi Valley, we're going to get five to eight inches locally along a corridor somewhere there in Arkansas, Missouri, up into Iowa as a lot of moisture is flung up through the Mississippi Valley. Uh, these systems don't just go away when they make landfall. That's just the beginning. Now, we do have hurricane hunters out there. The NOAA plane has been getting winds oh, closer to maybe 55 miles an hour on their instrument that can estimate surface wind speed. So maybe at the intermediate public advisory, depending on the hurricane, Hurricane Center does this might go up, but they're forecasting it to go up by tomorrow evening. We have a tropical storm, maybe around 60 miles an hour maximum winds. But Alex, we've been saying it over and over again, not just inside, but way yeah. outside the cone, not just coastal, but inland as well. Yeah, but this is one that's that's going to be, as we said, entirely survivable. You just got to be smart with this one, mainly staying out of the water, whatever Absolutely. kind. Absolutely. And uh, water could extend well away from this. We're going to break down the flood threat in just a minute, but I want to get you closer to the coast, uh, Louisiana coast in particular, storm surge and issue. Uh, of course, the flooding rainfall there as well. Meteorologist Mike Seidel is in Grand Isle. Mike, a lot of threats on the table for you. You've seen the winds pick up again, the push of salt water and then the freshwater flooding too. 
Yeah, we have seen the uh, water try to go out, but it can't because the wind is blowing onshore or just a little off from the uh, onshore direction, and that is piling the water up. So as a result, even though we're heading towards low tide this evening, we're seeing most of the beach underwater. Now look at the surf off the coast. Boy, these are these are some big, big waves. We're talking uh, wave heights running as much as 10 feet. I checked the, the buoy off the coast, and it's 9.8 feet. And as far as the wind goes, winds off the coast have already gusted as high as 51 miles an hour. So we're getting up there, uh, but here on the land, uh, wind peak wind gusts have only been about uh, 38 miles an hour. That's about 15 miles away. So we're going to be watching the water continue to rise. High tide tomorrow morning at 1055 is the tide of concern because we're going to have the push of the water along with the high tide. And there is a storm surge watch here. Water levels could be anywhere from two to four feet above average. Right now, last time I checked, uh, the water is about 1.6 feet higher than it should be. But uh, in the meantime, the wind will continue to ramp up. We've got squalls. Look at the radar now. The squalls that we're watching that could impact us here in a couple of hours are well off to our south and uh, east. They're going to come in here this evening, and that's when we get those rainfall amounts of one to two inches. And with those squalls, we will easily have tropical storm force wind gusts. The island, uh, pretty good shape right now. Uh, the beachfront properties here are behind this large area of sea oats and grass. And then there's a berm. There's a levee. You can see it goes up about 10 feet. So that's going to keep the water out of these uh, buildings and off most of Louisiana US-1. But they've got pumps, uh, eight pumps up and running uh, to pump the water out once the water, uh, once the uh, wind backs off. Uh, it's going to take a while. In fact, we talked to the mayor earlier. It's, it may take as much as three days to get all the water out of all the areas, especially on the other side of the island. Let's go back inland now, well west of New Orleans. Not worried about surge there, Chris Bruin, but more about the inland flood threat and there is a flood watch up into Tuesday. Yeah, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see. And this is what we do at the Weather Channel. I want to show you all aspects of the storm. So it's not just the center. You're going to see far reaching effects, especially east of the center, but also on the west side. What does a tropical system look like uh, in all of its, uh, you know, entirety? Well, we do our best to spread out to show you different locations and what it actually looks like. We're here in New Iberia, Louisiana. It's about 20 miles south of Lafayette. Uh, so that's kind of the, the major city here in central Louisiana. We're not too concerned with Cristobal. We know we are going to have thunderstorms. We know we're going to have gusty winds. Nothing we can't handle. But because of our positioning to where the center of the storm is going to be, it's really going to help us out, especially when it comes to storm surge and even rainfall. We'll have rain, but not as much as what we'll see farther east. There's a look at the weather conditions. Partly cloudy skies. We've had a couple of brief showers, not even real thunderstorms. But we'll see more of this as we go through the overnight. Tomorrow will be much more cloudy and also winds will start picking up. We drove down to the coast and if you're not familiar with Louisiana, it's not like what you think of when you think of Florida Gulf Coast. There's not a lot of sandy beaches. You have a lot of sugar cane fields, a lot of marshland and bayous. It's very swampy. So there's a few little beach uh, towns where people like to reside. We went to Sippermore Point. That's about 20 miles to our south. And we talked to a longtime resident. He's the local icon here, uh, Don Moe. And he's lived there nearly 16 years and has been through some of the worst that southwest Louisiana has had to offer, including Rita. Here's what he had to say about life on the Gulf Coast. We can do it our eyes closed. We, we're so used to hurricane prep. And then, like if I'm through, it, it's like it's it's a close knit, close to community. When I'm through, hey, my neighbor across the street, you need some help. You need some. Hey, can you come help me with this? So, sir, I, I, yesterday I helped two guys pull out some big offshore boats and put them on the trailers just in case. So you know, everybody helps everybody. So it's kind of it's kind of cool. Love that mentality here, and that's just one of many communities on the Louisiana Gulf Coast. This is part of their life. They're used to storms uh, coming through. With this storm in particular, we notice a lot of people kind of clearing out the lower level of their home. All the homes, by the way, especially on the water or near low-lying areas, they're elevated. And they need to be about 13 to 14 feet high. That's the code. And, you know, it's interesting. Throughout the show, Alex, we're going to get to hear a lot of little segments from Don Moe. He had a whole 
hurricane marker, Rita was taller than my head. And that was the like the notorious storm here for this part of the state. Thankfully, Cristobal is not going to be anything like Rita, certainly here in this part of Louisiana. But it's just interesting, so many factors on how insurance goes yeah. compared to the guidelines. And if your home is higher than that, you get better insurance rates. If it's lower than that, you have higher insurance for every foot below mm -hmm. those guidelines. So it's very interesting the way of life here yeah. on the Gulf Coast of Louisiana. Well, it's funny, like a true hurricane expert, Dr. Nab picked up on that. He said, I love the surge uh, markers on that sign next to him. So I'm excited we get to learn a little bit more about that. Chris Bruin, thank you so much. I want to head uh, to the east of where Chris is. Again, he's just to the south of Lafayette, Louisiana. Felicia Combs, our meteorologist, is in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, Felicia, been there a few times uh, for storm coverage. It's a great community, a, a real hot spot this time of year, but obviously the weather less than ideal for, you know, a trip to Biloxi, maybe hanging out inside the casinos. Yeah, Alex, and you know, it's it's um, so crazy that you would say that because that is exactly what we were just talking about. Yesterday we talked with the mayor and he said, you know, things are starting to get kind of back into swing. And then here we come with this tropical system that's kind of putting a damper on the weekend. So Biloxi truly is a water city behind me. Uh, you'll see some of the boats, some pleasure boats, some charter boats as well. We spoke uh, with one charter boat owner who said they were kind of trying to get things back into swing. And then, of course, this is coming uh, dealing with the pandemic and then on top of this tropical system. Not just pleasure boats, though. This is also um, that we should have had the blessing of the fleet this weekend for the shrimping boats and the fishing boats. We should be kicking off the shrimping season. That's not happening. So that's another thing that's being impacted by Cristobal this weekend. And then we've also got, as you mentioned, Alex, this is a playground. They call it the playground of the south. You're looking at those purple windows. You might recognize them. You might not. That's the hard rock there. Uh, and uh, we've spoken to some people who were there and they're kind of hanging out there and they said there there are quite a bit of people uh, there but of course they're stuck inside the casinos at this point because um, you know the weather has not been that great now right now we're getting a bit of a, a break in the rain and that's the good news but things are really going to begin to deteriorate here in Biloxi as we head through the night tonight and into your Sunday the current radar you can see we've got quite a bit of rain just offshore but the break that we're getting right now uh, isn't going to continue to last we had heavy rain earlier so we got a little bit of a taste of it earlier not just that, though, but the winds are going to continue to pick up. We could see uh, tropical storm force winds, hence the tropical storm warning. Uh, right now, sustained winds above 10 miles per hour. We're going to continue to see those picking up. And then, of course, not just the rain flooding a possibility, but storm surge also uh, a danger here for Biloxi because there's just so much water around. Guys. All right, thank you, Felicia. Yeah, the Mississippi coast has a lot to contend with, not just the storm surge, but the heavy rainfall and some strong winds. You're under storm surge warning, tropical storm warning, flash flood watch, you get the picture. Big storm like this uh, is starting to cause the conditions to deteriorate on the northern Gulf Coast. The winds are picking up. Uh, the buoy just offshore there, gusting to 36, gusting to 45 at the buoy just north of the center. So those strong winds are coming and they occupy a large area. So once it starts, it's going to last a long time. These are not tropical storm conditions, but gusting near 30 miles an hour at Grand Isle in New Orleans. That's the taste of things to come. We've had gusts up to 30 at Pensacola. And look at that, that wind that's blowing toward the west. That is going to pile up the water there in that shape of the coastline where southeast Louisiana meets the Mississippi coast. That's going to be the catcher's mitt. It's going to capture all of that salt water. That's why we got the storm surge warning in that particular area. It includes Biloxi and Gulfport and Long Beach and past Christian and Waveland and it's outside the risk reduction system in New Orleans. City of New Orleans not in that warning. Now these values are uh, roughly an idea of how high the salt water is above normally dry ground near the coast. The values are really small right now because we're going into low tide, but that's going to change tomorrow morning. Late tonight is low tide. Late tomorrow morning is high tide. That is when we could have a combination of the onshore push being strongest when the storm is just to our south and the high tide. So three to five feet above normally dry ground is the storm surge flooding that's expected somewhere in that area between the mouth of the Mississippi River and the Biloxi area. Now I wanted to highlight a historical uh, fact that should give you concern on the Mississippi coast. When Tropical Storm Isidore made landfall in 2002 in this same general area, as 
a tropical storm of about the strength that Cristobal was forecast to be, and it was a large system that had spent some time over Yucatan. There was a storm surge fatality on the coast of Mississippi, someone in a parking lot near a casino in their car, and they died in the storm surge. We mean business here. This can be life-threatening. Don't let history repeat itself. And again, tomorrow morning is when the high tide in places like Dauphin Island and Grand Isle are going to be maximized. And when you look at What's the storm going to be doing late tomorrow morning? It could be just to the south, and that's when the onshore push is going to be maximized. So late tomorrow morning, that's the real danger time. But you got to get out of these danger areas tonight because the winds of tropical storm force will be arriving tonight, and you want to be in your safe place and out of those storm surge prone locations before you go to bed tonight. And by the way, this Coastal problem, Alex, it isn't just the storm surge, it's the high rip current risk at the beaches that will last all the way into Sunday, even Monday. So salt water's a problem. Yeah. Fresh water is a problem. It's not just about the wind. Yeah, and I, would, I don't want you to be at one of those Tampa beaches, see things uh, clear out, and think Monday, all right, let's all get in and swim because there could still be some uh, issues. Speaking of Tampa, what do you say we look at the future radar around the city? Because heavy rain will continue for you as we head into the overnight and throughout the day tomorrow. It'll be off and on, but when you get those rain showers, they could be coming down in buckets. That's why the flood risk extends along the Gulf Coast into Florida and actually well inland. We'll break that down as our coverage continues next. Hey, take a better day start with the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 83 degrees under fair skies. Tonight, partly cloudy early with increasing clouds overnight. Low 72. Winds west southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Sunday, sunshine and clouds mixed. High 91. Winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy. Low 72. Winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Well, an early busy start for the hurricane hunters. Season kicked off, what, Monday, June 1st? Hasn't even been a week. And we've got a tropical storm. They have been out there flying through it. You're looking at that flight over the Gulf of Mexico. They're getting really important information. Uh, gives the forecasters uh, everything they need to know as far as the data with this storm so they can uh, make the most accurate forecast. So they're doing really important work. Hats off to those hurricane hunters, the guys and gals getting out into the storm. Right now, we're looking at a 50-mile-per-hour tropical storm. This is Cristobal. Uh, we've got pressure of 994 millibars. This is moving north, 12 miles miles per hour. You can see very east loaded. We have seen rain. We have seen water spouts. We have seen storms, even tornado warnings as far east as the Orlando, Florida area today. So a lot of rainfall likely from Florida all the way over into parts of Louisiana, and that will also extend inland. So I don't want you to look at this thing and go, I'm not on the coast. I'm not in the cone. I don't have any problems. That's not the case because this is such a large system with a lot of action on the east side. Here is that cone, but again, this is the center of circulation and where it will go. It does not mean if you're outside of this, say Mobile or Biloxi, that you're not going to see anything. In fact, you could still be dealing with surge, strong winds, and very, very heavy rainfall rates. You can see the track takes this thing into northern Louisiana, into Arkansas, and then to Dr. Nab parts of the Midwest. So there's going to be a rain, a flood threat, not just along the coast, but well, I mean, we're talking like Wisconsin and people in Wisconsin are going, whoa, 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 what, me at a tropical system? This could really bring problems. Yeah, big system like that going inland. Yeah. It's not just going to go away and it's going to bring all of its moisture northward. And it's going to be a, a two day event for some of you from start to finish when you consider that 
the Louisiana coastline starting to rain now, and it's going to take into Monday before that ends. Uh, it's very northeast loaded right now, but you know, you're getting some thunderstorms perking up near the center, too. So it's not like there's nothing going on uh, near the center. But most of the action on land today has been in Florida, and you've got some thunderstorms coming in in a band uh, just north of Fort Myers going up through Tampa. And we've got a flash flood warning still in effect in Bellevue, Florida, southeast of Ocala. Uh, this is in effect till 845 local time. It has been training this main band right between Leesburg and Ocala. Last hour, more than two inches of rain east of Ocala. Last six hours, we're getting a little bullseye there of about six inches. So it's been raining an inch an hour on average for six hours. So if you don't believe these six to 12 inch rainfall forecast for Louisiana, Mississippi, why not when you see what happens in Florida? Now, if this model is right and that northern side really starts to perk up tonight, then it'll start raining heavily overnight tonight in New Orleans and coastal Mississippi and eventually tomorrow late morning, maybe in Baton Rouge, and you'll have multiple rounds of training thunderstorms. And that's just the north side. Then you get landfall the center and then you might have some more on the south and southeast side as this moves on by. So when you count all the raindrops, there are going to be a whole heck of a lot of them, right? We just don't know exactly who's going to get the highest total. Somebody could get isolated numbers up to about a foot of rain, and the model's been jumping around on where that occurs, but Baton Rouge, New Orleans at risk, all the southern uh, coastal counties in Mississippi at risk, Mobile is at risk, Jackson, Mississippi certainly, and that's just uh, the southern end of all of this. As uh, Alex was mentioning, this is all going to be headed inland through Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, Wisconsin, eastern Minnesota is going to get some of the moisture, uh, at least indirectly related to this. And five to eight inches of rain in some spots is within the realm of possibility. Now, let's time this out. Who's at risk for flooding? Because that's what really matters with the rainfall. Tonight into tomorrow morning, northern portions of the Florida Peninsula and along the Panhandle Coast starting to get into coastal Louisiana, Mississippi. But tomorrow night into Monday morning is probably the biggest risk time for New Orleans and Baton Rouge. And then Monday, Monday night, Tuesday morning, Jackson, Mississippi, up through Little Rock. Don't drive your car onto any water covered road. We don't want to lose people in this system. Alex. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of the threats we talk about are very preventable. It's you know, things like rip currents. It's things like flash flooding. So make smart decisions. Yeah, and, and anytime you get in the water, whether it's the ocean or a flooded road, you are putting yourself at risk. And then as we saw in the rip current, you're making somebody come and get you. Right. And that happens inland too. Yeah, so we want to keep everybody safe through this. This is something we can we can all get ourselves through. Out west, we've got severe weather. So we take a little bit of a time out from Cristobal and we take you to Cheyenne, Wyoming. So you're like, wait a second, I'm in this. No, you're not. You've got a whole different ball game to deal with. And that is severe weather. We've got a line of severe thunderstorms from Colorado into Wyoming. Portions of Nebraska and South Dakota getting in on this as well. So you can see see nearly a continuous line of severe thunderstorm warnings from uh, the Montana Wyoming state line down into parts of southeastern Colorado. There is a little break in between there into southeastern parts of Wyoming. Tons of lightning, gusty winds uh, in excess of 60 miles an hour with these. I want you to be aware of that threat. Severe thunderstorm watch continues for many of these locations until 8 o'clock local time. This includes locations like Denver, like western Nebraska, western South Dakota. You can see it really is more portions of Nebraska and South Dakota that we're watching moving forward. So less a Wyoming, Colorado threat. Winds will be the main threat out of these storms. And we've got high wind warnings out there uh, as well through parts of the high plains. Let's get you back into the southeast. A new tornado warning again in the Orlando area. It's Orange and Seminole counties, Altamont Springs, Orlando, Winter Park under this warning right along I-4 moving north. More on this after the break. These are experts will do what it does. Explore the strange phenomena of our weird Earth. Premiering next Sunday at 9, only on the Weather Channel. We are watching our continuing live team coverage of Tropical Storm Cristobal. I want to get you into Florida, though, because uh, the concern for tornadoes is there, even as far east as Orlando, and we've got a new tornado warning to tell you about in uh, Orange and Seminole counties. And this one gives us pause, some concern that we may be dealing with a tornado in progress. Uh, there are on the velocity, you can see that area of rotation. This is between Orlando and the Conway area. So we're looking at areas down near the airport, pretty residential area. I'm checking in with Dr. Nav. He's uh, very familiar uh, with Florida and, uh, you know, the Orlando area. So we're talking about a residential area 
area. There's that area of rotation correlation coefficient picking up on some non-meteorological debris. So we are getting a signature that could tell us, uh, that tells us we could be looking at a tornado that is causing some damage. So when you look at the correlation coefficient, uh, the blue and the green and the whiter colors, that's non-meteorological. So we're talking not raindrops, not hailstones, but in fact, maybe something like tree debris or building debris. Again, this is just on the southeast side of really downtown Orlando. This is moving to the north. So we're looking at places like Winter Park, 740, uh, the expiration for or, or the arrival time, excuse me, for you. Maitland at 744. And then we're looking at Altamont Springs at 748 local time. So this is moving north around 20 miles an hour, kind of following just along and to the east of I-4. If you know somebody who might be out there on the roads this evening, give them a buzz and I'll let them know to pull over, let this storm pass. A lot of heavy rain already up into the Winter Park area. And uh, this storm, uh, that area of rotation will continue to lift northward. We have these tropical systems and we watch those uh, bands of heavy rain and also just the overall rotation allowing or exacerbating a threat of tornadoes, also water spouts. We've seen plenty of these warnings and water spouts today and unfortunately now watching the Orlando area for a possible tornado as we speak. Some very heavy rain from Tampa to Spring Hill and even up towards Ocala and Gainesville. Torrential tropical downpours coming down as uh, the eastern stretches of tropical storm, very large tropical storm Cristobal begin to advance in. Well, our crews are out there along the Gulf Coast, including meteorologist Felicia Combs. She is in Biloxi, Mississippi, you know, a storm savvy town. Uh, Felicia, I'm sure they weren't necessarily counting on it being this early. You know, they were trying to get back into business and now this not helping the visitors. You know, uh, Alex, as you mentioned, they are a storm savvy town and they were starting to get back into the swing of things. Now, the good news about this system, you know, it, it's a tropical storm and they are no stranger to these tropical systems. Uh, of course, still getting prepared though. This, we've kind of narrowed the window of hazards here in Biloxi. We've got that uh, storm surge warning. We've got the tropical storm warning. The heavy rain could be an issue as this area is under a flood watch as well. So people are preparing. I've got Mayor Gillich, the mayor of Biloxi here with me. And and, you know, we talked yesterday and you said they're going to kind of keep an eye on things, see what's going to happen. Uh, what has kind of changed since yesterday now that we know we've got the storm surge warning, we've got the tropical storm warning? Well, yesterday was being prepared. In the low outline areas and ditches and, 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 and drain ways and, and things were, have been cleaned. So as the in, uh, rain inundates us, the things will flow out to, to the sound and, and to the bay. So uh, that's been going on and, and been a lot of folks that have been moving from the harbors up to what we call Hurricane Hole. And uh, that takes a, you know, it's like a parade of boats as you see, you know, taking shelter. But a lot of uh, folks are kind of just getting ready, uh, cleaning gutters off their houses like I did today. And uh, just you know, keeping things just in case it does get, you know, uh, uh, winds up there 60 mile an hour. But we're hopeful that, uh, you know, we're just, this is an exercise, you know, that uh, an early exercise. Yeah, better safe than sorry That's as it. always. And of course, Alex mentioned it a little earlier. Uh, she, she's back in the studio and we were talking about it as well. Well, you know, starting to get back in the swing of things. It was supposed to be the blessing of the fleet this weekend and things like that. And all of that a, a bit delayed. So kind of talk about uh, what, what this system is meaning for Biloxi in the transition from COVID-19 back to normal. Right. You know, uh, again, the, you know, the, the resorts we have ongoing and the gaming, those kinds of things are getting back in the groove since uh, Memorial Day weekend. The governor has kind of relaxed uh, some of the, the you know, the, uh, the, the rules as far as uh, how people can, can join one another. Other, you know, the, uh, of course, the, the entertainment and the, the, the seafood is pretty good here, and, and uh, uh, those restaurants are a big thing. But yeah, you are right. We're just getting back in the groove, and this threw a little wrench at us. But uh, we'll get through this, and keeping our fingers crossed that uh, this won't be so bad for us or anybody, really. Yeah, fingers crossed for that one. Real quickly, uh, one message you want to give to anyone who's kind of um, just waiting on the storm here? Yeah, just stay tuned, and, and we'll, you know, our, our uh, public information will we'll get out on, on the air ways as well as our emergency management if things happen okay. st to stiffen up and you know the, the biometric pressure hurries up you know gets up there or gets down there uh, the word will get out and we'll be uh, we'll be fine thanks so much mayor gillich we're here in biloxi and we'll have more coming up later in the show father's day may only come explore the strange phenomena of our weird earth next sunday night on the weather channel 
right, welcome back into our continuing coverage of Tropical Storm Cristobal. I'm meteorologist Alex Wilson. We are watching a tornado warned storm here near the Orlando area, and there was confirmation on this. This was an observed tornado. Uh, two power flashes. Uh, some uh, spotters reported a funnel on the ground. Uh, this is uh, just on the east side of I-4. So this storm now on the northeast side of downtown Orlando. And uh, our hurricane expert, Dr. Rick Nab, we've been watching this, Dr. Nab. And you and I have been talking uh, during the break about this storm. You know, we look at these these tropical systems and they can influence and bring us these tornado warnings. But you're even seeing some of the low level flow from that um, correlation coefficient, basically the debris that we're seeing. Yeah, and if, if we loop that, you can see southeast of Orlando, see that blow up mm -hmm. of the colors, the, the light blue and the whites, and, and that showed up right at the time and place where the velocity right. signature started getting going. But you'll notice that the debris that that essentially represents, the non-meteorological debris, is being blown a little bit north northwest, even uh, west of I-4. Whereas the velocity signature is continuing kind of straight east, north yeah. east of I-4. So what, it, that, what might be going on there is once the debris is lofted into the air, what happens is that the low level velocity signature caught by the radar keeps going north. But because we have low level wind shear in the atmosphere coming out of the south at lowest levels, and maybe more south southeast when you get a few thousand feet up, that the higher the debris goes, the more it turns left in that south southeasterly wind. So the low level wind shear is is contributing to the spin right. that creates the tornado, and then the low-level wind shear is revealing itself in the way the debris spreads out the higher it goes. It's kind of an interesting feedback there because you're exactly right. We get that shear uh, due to this uh, tropical circulation, so that's why we have the tornado warnings, and then you're actually picking it up here in this case of debris. Now, we still have this warning in uh, the Orlando metro area. At this point, we're looking at the east and northeast side. This is a really populated area, though, Very. so there's a lot of businesses. There are a lot of homes in the path of this one. Yeah, you know, the Orlando International Airport is way out southeast of town, and the Orlando Executive Airport is directly east of mm -hmm. downtown. And in that whole area east of downtown, it's a very large corridor of a lot of residential areas and a lot of businesses, too. And so, you know, we've had the correlation coefficient uh, supporting what the velocity signature was suggesting, and then a lot of reports coming on Weather, weather Service channel of yeah. a confirmed tornado on the ground, power flashes east of downtown. So there's no doubt that this has been doing some kind of damage on the ground. Yeah, and we're going to be uh, obviously checking in on that, bringing you more reports. But right now, I want to warn uh, some of the other communities that could be in the path of this storm. Again, a confirmed tornado. Uh, there were some reports that it lifted, but uh, with that area of rotation still showing up, uh, we want to get you uh, informed. Altamont Springs, 750 local time for you. Winter Springs at 7. 56 Wagner just before the top of the hour. So these are communities in the path of this storm. Again, this has been a confirmed tornado moving north 20 miles an hour may have lifted. But again, uh, that rotation still there and uh, we very well still could be dealing with a tornado in progress. So if you're in this area, lowest level, most interior room is where you want and need to be. It's Orange and Seminole counties that continue under the warning. Want to get you caught up on all things tropical storm Cristobal. Of course, the threat of tornadoes, just one of the issues. Here's what we know right now. We expect Cristobal to, or Cristobal to make landfall as a high-end tropical storm. This would be somewhere along the Louisiana coast late on Sunday. Now, that's prompted mandatory evacuations for Terrebonne Parish in Zone 1. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, he's already declared a state of emergency for his state ahead of the storm's arrival. So, our time is uh, running out to prepare, Dr. Nav. This is... Is a, a, a very survivable storm. This is one I don't want people to, you know, overly worry about, but there are smart things you can do to make it so much easier for yourself. Yeah, for the most part, the only reason you'd have to worry is if you put yourself into right. a dangerous situation. We got to stay out of the water, and there's things we can do to protect ourselves and our homes from not just the salt water flooding, the storm surge, but also the fresh water flooding from the heavy rain, likely flooding in places like Baton Rouge, New Orleans tomorrow, going up into places like uh, Jackson, Mississippi, up into Arkansas and Missouri when we get Monday into Tuesday. So in preparation for flooding at the coast or inland, one thing you can do is obtain and fill up and stack 
properly. Some sandbags around your property. A lot of communities are distributing these and you fill them up half full and you kind of fold them over and you can stack them. Uh, and you can especially have a strong uh, barrier there if you stack those uh, sandbags up against a building. Um, but it's not going to protect you against five foot storm surge with waves, but it could protect you against a minor to moderate flood, keep water out of your home. You want to go out and clear leaves and other debris out of your gutter so things drain properly and put valuables and other documents in a waterproof container and take that and anything valuable higher up in your home, especially if waters are encroaching upon your home or you know you live in a flood prone area in those areas I just showed, get things off the bottom floor so they don't flood. Take photos and videos of the interior of your home and the exterior in case you have to file an insurance claim afterward. You can prove to the adjuster what you had and uh, make offsite data backups as well. A lot of things we do to get ready for flooding, Alex. A lot of things you can do now and you'll be very, very happy you did them if you need it. Get you back to that tornado warning in Orange and Seminole counties in the state of Florida. This is north of Orlando. Uh, warning continues until 8 o'clock. Altamont Springs, Winter Park, some of the communities in the path of this one. We've been looking at the area of rotation just east of I-4. This storm moving north 20 miles an hour. We'll get you another check of the storms, the rain, and reports from Live in the Field next. Father's Day may only come weekday mornings on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 83 degrees under sunny skies. Tonight, partly cloudy early with increasing clouds overnight. Low, 72. Winds west-southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Sunday, sunshine and clouds mixed. High, 91. Winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy. Low, 72. Winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. All right, I want to get you back into central Florida. We've got a tornado warning here in Orange and Seminole counties. Now, this is a radar indicated tornado warning. Now, this was confirmed earlier. This storm has a history of producing a tornado. The tornado uh, that was in progress right on the east side of Orlando has dissipated, but could quickly redevelop, uh, according to the National Weather Service. Orange, Seminole counties, the areas under the warning. And you're looking at the velocity signature. I want you to especially watch the east side. There, you could see it. Uh, moving up to the north and we're actually going to continue that warning now farther north as that area of rotation has extended uh, up towards the Altamont Springs area. So we're looking at uh, northwest side of Winter Park, south side of Altamont Springs. Uh, that would be our area of again, uh, not quite as well defined rotation as what we had earlier, but still looking at that area of rotation. So if you are uh, anywhere along the I-4 corridor around or north of Altamont spring. So now we've moved out of Orange County into Seminole County. Uh, this warning continues until 815. By the way, some small hail possible out of this one, uh, as well as some very, very heavy rainfall. We look at the correlation coefficient moving up into the area, and uh, we're going to be watching uh, for the possibility that we still have some debris out there. Uh, you can see that area on the uh, west side of Sanford there uh, to the east side of I-4. So we have had this storm with a history of producing a tornado and with these tropical systems, very, very common to get these rotating thunderstorms. So they may only be weaker or short lived, but of course, when you get them into these populated areas, they can do some damage. So we're watching that storm again uh, on the northeast side of Orlando that continues to move north around 20 miles per hour. Again, radar indicated, but this storm has a history of producing a tornado. So Altamont Springs, 
Winter Park uh, areas up uh, up I-4 now getting away from Orlando. So uh, the good news for Orlando, your threat going down, but obviously communities on the north side, that threat going up. There's that correlation coefficient uh, giving us a look at uh, where that storm was located. Now some of that uh, that those pixels around the Altamont Springs area. We've seen this uh, this debris kind of spread out. And as Dr. Nab pointed out, goes to show us that we've got that wind shear that's contributing to that threat. Maybe the low level winds more out of the south, but just a little bit aloft higher up in the atmosphere, you get those winds out of the southeast. So the turning of winds with height from that overall circulation from Cristobal is contributing to that tornado danger here in the state of Florida. I want to take you to the state of Louisiana. That's where we find meteorologist Chris Bruin. He is in New Iberia, not too far away from Lafayette, so central part of the state. Uh, rain will be a concern. Chris, I think wind could be an issue for you guys. And But of course, the heavy rain threats really the, the main issue moving forward. Yeah, you know, because we are on the west side of the system, the storm surge factor isn't going to be as big of an issue here because we're going to be having that offshore push that's going to actually lower the water in most cases. If we see any water rise, it's going to be between now and say tomorrow afternoon because that's when we're going to start seeing our winds shift. And from that point forward, the storm surge issue for western Louisiana will be pretty much non-existent. Sunny right now. In fact, I don't think we're going to see much in the way of storms the rest of the afternoon. We've had a couple of brief showers, but that's really been the case for the day. We haven't really had a lot of rainfall. We've been dealing with a lot of dry air, and it's really cool to see what it looks like in person. If you're observing everybody uh, and everybody's location here on the Weather Channel, you at home can really learn how tropical systems are, and they're each unique. This one has a lot of dry air, so the western side of the storm is lopsided, and there's not a lot of rain. But where Felicia Combs is in Biloxi, Mississippi, it's a little bit different of a story. There's a lot more clouds, and we've had a lot more rain in the Mississippi Gulf Coast today, Felicia. We certainly have, Chris, and not just today, actually. It has been a very wet time period over, say, the past week, and they've seen quite a bit of rain. So we've actually got a flood watch in effect here because we're expecting quite a bit of rain for this particular area, four to eight inches, locally higher amounts. And I'll tell you, we just started getting these light showers coming down, and I think this is the leading edge of a very thick band of at least showers that's going to be ongoing for several hours as we're going to continue to see some of those bands feeding in. Now, you'll notice we're here in the small craft harbor. This is the oldest harbor in Biloxi. Another issue that we're going to have that uh, Chris was talking about New Iberia will not have. Well, that will be the risk for storm surge and Biloxi is under a storm surge warning. We are expecting or the forecast is for three to five feet of inundation possible because we're going to have such a push of persistently southeasterly winds pushing the water of the Gulf, the Bay of Biloxi. That's all surrounding Biloxi uh, up and pushing it toward the coast. So that is something we have to watch here. Of course, we've got cr uh, crowds and uh, the team spanned out all across the Gulf Coast and we'll be bringing you details from then. And we've got you covered here in Biloxi as well. More on all of this and Chris Bilbao after the break. If you love peanut butter milk. With nutrients to support immune health. Wait till the last minute to do the hurricane prep and you, there's no way to get it all done. It's going to be a long duration event. We've got a couple of days ahead of rain and wind and surge. Already getting a lot of rain coming into Florida. Keeping people out of the Gulf of Mexico is close to all swimming and waiting. The lifeguards are working tirelessly to ensure that happens. Well, welcome back into our special continuing live coverage of Tropical Storm Cristobal. Gulf Coast states bracing for landfall within the next 24 to 36 hours. I'm meteorologist Alex Wilson. We've got a team with you here, though, tonight to bring you the very latest, including our hurricane expert, Dr. Rick Nab. Expert analysis you can only get here on the Weather Channel. Want to get you back to Florida real quick. Get you caught up on a tornado warning. This is, of course, one of those threats. You get that wind shear uh, associated with these tropical systems, and this continues on the north 
north side of Orlando. Had a tornado touchdown, very likely. Now, we're going to have the National Weather Service go out there and do confirmation, but according to the radar, it looks very likely that we had this touchdown very close to the executive airport, uh, the Orlando executive airport on the west side, moving north from there. Reports are this has lifted, but still could produce a tornado. We're looking at Seminole County now under the warnings. Areas northeast of Altamont Springs, that will continue northward into communities like Sanford and Winter Springs. So if you're in the path of this one, lowest level, most interior room. Again, uh, reports are it has listed, lifted. Still, you can see that area of rotation northeast of Altamont Springs. Possibility that we could see another tornado spin up. And we have our team coverage to bring you all things Cristobal tonight. Dr. Nab here in studio. Of course, Chris Bruin in New I Iberia, Louisiana. Felicia Combs in Biloxi, Mississippi. And Mike Seidel in Grand Isle, Louisiana. So four meteorologists, five meteorologists with you here tonight to keep you uh, posted. I got to count myself, right? Uh, Dr. Nab, we've got a new advisory to break down here from the National Hurricane Center. Yeah, and uh, not a whole lot of changes, but I, I, I had my computer all set up to show you something real quick, though. I wanted to just quickly recap this this tornado that was east of uh, Orlando. There, Here's Belle Isle. Here's the Orlando International Airport. And look at the velocity signatures showing up right there at the Beeline Expressway and Orange Avenue, and it went straight northward. This is a really long-lived uh, tropical tornado. I haven't seen the, the one lasted this long in quite a while. And look at that correlation coefficient showing up right there right as it uh, moved north of Belle Isle. So that was a pretty uh, significant system, and we do have reports of uh, you know, conf confirmation on the ground that this uh, caused some damage. And when you get the correlation coefficient and on the ground confirmation, we know there's damage. So I'm sure we're gonna be seeing some reports of that. But look at that center of action where we've been dealing with flash flood warnings, tornado warnings, is in this primary outer band and another one kind of east of there that is hundreds of miles east of the center of circulation of tropical storm Cristobal. Now that center is still more than 200 miles south of southeastern Louisiana. This is a big, big system tentacles far and wide and this is why we've been harping all week on why we can't focus on the exact center and how many impacts could extend well outside the cone and that's going to continue to be the case in fact tropical storm force winds kind of extend uh, some 400 miles uh, when you go southwest to northeast so so no big changes with this intermediate public advisory we will have a complete 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central, new track and intensity forecast from the Hurricane Center uh, in about three hours, and we will definitely bring that to you when it comes in. But north at 12, 50 miles an hour, pressure 993. That's a low pressure for a 50 mile an hour tropical storm. It's, it's using that pressure difference over a very, very large area. Uh, the visible imagery at this time of day is pretty impressive. In fact, we're seeing some overshooting tops starting to take shape there uh, north of the center. So there's some rain coming in, um, you know, associated with, with the central area. It's not just this outer banding that is the problem. Uh, look at all that lightning has been coming into Naples, Fort Myers area. Uh, now we still have flash flood warnings. Okay, I don't want to forget about that. Uh, this is just east of Ocala in the Bellevue, Florida area. Flash flood warning until 8:45 local time. This is up the road a piece from where the tornado warning uh, was east of Orlando. Uh, it has rained in buckets over the last several hours. Uh, six inches in some spots along that corridor, and we're likely to get flash flooding tomorrow, tomorrow night into Monday morning in places like New Orleans and Baton Rouge, and then that problem extends inland up through Jackson, Little Rock. Alex, we got wind, we got water, coastal inland. This is a big, big system. Yeah, big system, wide-reaching effects, and now uh, we've got uh, crews all along the Gulf Coast, because it's not just areas in the cone that will feel those uh, main effects. Storm surge, heavy rain, wind, an issue for Grand Isle. Mike Seidel, those winds have really picked up this afternoon. Yes, indeed, and so have the wave fights. I just checked the buoy just offshore from Grand Isle this morning at 4 a.m., 4.6 feet, now up to 11.5 feet. So uh, the waves have uh, doubled and tripled since uh, before sunrise this morning, and we're going to see them continue to come up. What we just experienced was a bit of a rogue wave. Now, the tide's been going out now for about seven hours, so it's out here, but we were just standing up here, and all of a sudden, the water just rushed up 
and it came up as high as it did at high tide about 10 a.m. this morning. That's, that was uh, kind of caught, caught us off guard. Now, the high tide of concern, though, is going to be tomorrow morning at 10.55 here in Grand Isle because we have the high tide. Also, we have the push of the water, and we're going to have stronger winds. Right now, the winds are running 20 to 25 miles an hour. Our highest gust here uh, just nearby has been 38 miles an hour. We're in some rain showers right now. You can see that on the radar. We've not had any real squalls yet, but look just to our southeast, uh, down towards the mouth of the Mississippi, down to Burris and Venice. Those are coming in in the next hour or so, and that's going to be the beginning of where we get the very heavy rainfall rates of one, two inches an hour, and also wind gusts up over uh, 40 miles an hour. In fact, we could see some wind gusts here between now and tomorrow and landfall uh, over 60 miles an hour, and that could, uh, the concern here, could knock out uh, some power. They, the locals tell me it doesn't take much here. Let's go inland to New Iberia, where the threat is for inland flash flooding. Chris Bruin, as much as four or five inches of rain could fall over there in New Iberia. Yeah, Mike, you know, we're on the, the far western fringes of the tropical storm warning. So here in New Iberia and Iberia Parish, uh, we're under a tropical storm warning. And this is the last part before you get out of that real threat of tropical weather. Right now, it's tranquil. And I think that's what's so cool. If you've been following the Weather Channel for the you know duration of the last few days, you've been watching Cristobal and areas on the Gulf Coast, it's really cool to see different parts of the same storm and what it's going to look like as this continues to progress. People are preparing, but again, this is going to be a pretty tame storm, at least for southwestern and central Louisiana. I think some of the worst impacts are going to be much farther off towards the east. And don't just focus on the center of the storm. We're going to have rain all the way over to Florida's Gulf Coast, and that's where some of the heaviest rainfall, even the risk for tornadoes may be. We've talked to some residents, not just here in New Iberia. We're on the shores of uh, Bayou Tesh, famous little riverway. Uh, a lot of boaters out still trying to enjoy part of their weekend before the rain really starts to increase on your Sunday. But closer to the coast, they are starting to do preparations, the typical when any storm threatens. Take a listen. I brought my golf cart and my riding lawnmower into town in a warehouse to keep it out. I had my boat hooked up just in case to pull the boat out. Uh, my tools and stuff downstairs and some of my valuables in my outdoor kitchen, we brought that up on the porch, you know, anticipating that it wouldn't get higher than the porch, you know. Yeah. A major, major hurricane, say a Cat 4, Cat 5 coming through, we'd have to haul a lot more of this stuff out to the north. But with this, we just we just call it hurricane prep, and we just we pick everything up, the valuables. I still have stuff to pick up, but I brought a lot on the porch yesterday and last night just in case, you know, and just waiting to see. If it turns, well, then we got more to do, but we're, we're three-quarters of the way done with the hurricane prep just in case. Because if you, as you all know, you wait till the last minute to do the hurricane prep, and you, there's no way to get it all done. And words from words from a local himself. You never want to wait. They're not certainly, and we've had nice weather to get those last-minute preps in underway. And Felicia, you know, here in Louisiana, it's just routine. Anytime there's a storm threatening, they bring in all their loose items on carports and underneath the lower levels of their home just to get out of the wind and water threats. Have you noticed any preparations ongoing there on the Mississippi Gulf Coast? You know, Chris, Biloxi is a lot like uh, Louisiana, where you are. They're, they're no stranger to these tropical systems at all. Uh, people have been taking it seriously, and I do think people are, are watching to see what's happening. Given that it's a tropical storm, maybe they're not as on edge as they would be, say we were uh, forecasting a, a major hurricane or something of that uh, something of that um, stature. But I have seen people going out and getting sandbags and things like that and preparing. Now, here's the thing about Biloxi. Biloxi is basically kind of on a peninsula, and it's surrounded by on water by three sides and what you're looking at is the Mississippi Sound which is kind of just a part of the Gulf of Mexico and that is part of the issue that we're going to have here. Uh, storm surge warning in effect for Biloxi the forecast saying three to five feet of inundation possible. Now high tide here tomorrow in the Bay of Biloxi is just after 1130. It's around 1143 in the morning and that is when you really start to get worried about things of this nature like um, 
the possibility for storm surge because you add that on top of the high tide as well. I think we could probably see that jet, the jet skiers out and about right now. So some people still not packing it in just yet, taking advantage of the breaks in the rain. But I'll tell you, uh, if we look out south across the Gulf of Mexico, across this barrier island, that is a wall of rain that's been trying to edge its way toward the coast. And once that moves in, it's going to be raining here for a while. So uh, I think the jet skiers better have their fun right now and then get inside uh, pretty quickly because that rain is certainly edging toward the coast. And once it picks up, it is going to be uh, rain you do not want to be in. Another threat here for Biloxi is going to be that fresh water flooding. They've had quite a bit of rain already this past week. So there is a flood watch in effect, in fact, for the Biloxi area, a good portion of southeast Louisiana as well uh, until Tuesday because we've seen just so much rain. So multiple threats going on here, even though we are outside of that cone, Alex. All right, Felicia, thank you so much. We're going to check back in with Felicia. As she just said, you know, you don't want to get caught up in who's in the cone, who's not, because the effects will extend well away from that, including the possibility for tornadoes. You guys, we're watching areas to the west of Daytona Beach, north of Orlando. We've got two tornado worn storms. The southernmost one, this has already produced a tornado uh, down near the Orlando area on the east side of town. Right now, we've got Seminole County under a warning, Lake Mary, San Sanford, Winter Springs, just a few communities in the path of this one. To the north, around DeLand, we've got another storm capable of producing a tornado here in Volusia County. Uh, looking at that area of rotation, uh, it's, you know, tough to make out a really, uh, a really, um, precise or significant area of rotation, but very likely there on the west northwest side of DeLand. There you can see it much more clearly uh, popping up. Uh, still at least uh, two areas of possible rotation, not quite as noticeable or not quite as um, strong as what we saw out there earlier. But still, if you are on the uh, east side or west side of 17, lowest level, most interior room, these storms have had a history of producing tornadoes already today. Uh, an, an observed tornado earlier down near the Orlando area. We've got wind shear thanks to this tropical system. It's very common with tropical storms, with hurricanes as they make their way closer to la uh, land that wind shear will trigger some tornadoes out there. There's our southernmost warning. This is that storm that produced a tornado down near the Orlando area. But again, Volusia County, Seminole counties under the warning. If you're in the path of these lowest level, most interior room where you need to be uh, still looking at some areas of rotation within both. So both storms very possibly uh, bringing tornadoes here across uh, northeast, uh, north central parts of Florida. Dr. Nab, I want to get back to the coast, talk about the uh, storm surge possibility because we're going to, this is such a huge storm. There's going to be a really significant onshore push and then we've also got high tide that's going to come into play. Yeah, I almost feel like we need to put some kind of different label on a system when it is large because the fact that it's a tropical storm uh, is a little bit deceptive in terms of you, maybe you're not thinking that it's that big a deal, but it's a big deal, right? It's a, 400 miles across in terms of the extent of tropical storm force winds southwest to northeast and a pressure of 993 millibars. I mean, it's going to exert that energy difference somehow when the pressure is that low and it's exerting that by creating a big pressure gradient over a large distance. So there's still a lot of energy in the atmosphere. It's just not as put together in the interior as like a hurricane would be or a compact tropical storm. But look at these wind gusts exceeding 30 miles an hour over a very large area, including getting closer and closer to the coast, gusting to 26 at the New Orleans airport, 32 at Grand Isle. We've been up near 30 miles an hour at times in Pensacola. Uh, and, and you see that easterly flow on the northern side of the system. That's what's pushing the water into this little concave area of the coastline, Mississippi coastline, extreme southeast of Louisiana. Louisiana. That's why the storm surge warning is there. That's where the onshore push is going to be greatest. And especially tomorrow morning late, we're going to have high tide in this area. And outside the risk reduction system in New Orleans, it's not in the warning. We could have uh, the life threatening saltwater inundation in places like Biloxi, Gulfport, uh, and past Christiane. Uh, right now, the water values above normally dry ground at the coast are not very high, but that's because we're headed into high. I'm mean, sorry, we're headed into low tide this evening. So we're going to have a little bit of a break right now, but these three to five foot values are storm surge flooding that's expected somewhere in that area above normally dry ground if and when storm surge and 
high tide coincide. That's going to be late tomorrow morning. And Isidore is an example of a tropical storm that's large, about as strong as Cristobal is going to be, that took a life along the coast of Mississippi in storm surge in a parking lot because they didn't evacuate and they were out on the road. So Alex, these storm surge uh, events with a tropical storm can be deadly. We got to get out of those areas. Yeah, got to be smart, uh, make good decisions. And you know, when they tell you to go or if they tell you to stay out of an area, listen to the yeah. officials. They know what they're doing. Well, Cristobal or Cristobal will bring a ton of rain. We're going to talk about the flooding threats coming up. Okay, everyone. Right now, it's coming down. The Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 82 degrees under fair skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 71. Winds west-southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday, intervals of clouds and sunshine. High 91. Winds south-southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy, low 72. Winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Get you back to Florida. Tornado warning here on the north side of Winter Springs, Florida. So this is our storm that we have been tracking through Orange County into Seminole County, now Volusia County, and right there on the west northwest side of Sanford. There's our area of rotation once again uh, tightening up. Uh, Adam Dean, our weather producer, highlighting that area for you again just on the west side of Sanford. This storm continues to move north. It's been tracking along into the east of I-4 uh, for about an hour now. Uh, watch that uh, bring a tornado on the uh, east side of Orlando. We've seen some video trying to get some of that in for you here to the Weather Channel. Uh, DeBerry, Deltona, Orange City, Lake Helen, and Beresford all in the path of this storm. Not everybody under that warning, but the warning continues to be reissued with our uh, circulation from Cristobal working its way into uh, parts of the Gulf Coast and now uh, uh, Gulf Coast states in Florida. We've got enough shear that we've seen water spouts and tornado warnings uh, already today. Another warning on the north side of our uh, previous warning I just showed you now into Volusia County around Leon Springs. Uh, we've got that area of rotation a little bit more uh, faint earlier, uh, seeing it a little bit more clearly. That continues to lift northward though. Right now, right around the De Leon Springs area, this will continue also to move north. These storms uh, outside the tornado warnings capable of producing some really heavy rain rainfall too and you can see some flood warnings over there around Ocala. Uh, we are monitoring all aspects of Cristobal including the hurricane hunter flights that continue into the storm. We're looking now at the Gulf of Mexico. This from the air as the hurricane hunters get out there uh, on their flights to get us the information that we need uh, in regards to the storm. So our forecasts can be more and more accurate. The more data you get, more accurate the forecast. So they're doing really, really important work. This was one of the flights on Friday. Uh, Cristobal, right now a 50 mile per hour tropical storm with uh, winds or weather pressure at 993 millibars. This is moving north, but again, east loaded a lot of that tropical moisture. Uh, again, those wind sheared storms on the uh, Florida Peninsula today, bringing those tornado warnings, heavy rainfall, all along the Gulf Coast is likely down into Florida. So I don't want us to get caught up on the cone and who's in the cone, who's not in the cone, because the impacts are going to extend well outside the cone because one, this is a very large storm and two, it's a very lopsided east loaded storm. So we look at the forecast. This is telling us where the center of that storm will be and maybe where some of the strongest wind gusts will be focused. But again, if you're in Biloxi, if you're in Mobile, if you're in Pensacola, you're going to get in on the wind gusts 
Sunday and into Monday. Onset of tropical storm force winds coming during the early morning hours here for coastal Louisiana. New Orleans, you're looking at it, I'd say, by mid-morning. You're going to begin to see those wind gusts of uh, tropical or those tropical storm force winds set in. And uh, tropical storm warnings are in effect for all the areas in red. So south central Louisiana over into parts of the Florida panhandle. So that's why our crews are extended all along the coastline. Storm surge watch, storm surge warnings also in effect. This does not include the city of New Orleans. Uh, Dr. Nab, that uh, that risk mitigation system is, is going to hold and, and protect New Orleans uh, in this storm. But outside the city, we could still see that water above normally dry ground. Yeah, and the local officials know what areas are protected and what areas are not. So if mm -hmm. they tell you to go, you right. need to go. And now we've got the other water problem, the freshwater problem that could also affect southeast Louisiana and southern Mississippi. But a lot of you outside of coastal areas are going to be plagued by very heavy rainfall training in these bands, especially on the north and east side. West coast of Florida and north central Florida is where the heaviest rains on land are right now. And we just had issued by the National Weather Service a flood warning uh, for the Sarasota and Venice areas. Uh, this is on the west coast of Florida. Manatee and Sarasota counties includes Bradenton until 9.30 p.m. local time. Uh, this is the I-75 corridor coming up from Naples. Uh, when you come around Fort Charlotte, uh, Port Charlotte, and you get uh, closer to the coast, that part of I-75 south of the Tampa Bay area, that's where we're talking about here. And we've, we're having the inch per hour rain rates, and that's accumulating some problems on the roads, especially the lower spots, intersections, uh, you know, off ramps, that sort of thing. Uh, you will stay off the roads in those areas. Ocala area southeast of there, also I-75 a little farther north uh, in the Bellevue area in Marion County is still under a flash flood warning until 845 local time. We've had a ton of rain in this area, over six inches in the last six hours. So we're getting an inch per hour for hours and hours. And that's how you ramp up the total. So take that as a lesson, New Orleans and Baton Rouge and Mobile and Gulfport, because when you start getting your training heavy rains as these bands come in late tonight, early tomorrow morning, you're gonna rack up the rainfall totals as it sometimes rains an inch or two per hour. All day Sunday, it'll be off and on heavy bands. And that's until the center comes ashore. And then you're gonna have some perhaps uh, on the southeast side as well. And that's why we're going to be racking up the rainfall totals 8 to 12 inches locally. Somebody could get a foot of rain. We don't know exactly where this bullseye in the European model has moved around from New Orleans to southern Mississippi, but you get the picture. Those are the areas at risk. And it's not just going to be at the coast. It's going to be going way inland as well. Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, five to eight inches locally in some of those spots all the way up into Wisconsin for crying out loud. And the, the areas that are great, greatest risk for flooding tonight and tomorrow are northern Florida, but New Orleans and Baton Rouge, you're in it tomorrow into Monday morning, then Jackson, Mississippi up to Little Rock Monday, Monday night into Tuesday. Don't drive your car on any water covered roads. We can survive this, Alex. Yeah, and don't think that just because you're not on the coast, uh, the water uh, may not be an issue where right. you are. Hey, we got much more in our continuing coverage next earth premiering next sunday at nine only on the weather channel Welcome back into our Weather Channel live team coverage continuing this Saturday evening. Tropical storm Cristobal advancing closer to the Gulf Coast and we're already feeling the effects. Winds picking up rain throughout the day, even tornado warnings across the state of Florida. We've been watching a storm that uh, spawned a tornado. This was on the east side of Orlando around uh, 720, 730 local time. Right now that storm has moved north. Seminole and Volusia County currently under the warning. This is north of Sanford. You can see that uh, area of rotation. Now, at times, it's been much more pronounced, but still, area of rotation, there's a, there's a look at it. Again, north side of Sanford, our weather producer, Adam Dean, giving you a highlight on that so you can pick it out. Essentially, this is the radar showing us uh, the movement. Reds away from the radar, greens towards the radar. So when you have that area where the two are close up, that tells us we've got some rotation. Enterprise, next in line, five minutes from now, Orange City, 851, Casadaga at 856 local time. That storm continues to move north, really following just to the east. Now it's going to cross over uh, I-4. Uh, the one to the north, 
was just canceled. So there's some good news. We were watching a tornado warning uh, around and north of DeLand, and uh, that one has been canceled. So we continue with this one in Seminole in Volusia and Volusia counties. Uh, this is south and west of Daytona Beach to the east of Leesburg, and again, north northeast of Orlando as this storm continues to ride along and east of I-4. A lot of heavy rain, though, across Florida, and you can see another storm likely bringing some gusty winds and light uh, moving towards the Orlando area following I-4 on the southwest side of town. As I mentioned, we've got crews stretched out all along the Gulf Coast. They're monitoring conditions as Tropical Storm Cristobal approaches. Meteorologist Mike Seidel. Mike, things have really uh, upped the ante there in the Grand Isle, Louisiana area. The wind much stronger than even earlier today. Now the wind's now running about 20 miles an hour sustained, and we've had gusts here upwards 30 to 35. Off the coast, we've had gusts as high as 51 miles an hour, uh, but the wave heights, too, have dramatically increased since this morning. Now the buoy just offshore here from Grand Isle, 11.5 feet, and they're going to continue to go up. I wouldn't be surprised to see wave heights offshore upwards of 18 to 20 feet, certainly by tomorrow morning. Here's the Gulf of Mexico. It is really, really like a giant a wash tub. Low tide is in about uh, two, two hours or so, but the water right now is higher than it was at high tide yesterday. So you can think about what's going on. The water's trying to go out, but the wind's pushing it back on shore. So the high tide of concern will be tomorrow morning, 1055 here in Grand Isle, where we have the combination of the high tide and the winds blowing the water in. We suspect that that water is going to go into this area between the beach and the berm like it did on Hurricane uh, Barry last year, Dr. Nav. It got about halfway up. May not get that far, but plenty of protection for the hotels and all the properties here. And as you well know, Dr. Nab, uh, FEMA has come in here over the years in, in many coastal locations and has really worked on the building codes. And just about everything now is up on stilts here in Grand Isle. Some restaurants and motor buildings on the ground level, but just about everything now here is way up because of the risk of surge and coastal flooding here in Grand Isle. Yeah, we have control over what the weather and the, the wind and the water do to us by building uh, the right way, depending on what you're at risk for. And we're at risk for not just water, but wind impacts from this system. Most of the winds are strongest out over the Gulf of Mexico right now, and these are the current buoy observations gusting to 38 at the buoy 95 just north of the center, and uh, buoy 67 closer to shore gusting to 34. And on land, Grand Isle been gusting over 30, New Orleans up to 24. Uh, Pensacola earlier gusted to 30, and you see this wind blowing from east to west right now on the north side of the system. That's piling up the water there in that concave shape of the coastline, southeast Louisiana and the coast of Mississippi. That's why the water levels will be coming up, especially tomorrow morning's high tide is when the storm surge flooding could be at its worst. Now, the winds overnight tonight will be on the increase, and in places like New Orleans, sometime tomorrow morning, we could be gusting 40, maybe 50 miles an hour. These are wind gusts, okay? This is not sustained wind, but way out to the east of the center, Pensacola could gust to 50, uh, could gust as high as 60 in New Orleans, and you got funneling between buildings, could be stronger at higher floors of high rises, and even after the center moves inland, then you're going to have an onshore flow. Even if you don't have a rain band. you got a low pressure in this big tropical storm. There could be some really strong winds even well into Monday evening. So those winds could cause power outages. We've got to protect ourselves. They can be surprisingly dangerous or even deadly if we're not careful. If you're going to run a generator, run it outdoors and far away from the building so you don't have carbon monoxide, which is a deadly, deadly way uh, that people have perished in past tropical storm power outages. Don't use candles or any open flame. Too much risk of it being left unattended and causing a fire. Stay away from any down power lines. Trees could down uh, the, the power lines. And if you have any life sustaining medical equipment, you need to shelter someplace with backup power, Alex. Power outages can be a real problem. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of times, uh, you know, you, you kind of forget to plan and you do something like light a candle or you forget about the uh, proper use of a generator. So I uh, just want to keep you guys safe, uh, make sure everybody gets through this okay. Running out of time to protect our home. Dr. Nav is going to talk about that next. And of course, we still are monitoring a tornado warned storm here in Seminole and Volusia County, Florida, actually now just Volusia County near Deltona. Disaster next Sunday night on the Weather Channel. Well, common with 
tropical systems moving towards and onto the uh, the land. That interaction, that wind shear can trigger tornado warnings and tornadoes. And sure enough, that's what we've got. This storm produced a tornado earlier today down near the Orlando area, east side of town. It was captured actually on some news cameras and seeing some video of that uh, circulate on social media. We're working to get that for you, by the way. Right now, Volusia County remains under the tornado warning. We're watching areas to the west of Deltona. This storm has been lifting north. So through Orange County, Seminole County, now Volusia County, and you can see that area of rotation. Now, this is set to expire in eight minutes, but still I want you to watch this storm because it has a history uh, obviously of producing tornadoes and uh, still at least seeing enough rotation uh, that gives us pause, gives us concern that we could see another tornado spin up. Uh, DeBerry, uh, one of the communities in the path of this one, this is right along now and uh, beginning to cross over I-4. So continuing that northward motion outside of this area. Gosh, Florida's getting swamped with heavy rain. We've got some uh, flash flood warnings. Uh, this one for Marion County, uh, the community of Bellevue. And uh, we're seeing really heavy rain towards Crescent City and Pearson. I mean, tropical downpours. And this is something that we're going to be concerned about moving forward. Florida all along the Gulf Coast. Heavy rain out of this system. Look at this rainfall over the last six hours, about seven inches of rain being reported there on the southeast side of Ocala, Florida. So flash flooding, a real concern tonight and moving forward into the start of the new week. So I think tonight, tomorrow into Monday, we're going to have to watch a lot of communities that could see that water just piling up. More heavy rain headed into some of these areas. We've got lightning, another round of storms moving towards Orlando. I think this one could bring you some gusty winds with it. Uh, areas west of 95, north of Daytona Beach, uh, getting soaked as well. So wouldn't be surprised to see some more flash flood warnings uh, issued either. If you're out there, you find a water covered roadway, turn around, don't drown. Easiest thing to do. You know, the system like this, we're not going to be dealing with crazy winds, but we are going to be dealing with that storm surge and that threat of flooding from rainfall. So flooding takes so many lives a year. I know sometimes we're just not afraid of water, but take it seriously and you'll be just fine with this storm. Well, special coverage of Tropical Storm Cristobal continues right now. Here's what we know. This storm will likely make landfall as a high-end tropical storm along the Louisiana coast. So power outages, some wind issues, definitely a possibility uh, near the center of this storm. And even on the east side, this is really east loaded. Evacuations for Terrebonne Parish. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards has declared a state of emergency ahead of the storm's arrival. Dr. Nab, we talk about things you can do to just make it easier to get through the storm. Things you can do around your home, around your yard that, that just keep you safe and secure. Yeah, and when you're going to be dealing with flooding, yeah. there's a lot of things that you can do to keep yourself safe. In addition to staying off the roads, preparing your home, and you know, inside that risk reduction system in New Orleans, you're going to have the heavy rainfall. So you could have flooding there, could have it in Baton Rouge, could have it in Jackson, Mississippi, maybe Little Rock, Arkansas. So this is going to be an inland problem as well. So I'm talking to you folks, not just at the coast, but way inland. You can be preparing while there's some time left for potential flooding. Now, one thing you can do, especially if you know you're in a flood prone area uh, and you want to be uh, ready for water maybe encroaching on your structure is to get sandbags. You got to fill them properly. Uh, you, you fill them about half full and then you fold that over and you stack the next one on top of the of that other folded part and you can stack them about three high uh, on their own but if you put it up against a building you can stack it up even higher and that can keep you know one two or three feet of uh, flooding from uh, getting into your home. This is not going to protect against a big time flood but you know, for some relatively minor flooding around your home, it can help keep the water out. Now, also, drainage around your home. You want to go clear those gutters this evening. If you haven't uh, had the rain start yet, get the leaves and the debris out of there so things drain properly around your property. And put valuables and in documents in a waterproof container and then take that and put it as high up in your home as you can. And do that with computers. Do that with, with furniture. Again, if you know you're in a flood prone area and you're in these high risk areas uh, for this event that I just showed you, get things elevated so you lose less if you got a little bit of flooding in your home. And and take photos and video of the interior and exterior of your home because that can document 
what happens afterward when you're filing an insurance claim. You can show here's what I had before it got ruined by the floodwaters and uh, make some off-site data backups uh, off your computer, off your devices. Now, what else can you be doing to get ready at the last minute? Bring stuff indoors. Tropical storm force winds. Gusts of 50, 60 miles an hour can toss tools like that all around your yard and flying projectiles can go through windows. Bring in planters, bring in patio furniture. It's not so much the wind that causes damage, it's what's flying around in the wind. So you can keep uh, the damage around your home from uh, being uh, greater by bringing in these uh, loose items. And if you got rocks around your home, you might want to put mulch there instead. That's less of a projectile. Now, finally, what can you do to buy a few things at the last minute if you haven't gotten all your supplies and be thinking about getting through a power outage? Well, fill your prescriptions and get over-the-counter medications because the power is out. The store where you get important prescriptions or medications might be closed. So get those now. Get cash at the ATM because the contactless payments, the credit cards won't work when the power is out. Uh, get batteries and power your LED lamps, not candles, because those can start a fire. Uh, get a portable cell phone charger and Alex, Charge it all up yeah. before the power goes out. Cell phones can be the first way with texting that comes back online after the storm. Yeah, great, great to know. And it keeps the family happy too, right? Uh, no joke, we've got a new tornado warning for uh, the southwest side of Orlando, Florida, Orange County under the warning. Uh, this storm is moving to the north and east uh, around the Dr. Phillips area. One more right after this. Weekday mornings on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 80 degrees under clear skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 71, winds west-southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 91, winds south-southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy, low 72, winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. video to share with you of that tornado earlier today around the Orlando area. You can see that off in the distance, right, uh, right of center on the screen. See that uh, funnel extending to the ground. This one of uh, several videos that we are seeing. And again, we're going to be bringing them to you throughout the evening as uh, we get those cleared and, and in our system. But uh, this tornado warn storm still producing a tornado warning, but we've got a new warning now into the Orlando metro area. This is Orange County, the southwest side of town, so very close to the Disney World area, actually. We were watching a storm earlier that moved from the SeaWorld area up towards Universal Orlando. Now we look at the Disney World area. It's along a line of storms that I think is likely bringing some gusty winds. A little area of shear, so a little change in direction along that line uh, closer to the Windermere area, and that's where we could see a quick spin-up of a tornado. With these tropical systems, we've got Tropical Storm Chris Stowball making its way closer to the Gulf Coast. And we've seen some of the outer bands, the very heavy rain, work into portions of Florida today. We've got that wind shear, and that is allowing for some of those storms to rotate. So this could be another one of those. Windermere, Gotha, Pine Hills, Orlando, and Fairview Shores all in the path of this storm. Uh, this tornado warning uh, continues, uh, the tornado warned storm, I should say, continues to move to the north and east. So eventually, now we'll be looking at the west northwest side of Orlando about uh, what an hour and a half ago we were watching the east side of Orlando with that tornado warn storm that has since moved uh, well to the north but uh, very closely watching that little notch uh, just around the Windermere area where we could see a spin up of a tornado outside of that be prepared for very heavy rain be prepared for gusty winds and be prepared for a lot of lightning we've seen that out of the storms today so if you're hearing thunder inside where you need to be I know it's uh, you know getting to the evening so a lot of you are likely home at this point, but it's not one of those times where you want to be, you know, walking the dog or anything. 
This is that storm that produced our tornado earlier. Now a severe thunderstorm warning on this. So gusty winds uh, possible. Maybe some small hail out of this one. This is north and northwest of Deltona. Want to take you way to the north. So we're not talking uh, Cristobal anymore. We are talking about just severe storms working through portions of the northeast today. The east, the northeast, the mid-Atlantic. We've seen storms. Boston's at 68 degrees right now, but we have storms on the way. So let's walk you through this warning. You can see uh, uh, it extends just up to the west side of the metro area. So downtown Boston not included right now, but Middlesex, Norfolk and Worcester counties are under the warning. Cambridge, Newton, Somerville. I want you to watch for the possibility of hail winds in excess of 60 miles an hour. It's been a problem all week with trees coming down with these strong winds. So be prepared for that uh, threat once again. Marlboro, Sudbury, Waltham, Cambridge, and eventually Boston in the path of this one around 938 local time. So you got about a half hour before things really change in a big way. If you know somebody who may be out in Boston this evening, give them a buzz. Let them know it is on the way. You don't want to find yourself uh, outside right now. Want to get you back to the tropics, though. Our hurricane expert, Dr. Nab, watching the very latest with Cristobal. This is a large, wide-reaching storm with a lot of effects. The rain, gosh, the tornado warnings and the heavy rain already in Florida, and it's going to continue. Yeah. The worst aspect of this storm is that it's so large. That's the big problem, literally and figuratively, right? The center of circulation has not been the center of action. That's been way off to the east, and the maximum winds are 50 miles an hour, but the winds of tropical storm force uh, occupy from southwest to northeast some 400 miles of Gulf of Mexico real estate, so to speak. So this is a large system and all that banding here in the Florida Panhandle has caused all the severe weather and the heavy rainfall and the flooding and the size of this system. Look at all of these isobars. So there's a lot of pressure gradient over a large area. So there's strong winds occupying a huge part of the Gulf of Mexico and that big fetch is pushing the salt water into the Southeast Louisiana and Mississippi area. And so we've got a lot of issues with a big storm always worse than a small one. Now let's take a look at the severe thunderstorms, well not severe thunderstorms, but the thunderstorms and the heavy rainfall that have been producing some severe weather. The flash flooding has also been an issue. Uh, we were showing you the Bellevue area east of Ocala, but we've also got a flood warning here south of the Tampa Bay area, Palmetto, Sarasota, Bradenton, down to Venice and the I-75 corridor. A lot of heavy rainfall there. Turn around, don't drown applies anywhere you got a flood or flash flood warning and the area we're really concerned about is Baton Rouge, New Orleans for tomorrow, tomorrow night into um, Monday morning. And then that extends inland places like Jackson, Mississippi, Little Rock, Arkansas, even up into Missouri, St. Louis could be in the mix. Uh, this is going to bring a lot of heavy rainfall. So turn around, don't drown. That's the main way we can survive easily from flash flooding. Now, the winds are on the increase, 33 gusting uh, at Grand Isle, New Orleans gusting to 24. Uh, we've gusted up near 30 at Pensacola, but look at that flow from east to west. That's why that Mississippi coastline, southeast Louisiana, outside the risk reduction system is going to see the water rises. That's where the storm surge warning is because we're piling up the water. And tomorrow morning, we're going to have high tide. Right now, the water levels above normally dry ground at the coast, not so bad. But late tomorrow morning, we're going to have high tide and the strongest onshore push. That's when you could have the three to five feet of storm surge flooding. Look at that high tide late tomorrow morning. So, Alex, we've got a lot of issues mm -hmm. as the conditions deteriorate on the Gulf Coast overnight tonight. Yeah, we're going to have our Paul Goodlow there, by the way. Uh, we've got our extended live coverage that will continue next. Meteorologist Jackie Jarris, storm specialist Mark Elliott, and, of course, our crews scattered along the Gulf Coast. We're with you to keep you covered. Listen. And we are live here from the bayous of Louisiana. We're in New Iberia, where we are awaiting the arrival of Tropical Storm Cristobal. And that will be in the next 24 to 48 hours. What kind of impacts are we expecting here in central Louisiana? Because it's going to be very dependent upon where you are. And what we see here is going to be very different from my colleague Felicia Combs in Biloxi, Mississippi. 
That's right, Chris. Uh, I'm here in Biloxi, Mississippi, where this is one of the cities that's in the kind of small area that's included in the storm surge warning and the tropical storm warning, waiting for the wind, rain, and the possibility for that storm surge to continue to pick up. Here in Biloxi, those conditions will begin deteriorating tonight and then throughout the day on Sunday. How much rain could we see? How much storm surge inundation could we see? All of those details coming up. All right, Felicia, we are tracking the latest conditions right now with Tropical Storm Cristobal. I'm meteorologist Jackie Jarris. We're live on the air tonight until 12 a.m. Central Time, 1 a.m. Eastern Time, tracking our tropical storm. Now about 24 hours away from making landfall tonight. Tropical alerts are out for nearly four and a half million people as the storm approaches the Gulf Coast. Here's where the storm is right now. It's about 235 miles away from the mouth of the Mississippi River. It's packing winds around 50 miles per hour and continuing to move on that northerly track at 12 miles per hour. So you can see the storm uh, bringing a lot of action already well ahead of landfall, especially across the state of Florida. So we want to break right now to what's happening in Florida as we've had a couple of tornado warnings here already today. In fact, damage reported in the Orlando area uh, just about an hour or so ago. It's not unusual for tropical systems to spawn uh, quick hitting tornadoes. They tend to be brief. They tend to be uh, fairly weak, but they do cause damage and can be destructive. So let's uh, zoom into the area that we're looking at right now. And this does include Orlando, unfortunately, once again. In fact, I'm concerned about that whole area right there uh, capable of producing some pretty strong winds with this. So do take this warning seriously. We are seeing rotation to the north and to the east of uh, the Williamsburg area right now. So this is for Orange and Seminole counties until 930 local time. Uh, they are reporting that there is an observed tornado with this one uh, once again. So let's go ahead and put a track on this for you as you need to get to your safe place, the lowest level of your home away from doors and windows. This tornado right now is very near Universal and will be heading through Orlando around 909. It will move towards Altamonte Springs at 918, Winter Springs at 923, and then making its way towards uh, Sanford at 932 p.m. So again, a tornado warning. A uh, tornado has been spread spotted and confirmed around Universal right now. And this is heading to the north and east around 45 miles per hour and will be likely making its way through downtown uh, Orlando. Now that's the only tornado warning that we have right now. We'll have to continue to watch that line and this area. Another thing that I'm watching and that I do find concerning are these storms out here over the open water to the south and west of Fort Myers as well as into Naples. If those hold together, we could be talking about rotating storms between Fort Myers and, Na and Naples a couple of hours hours from now. And then we're also seeing these spinning rotating bands here uh, around Pensacola and bringing some heavy rain into Apalachicola. So let's take you back now. Uh, I want to go back to that tornado warning, bring you into this and uh, see if we can get velocity mode on here for you and uh, see if we can get any rotation within there. Um, yeah, so looks like there actually might be two different areas. This is the area where I'm seeing some very strong uh, shear right within that region uh, to the south of Paradise Heights to the west of the Lockhart area, right where that uh, green and that red are coming together. And then you can also see uh, perhaps some broad rotation to the south and the west of Orlando. But nothing is, is striking out at me, but witnesses are saying uh, that they do see a tornado with this cell. So a lot of times these can uh, spin up and they can uh, also kind of cycle back down and push on through. So there you can see the tornado warning. Uh, this whole area is of concern. I'm seeing that area of rotation right in there. That's a, that looks like a nice hook uh, on that storm right now. That's to the south of I-4, and that would be heading north of the downtown area, and then perhaps some uh, weak rotation within that area uh, as well. And this whole line right within there is likely producing some pretty strong and some damage winds at this time. So uh, I know a lot of people, um, you know, have been out. It's the weekend and uh, a lot of people are, are out and traveling at this time of the year as well. So uh, be familiar with your surroundings. Be aware of, of if you have friends or family members that happen to be out, make sure you call them and let them know what's going on and get them to their uh, safe place as well. So Orange and Seminole counties, uh, including uh, Orlando and Pine Hills under this tornado warning. So this is the 
the second one that includes the Orlando metro area for tonight. There's no watch, by the way, uh, but isolated tornadoes can and will be happening, we think, here for tonight. Uh, so be alert, be aware, keep it here to the Weather Channel and stay updated with these tornado warnings. Want to bring in our storm specialist, Mark Elliott. And Mark, I'm definitely seeing that rotation on the northern side of here. Uh, what are you seeing? Yeah, absolutely. There is definitely a kink in that line heading towards the Altamont Springs area on the north side of Orlando. But for the second time in about an hour, we have confirmed tornadoes going through the Orlando metro area. So we're looking live in Orlando right now. You can see the lightning flashes. What concerns me here is so many people on the roads. Look how busy those roads are by looking at the moving headlights there. They might not have any idea that there is a confirmed tornado moving through that west side that could slide towards the north. So the wide view here shows you this curling line of thunderstorms right in here, barreling towards the Orlando area. Uh, as this was approaching, little kinks in that line kicked off and we started getting some reports of tornadoes in the area. So what we're looking at from this vantage point is a little bit of a different mode of the radar. This is out of the Orlando airport. So you're looking at the terminal radar at this point uh, from right in here looking north. And it's this little area right in here that has some rotation and there's a secondary zone on the south side as well. I would argue the north one, as Jackie mentioned, is the more prevalent of the two. If we use the other radar site, let me uh, mess with this just a bit. You can get the idea that there is a distinct kink in the line right in here. You see that uh, that zone. Uh, I'll draw that again. There's inflow air coming in this way uh, and then there's another surge forward down here. So both of those areas are showing some signs of rotation at this point. Uh, getting a little bit closer in uh, and it's going to switch me to the tower radar. Uh, we have that potential for a tornado. So uh, bear with me here. I'm actually going to turn off that uh, that radar site out of the airport because we're not getting a good view of it. So this is now coming from uh, from the east coast from the Melbourne area and looking through Orlando. There's a, the, there's those two spots of concern. We've got one of those kinks in the line right here and the other one which is stronger on that north side. As for any debris being lofted into the air, we can look at the correlation coefficient to see if there's any debris. Uh, uh, and not just meteorological objects. You can certainly see there's a shift, right? All of this is out ahead of the rain. And so the radar is not really sure what to make of all that because it's bouncing off of bugs and dust and debris. But where it is raining back in here, there is no clear sign of a dropout. That is mostly suggesting that we have meteorological objects. All of that said, still the confirmed tag, still uh, the National Weather Service has spotters in the area saying, yes, this is a tornado that continues moving northeast at 40, uh, near Conway Road and uh, Millennia, and there are other circulations in that line of storm. So several different areas that could be spinning. So the National Weather Service is seeing that exact thing that we were talking about with that potential for uh, more in the way of uh, rotating storms. So that is something that we're following. There's a, a rotation point right in here and a rotation point right in here. Let me uh, take a, a bit of a timing look for you. It's moving at 40, so let, I have to adjust my uh, speed. And now I can time out those two different kinks in the line. Moving north, northeast, this first one towards Forest City, then uh, Wakiwa Springs, maybe all the way towards Sanford by about 9.30. The secondary area on the south side of Orlando that could produce a tornado as well is also moving towards Orlando and Winter Park within the next five to ten minutes. So this is the more populated area, you could argue, not that it's any slouch on the north side of the Orlando metro area, then continuing on towards Goldenrod, uh, Gabriella and Oviedo uh, by 930. So again, two different kinks on that line, both of which could be producing tornadoes at just about any point as they move through the area. So again, here's the, the kind of the broad view of this uh, storm system racing towards the Orlando area. Everybody along this line is going to have very gusty winds. Uh, and that is almost a guarantee. But when you kind of zoom out here, there are a couple of those kinks in the line. One of them right in here that could have a tornado. The other right in here that could produce tornadoes uh, as well. This is tied to a broader circulation. We can zoom out even further and show you what this looks like as tied to uh, Cristobal. Cristobal's low is all the way out here. You can see that we're starting to get some thunderstorm action associated with it. However, 
look at the amount of deep thunderstorm action that we have pumping in towards Florida and the big blow up of thunderstorms right in here. That's the severe warned and tornadic warned storms near Orlando. So Jackie, again, two times in about an hour with confirmed tornadoes yeah. moving through the Orlando area. And now we have some video uh, just into the weather channel of the tornado that hit Orlando earlier. Uh, this was the previous warning. So keep that in mind. This happened just a little bit over an hour ago and they can clearly see uh, rotation within that storm and a funnel. It's very difficult to see uh, whether or not that is hitting the ground. I do know that there has been some damage and I've seen some video of transformers uh, that have blown. So there you can see uh, definitely a uh, tornado and funnel that was spotted there. That was earlier. This is what's happening right now. And the concern is that it's nighttime and we've got some really heavy rain that's coming down. So if indeed there is another tornado associated with this and it's sounds like there is at least one was spotted earlier near Universal Studios uh, that it may be very difficult to see. So this this view you can see is just is very difficult to pick out much. We've got a building there. You know, you can maybe see some lights uh, from the streets from this as well. Uh, so a dangerous situation right now breaking in Orlando, Florida, uh, where we've had a confirmed tornado on the ground about uh, 10 minutes or so ago and a tornado warning is continuing at this time and this will likely be moving uh, through the downtown area. So this is all in relation to Tropical Storm Cristobal. We'll get these feeder bands and these outside bands that can have some rotation in them. Tropical systems, you know, have a lot of vorticity. And then when we get that friction as these bands make their way uh, over land, we can get these brief spin ups. You know, Mark, a lot of times uh, they can be brief, but they definitely can cause damage. So even though we don't have watches tonight, we do have some storms that have been spinning up and we've got what looks like two confirmed tornadoes already. Yeah, gosh, what a, 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 an evening all of a sudden around the Orlando metro area. I want to uh, take a brief moment to talk a little bit about what has occurred already in the Orlando area. These are the storm reports that have popped up uh, from the past you know, couple of hours. And look at this. We have several reports of funnels and these red uh, icons indicate tornadoes. So it would not surprise me at all if we have some more either on the south side or the north side of the Orlando area before we're done here because we have these worn storms with confirmed reports of tornadoes. Let's just uh, see what these uh, particular reports are talking about. We've got this one on the south side when a tornado was observed via a live camera. A TV news channel was there uh, crossing the 408. Now that was the one from earlier. Uh, and so that is uh, just to give you an idea of how busy it has been right around the Orlando area. Here's what's going on right now. We still have this tornado warning in place. This is a confirmed tornado for the Orlando metro area, including Orange and Seminole counties. Goes until 930, right through the heart of Orlando. Certainly Altamonte Springs, where there is even more of a circulation there on the north side, and Pine Hills included in this as well. Let's take a look at the high resolution radar. This happens to be coming from the Melbourne area. And when you have a signature like this with a big Big curl of storms uh, that's moving through the area. Uh, there's a lot of wind energy with this. A lot of you are seeing straight line winds. But it's the proverbial what goes up must come down analogy. When you have that much wind surging forward, there's also a component wind coming back in towards the storm, that inflow. And where those tangle with each other, you get these little kinks in the line, the little dog legs. Those are areas of enhanced spin. So right now there is one warning that is basically covering two of those areas of more organized spin. This one on the north side has been a little bit more put together. There is a lot of straight line wind energy going on the south side or really right through Orlando. Uh, a little bit closer in for you and uh, you can see some other towns popping up, Altamonte Springs for example. And uh, with that motion of the uh, raindrops, I think both of those have kind of stretched out or opened up a little bit, not as put together as where we were even a couple minutes ago. So that is some good news. But right in here, there's a wind shift and you can get a spin up tornado on that leading flank at just about any point. There's that kink in the line right in here, just outside of the Orlando area. Now you can make the argument that I four itself and through Orlando is now basically in the clear with regards to uh, intense tornadic activity. You still have a lot of wind and rain moving through, but that wind shift zone has now crossed 
over and through Orlando. So we're starting to say, OK, if you're far enough on the southwest side, you're probably no longer in as much of a risk as, say, the areas in the northeast side of this warning. We can show you Orlando where that heavy rain is moving through. Very strong winds, lots of rain out there. The cars have the high speed wipers, low speed driving, if you will, going uh, at this point because, gosh, it is really coming down. Uh, but no stranger to those intense thunderstorms. So hopefully the drivers are used to that. They know what to do. They're slowing down. They're familiar with their roads. But it gives you an idea of the of the strength of this storm, how often we're seeing the lightning flashes here, how heavy that rain is and how low the visibility has become. Uh, at any point within this warning, we could have more spin up tornadoes and this will not be the last of the tornado warnings. This is a trend. This is a hint. The atmosphere is suggesting that there's some shear across central Florida right now, which will only increase in North Florida and certainly along the northern Gulf Coast as we go through the next couple of days. This is directly tied to that large circulation from our tropical storm. Tropical Storm Cristobal continues to organize in the Gulf. We'll bring you all the updates both on our Tropical Storm and any severe or uh, tornado warnings through the rest of the evening. Is that neck carbs or of our weird earth next Sunday night on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 80 degrees under fair skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 72, winds light and variable. Sunday, partly cloudy skies, high 90, winds south-southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy in the evening with more clouds for later at night, low 72, winds south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Breaking right now, we've had several tornado reports in and around the Orlando metro area within the last couple of hours, including an active storm that's just to the north and east of Orlando right now that may be producing a tornado. This is a live look at Orlando. You can see the buildings of downtown. You can see some of the traffic uh, moving along, crawling along very slowly here as we have very heavy rain that's associated with these storms that are moving through here as well. So it may be very difficult difficult to see a tornado if indeed there is one. So take the warning seriously here for today. They already have been producing uh, some damage. We know with some power outages as well. So tracking that situation in Orlando, we've got a video of the tornado from earlier today, not the active warning right now, but this was about an hour and a half ago already. And there you can see it just about to uh, cross right this, uh, across the street right in front of their very eyes. Tough to tell here whether or not that's actually hitting the ground or if this is just a funnel, but we know at one time it did uh, hit the ground and cause some damage. This is another view of it uh, from earlier today. This one a little bit easier to uh, pick that out right there in the middle of your screen. You can see the lowering and the large parent cloud that goes along with that and clearly a funnel that does look like it is uh, touching the ground off into the distance there. So multiple reports of that tornado earlier that did cause some damage. And then just a short while ago, uh, uh, we had a report of a tornado near Universal Studios. It appears that that one has lifted now, but uh, we've got new warnings that have just been issued, especially to the north of there. We want to bring in our storm specialist, uh, Mark Elliott, and I was looking uh, in the chat room with the National Weather Service, and they're saying there may be five different yeah. areas of rotation in Lake County right now. That's just incredible. That is the newest tornado warning. We'll get to that one in just a second, but you're right. That whole area has a lot of shear. There's a shear line and about five different spots that are all showing at least some hints of circulation. The National Weather Service has uh, even better views of these storms than we do, but that said, we can see some of what they're uh, looking at as well. This is tied to the big circulation from Cristobal, right? You've got an area of low pressure in the Gulf and some thunderstorm development near that. Then, big area of spin around that, and so you're in that tropical moist flow with different winds aloft and different amounts of shear once there's land interaction at the bottom and not up at the top of the 
the atmosphere, and that is helping to increase our tornado threat. So let's zoom into the Orlando area. This first warning that we've been following is going to be allowed to expire, at least as of at this moment, what the National Weather Service is thinking about as the rain cooled air is surging forward and is overtaking some of those spin points that were previously there. Uh, that said, there's a pretty good connection uh, to that uh, uh, that flow. Uh, I'm not completely convinced that this isn't trying to recycle now on the east side, the northeast side of Orlando outside of Winter Park. That is an area that still has some of that spin. So I'm sure the National Weather Service is going to be watching this and hoping that it opens up just a little bit more. No sign of debris being lofted into the air with that component. So it doesn't look like there's a strong tornado, but there could be a tornado nonetheless. Again, we have this other storm that we're watching a little bit tough to see from our vantage points from the radar sites that we have. It's a little bit far on the north side from the Orlando airport. It's certainly getting far from Melbourne, and this is now a view from Jacksonville to just give you the flavor of how much rain we have in the area. But to see the motion of those raindrops, you have to go back to that Melbourne site. And here's what the National Weather Service is looking at. You got one little circulation here, one here, one here, one here, and then, you know, we can continue that conceivably down the line into that uh, what's known as the range fold. You see how we lose out on the motion data uh, a certain distance away from the radar. Are. That's called a range fold. It's a function of distance. National Weather Service is using some of this data. They're also putting the Jacksonville data on at the same time. They've got the Orlando Airport. They're seeing it all. We're only showing you one at a time, which is how they can get to five. And I've got the four little circles on the map here. Any one of these could be putting down a tornado at just about any point. The strongest of the, the two is basically one here and one here. Either one of those could give us a tornado. And so this one's moving north pretty quickly as well. Here's a look at some of the timing on that north one towards Lake Catherine by about 930. And that south area is going northeast as well towards, say, Blue Springs Landing just after 930. Again, either one of those could give you a spin up tornado. It is not the only area that has some spin right now. Look at what's happening with these storms that are approaching Flagler Beach, also Daytona. All these severe thunderstorm warnings are indicating some decent amounts of shear also. So it would not surprise me if some of those are a need to have tornado warnings as well. Let's go back to New Iberia, though. Uh, Chris Bruin standing by. Chris, this is all tied to that big circulation with our tropical storm in the Gulf. Yeah, and you know, that's the difference between the eastern half of this storm and the western half. That's where we are. We're in central Louisiana, about 20 miles south of Lafayette. And right now it's a pretty tranquil summer's evening here in southern Louisiana. And actually, the breeze is really helping it make it feel nice. I want to show you the sunset and the changing sky conditions. We have noticed an increase in the clouds, but still a lot of dry air. And that dry air that you see, those pockets of clear sky up above the horizon. That's what's helping prevent crystal ball from strengthening. So it's really helping us out here and it's going to continue to kind of feed into the core of the storm. That will limit the overall strength uh, as it moves on to land. But big changes on the way. We are on the edge of tropical storm mornings here in Iberia Parish and many others where flash flooding and winds are going to be a big issue. We'll also talk about storm surge impacts, especially over towards New Orleans, Lake Pontchartrain and the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Those are going to be spots to watch, um, especially going into tomorrow and early on Monday. Stick it, uh, stick with us here on the Weather Channel. We've got continuing live coverage and we'll have live reports from Biloxi, Mississippi coming up after the break and more on the tornadoes in Florida. Your mission, stand up. Weekday mornings on the Weather Channel. Breaking right now, we are continuing to track the threat of tornadoes in and around the Orlando metro area. Uh, we've had two reports so far in the last couple of hours, and right now, Orlando, uh, the threat is just to your north and east, and then extending into Lake County as well. But look at the downtown area. You are getting pounded with torrential downpours, very heavy rain. This will likely lead to some uh, standing water, some localized flash flooding is going to be a possibility. 
reality is it's been pouring here uh, for more than a half an hour with really heavy rainfall rates. Uh, we've got a line of storms that have been pushing through the region. Uh, lots of little kinks and little areas of rotation within that line, uh, not to mention the threat of uh, some strong winds that could be gusting uh, as much as maybe 40 or 50 miles per hour. There you can see uh, what looked like a little flash of lightning uh, as well. Uh, this is video, a new cut of video for us here from earlier. This was about 7.30 or so Eastern time. And clearly you can see uh, that is a tornado. Actually, it looks like a water spout. It looks like it's moving over the water right there. But uh, uh, that is the rotating storm and that moved over the water in this area. Once that makes its way over land, uh, then we call it a tornado. And there have been some reports of damage. Nothing serious from what we've seen so far, but there have been some transformers at least uh, that have been damaged here tonight. So some folks are going to be without power. So if you know that includes somebody uh, that you happen to know, uh, make sure that you get in touch with them as new warnings should be issued. So bottom of the hour right now here, 930, our storm specialist, Mark Elliott, I know you're tracking all of that. Uh, hopefully it looks like we'll allow that Orlando one to expire, but we're certainly not done just yet. Yeah, there's a lot of different kinks in those lines, a lot of potential for tornadoes still. This is the broad circulation. Our, our tropical storm, we'll give you updates on that in just a second, still well out into the Gulf. But look at this feed of tropical moisture that's pointed at Florida, and we still have at least one tornado warning. Uh, this area, not out of the woods yet, can, uh, can uh, you know, conceivably we could have more spin-up tornadoes on these little kinks in the line, one in here, one in here. This is the Orlando area. We had one of those come through here and one on the south side. So it's been very busy thus far. Uh, and again, there's still a pretty good wind shift. Uh, Oviedo uh, still potentially with some spin there. So the National Weather Service is watching this. There's no warning on this at the moment, but gosh, if that tightens up any further, there might need to be another one. And again, no sign of debris, but you can see that wind shift even on the correlation uh, correlation uh, co correlation coefficient, which looks at debris or tumbling in the air. On the north side of the area, there is still a tornado warning. This is for Lake County. It goes until 945. Uh, potential for several different areas of spin within here. Look at that wind shift uh, within that and several little kinks in there that are moving north close to 40 miles per hour. There are also uh, some signs of circulations in these severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, the one uh, heading towards Flagler and just south of Palm Coast, that one's at least at times shown signs of circulation. Let's slide down the road just a little bit, get towards Daytona Beach. Sometimes in these, especially in any sort of tropical air mass and tropical spin, it's not necessarily red and green right next to each other that gets a tornado warning. It's red next to a little bit less red. It indicates that spin as well. So that's an area that we're watching heading uh, just north of Daytona Beach, currently a severe thunderstorm warning in Volusia County. So want to go back out to Chris Bruin now in New Iberia. He is uh, following the ins and outs of our tropical storm still developing in the Gulf. Chris. Yeah, so, you know, we're about 24 hours away from a landfall uh, or within an hour or two or so, uh, given the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center. We're expecting that to be somewhere in Louisiana, say between here and New Orleans. So we're likely going to be on the west side of the storm, a lot drier than say uh, our friends around New Orleans and certainly the Mississippi, Alabama and Florida Gulf Coast. That's where a lot of the activity is. Right now it's fairly quiet this evening. We've had a few brief showers and we've noticed a slight increase in the wind but that's a far cry from what we'll actually see come tomorrow. Say at this time, expect a lot more rain on the way, and that may be a big concern, especially around areas around Lake Pontchartrain, where we could see a water rise of two to four feet, maybe some locally higher amounts outside of the levee barriers in New Orleans. So that will be a spot to watch for some dangerous storm surge and flash flooding. Several inches of rain could be expected, especially on that eastern half. And Jackie, that's where all the activity's been. It's been in Florida. But what's the latest on tropical storm Cristobal? Yeah, well, it's still packing winds around 50 miles per hour. It's just a little over 200 miles away from the mouth of the Mississippi River. And when we take a look at the map, it's just so impressive that the center is right over here, but all the action is happening so far removed from the center. So that really tells you how disorganized the system is. We've got a lot of dry air on the western side of it. So things are doing okay into the western Gulf. It's the eastern Gulf uh, that's having all the issues right now. We do think conditions are going to continue to go down here 
kill here into the coastal areas of Louisiana and Mississippi as well. And some of those tropical storm force wind gusts should be arriving sometime tonight. As we take a look at those winds, we are getting close into some of those buoys offshore. There you can see 38 mile per hour winds. So watch for those to start to increase and we'll start to watch more of those battering waves to begin to make their way into the coastal areas. So we do still have tropical storm warnings in effect and that stretches from Metro Coastal City, Louisiana, all the way over into the panhandle areas of Florida. Those tropical storm conditions are going to be pushing in for tonight and watching for that wall of water to begin to push up. Land up fall will be possible by late tomorrow and tropical tornadoes possible tonight. The open road. Better days start with the Weather Channel. The indirect impacts from Tropical Storm Cristobal continue to move in. That includes severe weather and tornadoes moving through the Florida Peninsula. And unfortunately, there may be more of this before we are done. A long way to go with this tropical storm moving north through the Gulf and a lot of tropical moisture on that east side. Uh, these individual storms that you're looking at here in the Gulf, those are all supercell thunderstorms. There's a big rotation with those. If those hold together, that west coast of Florida is going to get busy in, say, two to maybe three three hours. That's something that we're watching. More immediately, we've been watching a cluster of thunderstorms moving through the Orlando area now north of town uh, with some tornado warnings that includes Lake County for at least another five minutes or so uh, for this uh, tornado warning. It goes until 945 as I mentioned and there's this distinct shear line through here. Anywhere along that line you could have some spin up tornadoes. None of them screaming out at me at this point as being exceptionally strong taking over suggesting an imminent tornado but it's enough spin and shear that there certainly could be that spin up tornado at just about any point. You can also make the argument that this little kink in the line outside of Sanford also has a decent chance. So there's this push forward towards Geneva and the wind's backing up on that north side. So if you're in Geneva or maybe just north of there, watch that area carefully. If that gets any more organized, there may be more tornado warnings issued in that area. But again, it is tied to that broad circulation associated with our tropical storm, Cristobal and the Gulf. So let's go back to New Iberia as Chris Bruin is standing by there. Hey, good evening, Mark. And uh, as everyone's watching from home, again, the worst of the weather is still yet to arrive. This has been a slow moving storm. We've been monitoring this since it became a tropical depression on Monday. That's almost a week ago. And we've been watching it as it just sat over Mexico. It didn't move. Now it's moving. Uh, and it's still fairly weak. It's got a lot of dry air in it, and we've been noticing that here even in Louisiana. Yesterday, there was very little in the way of cloud cover at all from New Orleans all the way to Lake Charles. Today, we have seen the clouds increase, even the storms, especially over the Florida Panhandle, getting into the Mississippi, Alabama, Gulf Coast, and even into parts of New Orleans. But here in central and western Louisiana, it's been fairly quiet. We've had a few passing showers. Tomorrow, expect a lot more clouds, and also a bigger increase in the winds as well as the rainfall. We'll see scattered showers and maybe some bands of heavier rains, those tropical downpours, and then worsening conditions, especially as we go towards later in the afternoon and into the overnight hours. Someone who has seen a lot more rain today than we have here in New Iberia, that is Felicia Combs, our meteorologist in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, Felicia, talk to us how the weather has been for Saturday. Have people been able to get out? I know a lot of people are taking their spring breaks that got postponed because of the coronavirus. They're going on those vacations now. And people, you know, they didn't seem to cancel their plans necessarily because of our incoming tropical storm. But how are they handling the changes? Yeah, uh, Chris, you know, uh, yesterday was a beautiful day here in Biloxi. Today has been kind of a day of transition, transition. but I'll tell you that dry air that you were talking about actually has really um, staved off the rain here for quite some time in Biloxi. So we had one kind of very strong pocket of rain moving through. And then if you were to look at the radar for hours, it looks like we should be under rain, but we had a bit of dry air that was hanging around and that dry air has since eroded away. We're starting to see that rain come down. And I think this is kind of just the beginning of it. This is the beginning of uh, seeing that rain that's going to be a bit more continuous. Now, you mentioned people still kind of uh, taking their vacation. So there are quite a few people that finally started to come out and they were in the, the casinos that Biloxi's known here for. We actually spoke with Mayor Gillich a little bit earlier and he said, you know, if it does start to worsen, the hotels do have a plan and they will tell the people staying there what to do. 
you see in a hotel or one of these resorts, they, they'll people uh, they'll tell you, hey, you know, we, you're going to have to move on if you know if, if it intensifies to a situation where they need to close. Uh, of course, we will too. But uh, you know, just just stay tuned, and, and uh, you you can uh, kind of feel what's happening if you if you're watching the Weather Channel or some of these other you know. Uh, uh, Forecaster, so we're you know real confident that we can handle the crowd that's here and uh, keep them welcome and keep them you know happy. And of course, yeah, great advice there. Just stay tuned. This is something we're going to continue to watch. Now, Biloxi, one of the the small portions of the Gulf Coast that is under not only the tropical storm warning, but also a storm surge warning that's stretching from the mouth of the Mississippi to the west of us and then stretching about a little less than five miles east of us to Ocean Springs. The reason for that is Biloxi is a city that is just nearly surrounded by water. It kind of sits on a peninsula with the Gulf of Mexico to the south and then the Bay of Biloxi wraps around to the north east and we are going to have a persistent onshore wind that's going to last for uh, pretty much the entire day on Sunday and that really does increase that risk of storm surge really expecting here especially for Biloxi Gulfport a good portion of the Gulf Coast to see the conditions continuing to deteriorate tonight seeing those rainfall rates picking back up and uh, Chris you know I, I think that really tomorrow is when all of the Gulf Coast is going to be in the thick of it. Yeah, the second half of the weekend is really going to be a washout for so many beachgoers and just families uh, on a weekend getaway or even their summer vacations. And that's something we're going to be monitoring here very closely. We have teams spread out from New Iberia, where I am, all the way to the Florida Panhandle. It'll be very interesting to stick around on the Weather Channel morning, afternoon, and all night long to see the changes on the conditions and the differences on what side of the storm you're at. We're on the western side, and it really is going to be a different story than what Felicia will see. And Biloxi, Mississippi. But right now, it is beautiful here. And I want to leave you as we had to break. We'll be back with more continuing live coverage, of course, of the tornadoes in Florida and the latest on our tropical storm, Cristobal. But take a look at the sunset as it sets off from the horizon and listen to the crickets. We really don't like fast food. We do not. Weird Earth, premiering next Sunday at 9, only on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under clear skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 72. Winds light and variable. Sunday, partly cloudy skies, high 90 winds south southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy in the evening with more clouds for later at night. Low 72 winds south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back to the Weather Channel as we continue to track Tropical Storm Cristobal moving through the Gulf of Mexico. I want to give you some of the latest stats and get your bearings so you know what to expect with this storm system. It is still moving north, a little bit slower today than at this time yesterday, moving north at 12 miles per hour. Top wind speed near 50 miles per hour, and it's now 235 miles or so south southwest of the mouth of the Mississippi River. Here's the center of our storm, and what's different right now is that we're starting to see a little bit more uh, uh, organized thunderstorm activity near that center. Sure, it's being overshadowed by the plume of tropical moisture well on that east side. That's going to continue to be a characteristic of, uh, characteristic of this storm. It's going to be severely loaded uh, on that east side as opposed to what will happen west of the circulation. But it is, you know, interesting at least to have a little bit more of that thunderstorm action near the center. It still looks much more subtropical than fully tropical at this point, but if we can sustain these thunderstorms overnight near that center, it does give at least a little potential for uh, some more strengthening as we approach that Louisiana coastline by this time 
tomorrow. Again, all of that said, the heaviest rains have been in central Florida. There's more on the way. These are supercell thunderstorms hanging out just off the coast. So that west coast of Florida has to watch out. And already the, the first kind of round of rain has arrived towards that I-10 corridor as far east as Jacksonville, as far west as New Orleans. Let's get in towards uh, central Florida. That first round of rain came through the Tampa Bay area. It's now a waiting game for any of those storms off the coast. Look at this surge of wind. This curled uh, the segment has had tornado warnings in its and, you know, history here moving through Orlando, kinking the line right in here, getting more interesting. That is one area that we'll have to watch pretty carefully, so much so that I'd like to zoom in on it for you so you know exactly where it is, because it's going to be moving kind of north up this line. So and, and the line itself is going this way. So that means New Smyrna Beach. You got to watch this area pretty carefully just in case we get a little bit more uh, rotation on this. There's certainly a wind shift right in there. So that's something that we have to continue to monitor. As for the tropical system itself, moving towards the Louisiana coastline as we go through the next, oh, let's say uh, 12 to 24 hours, approaching late Sunday afternoon uh, with uh, winds as high as 60. That core of the storm holds together through Arkansas and then makes the core the curve through the Midwest. So, Jackie, an interior flood threat as well as a tornado threat that does move well inland as well. So a place like New Orleans already getting brushed with showers from time to time. You can see the low overcast conditions and it just looks heavy uh, with humidity, doesn't it? There are the raindrops on the lens too and the winds are starting to pick up a little bit. Uh, just recorded wind gusts at the airport around 31 miles per hour. So watch for an increase and uh, more frequency in some of those stronger wind gusts as we head through the late night hours for tonight and into the day on your Sunday. Well, humans have a attempted to conquer the problems of changing water levels for thousands of years. One of the oldest weapons is the levee. Here's a look at how levees work and how they can fail. Like the roads and bridges you use every day, levees are just another piece of the infrastructure often taken for granted. Until there's a problem. Levees are surprisingly common in the U.S. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says one out of five counties have levees. About 100,000 miles of levees wind their way across the nation. But the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for just 14,400 miles, or about 15 percent. The remaining 85,000 or so miles fall under many different local, state, and federal jurisdictions. At their simplest, a levee is just a pile of dirt or wall of concrete meant to hold back the water. There are four primary reasons why levees fail. They include seepage, stability, erosion, and height. Water can seep through the levee, weakening the structure from within. When a section of levee slides away, that's called a stability failure. So-called toe erosion can steepen the levee slope until the now unstable structure collapses. Finally, the levee just isn't high enough. Water flows over the top, causing the levee to fail from the top down. But most well-maintained levees don't fail. And today, hundreds of communities depend on levees for their livelihoods and even their lives. And with all that rain that's coming now with Tropical Storm Cristobal, we'll be keeping an eye on the area rivers because many of them will likely be on the rise. There's so much moisture associated uh, with this storm and we've got high pressure, which has been in place here across the nation's midsection. And that's been allowing for very warm and very humid conditions to develop even in advance of Cristobal coming in. Now this trough that's developing and pushing in from the west will help to drive that northward and pull that moisture to the Gulf Coast, but also very far inland. In fact, we're talking tropical moisture making its way through the middle Mississippi River Valley and then eventually working its way into parts of the Midwest. That's going to be meeting up with that cold front at the surface. And so we will have this corridor where we could get some widespread heavy rain, but also that can help to uh, enhance some of those winds. So we could get a quarter of uh, some damaging winds with that as well. So the main risk areas for flooding for your Sunday through Monday morning, especially right near and to the right of where this may makes landfall, but also stretching all through Florida, which has already been hit so hard the last couple of days with the heavy downpours. Now, Monday into Tuesday morning, we'll be watching parts of Arkansas as well as into western parts of Tennessee, even into places like St. Louis. And there's a look at the forecast river gauges over the next couple of days, some in flood.
Your itchy eyes know they're out and a perfect size just for your kids. Welcome back in on this Saturday night here across southern Louisiana. We're in New Iberia where we are tracking tropical storm Cristobal and we are tracking the intensity and why this isn't likely to rapidly intensify. It has something to do with dry air and many other factors that we're going to be explaining coming up. Felicia. Yeah, Chris, and we were actually experiencing something that dry air for a good portion of our Saturday here in Biloxi, but that has since eroded away and it is raining now and I think we're in for quite a bit more rain. We're going to talk about the risks that Biloxi faces, including storm surge that's coming up. Tropical storm Cristobal forecast to make landfall here on the Louisiana coast sometime on Sunday evening. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel. The winds are ramping up. The waves are crashing on the beaches and we've got concerns with a high tide on Sunday. We'll talk impacts coming up here on the Weather Channel. And I'm meteorologist Jackie Jarrett. So glad you could join us here tonight for our special coverage of Tropical Storm Cristobal. We are live tonight until 12 a.m. Central, 1 a.m. Eastern time, tracking this storm. And now it's uh, likely just a little under 24 hours from making landfall tonight. Tropical alerts are out for nearly four and a half million people as the storm approaches the Gulf Coast. Here's where the storm is right now. It's just over 200 miles away from the mouth of the Mississippi River. You can see the icon indicating where that center of rotation is, but the impacts are being felt far away uh, from where that center is, and Florida has been getting hit so hard for tonight. Maximum sustained winds are around 50 miles per hour. The pressure is at 993 millibars, and winds are pulling in from the north at 12 miles per hour. It's going to continue to move on uh, towards the north and move its way towards the Gulf Coast, and conditions are already starting to begin to deteriorate and we'll continue to do so overnight tonight, but tomorrow we'll start to feel some of the major impacts. You heard uh, Chris Bruin there kind of alluding to the reason why this isn't going to strengthen a lot more. It could go up a little bit in wind speed, I think, before making landfall, but one of the big factors is that we have some very dry air, which is on the western side of that, and that's getting wrapped around, especially in the mid-levels of the storm, and really preventing it uh, from getting more organized and tightening up and starting to see a lot of that conversion near the center of the storm. So all the action has been way over here across parts of Florida. Today we've had a huge explosion of showers and thunderstorms and some of them have been severe today including a couple of tropical tornadoes. As we zoom in there you can see the center of rotation and it is expected to continue to move up to the north and then eventually a little bit of a pull on off towards the north and to the west. We've been watching the rain showers continuing to push in across the region. Thankfully right now all the tornadoes warnings have expired. We've got rain across much of northern Florida and this is going to be the big area to watch I think in the hours ahead but then also the rain showers moving into Pensacola as well as into New Orleans and those will become more frequent and more intense I think with time too. So this is that little curved area a little uh, convective system that moved through Orlando and caused some of uh, those issues. Daytona Beach has been getting hit hard with the heavy rain right now and it looks like we just got an expiration of our warning uh, for Palm Coast as well as into the St. Augustine area, but still some very heavy rain and gusty winds on the range of around 40 to 50 miles per hour will be possible. Wind sustained staying below tropical storm force now, at least on land, but some of the buoys are working on some gusts in that area, 38 miles per hour just off the Mississippi coast. We still have tropical storm warnings remaining in effect from intracoastal city Louisiana, stretching all the way over to the Florida Panhandle near Okaloosa, Okaloosa and uh, Walton counties there, and the storm surge warnings for southeast in Louisiana and Mississippi too as those water level rises will begin to uh, increase with time here within the next 24 hours too. We want to bring in our storm specialist meteorologist Mark Elliott. Mark all eyes on the Gulf Coast but far reaching impacts way away from where this thing is going to be making landfall. Yeah so let's take it through the next couple of days. When does landfall occur and then where do we go from here because you're right there will be from some fairly distinct inland impacts from this circulation as well. Let's start out by looking at that forecast for the next couple of days. Remember our uh, center is still down here by uh, Sunday late afternoon. Uh, we will be approaching landfall somewhere along the Louisiana coastline. We'll move through Louisiana through the day on Monday and then we'll get uh, somewhere through Arkansas Monday overnight into Tuesday. That's not the end of this circulation. There's going to be a front that 
approaches eventually. But I think we'll make that turn into the Midwest, cross over the Mississippi River again before this thing is completely kind of ingested and enveloped in that approaching front, which will continue to kick it north and east and away uh, and accelerate that speed of any circulation that's left as well. But following the center inland is important. It does bring that tropical moisture, a little core of tropical moisture northbound, so some heavier rainfall rates. It also brings a lot of that spin, and so that spin can uh, fairly effectively kick up tornadoes even well north. So these are areas that need to watch for that over the next couple of days. This uh, again goes into the forecast. This is a look at the European ensemble members and almost all of them are uh, fairly well in that cone at this point. So it gives us pretty high confidence that the cone is in a good place, that the models are behaving correctly. Uh, this was from the earlier this morning uh, model runs when the storm center was still down here. So uh, when we get the overnight runs, they will jump up to here and start from there. But again, it just shows you it's not just one model we look at. We look at lots of different versions of those models to, to figure out where to go. So as for your preparation, operations uh, the Basically, the earliest arrival time of those tropical storm force winds is in the early morning hours of Sunday. If you're not done preparing, uh, basically now it's starting to be too late because the bands are already there, showers and storms are already there. And, you know, you get kind of a broad look at how this circulation approaches, and it really goes downhill quickly through the early morning hours with those first uh, real, more considerable organized banding features approaching the coast of Louisiana and Mississippi, including into the Biloxi area one of many places preparing for this significant storm surge, wind and rain. And that's where we find our own uh, Felicia Combs tonight. Felicia, there's already been some scattered showers there. I think that's really going to pick up over the next 24 hours. Yeah, and I think you're exactly right, Mark. We're going to start to see things really beginning to deteriorate. And actually, this is kind of the, um, we're on the cusp of it right now as we head into our Saturday night. Sunday is going to be the day when it's going to be worst here in Biloxi. Uh, you know, if you looked at the radar for the past few hours, we were under rain, but there was no rain at the surface. And that's because we had some of that, a little bit of dry air, like we've been talking about. That has since eroded away, and we've now got some showers. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm already standing in a puddle here. So we're starting to see that rain stack up and it's just begun raining. But earlier, I want to show you this amazing time lapse video uh, that our photographer Rodney caught. This is just absolutely beautiful video. This was kind of one of those pockets of very heavy rain that was out in front. You see the rain sweeping through and this was a, a pocket of rain to contend with. The winds were gusting. The rain was coming down very heavily. The boats here in the small craft harbor were kind of shaking around. And I do think that's a good pre cursor or a good introduction to what we could be seeing as we get into some of these heavier rain bands, especially later tonight and through Sunday. So several different hazards that we have to worry about here in Biloxi, one of them being a flood watch. That is until Tuesday because you've already seen quite a bit of rain. The ground is saturated. As you can see, I'm standing in a puddle. There's nowhere for the rain to go at this point. But then we also have the risk of some river flooding. We've got that storm surge problem. The storm surge forecast three to five feet here for for the area in Biloxi that is possible. And then of course we're going to throw in the possibility for some tropical storm force winds and we're also going to throw in the possibility for an isolated tornado or so as we head through Sunday. So this is kind of just the beginning and this is a very slow moving system. So this isn't going to be a quick hit and then moving out. This is kind of we're starting to see the rain right now. It's going to rain on and off Saturday night on and off throughout the day on Sunday and this is going to last into Sunday evening, Sunday night and I think even still by Monday we're still going to have some rain hanging around. In fact, uh, so we could see up to isolated amounts of 10 inches in this area, Mark. So uh, a lot of different things that Biloxi and the northern Gulf Coast is going to have to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, we've got that, uh, as you mentioned, the storm surge component there because of the kind of the layout of the land and the water rise that we are anticipating. So let's go into details here on those coastal impacts, the, the push of that water, which is really what evacuations are ordered because of. It's not necessarily the wind, certainly not the wind from a tropical storm that'll send you scurrying from an area. It is the water rise that is more of a threat. So the storm surge warnings are up from Gulfport on the Mississippi side right on down into southeastern uh, Louisiana and the mouth of the Mississippi River. Already we've got this strong circulation and near that east side where the winds are stronger and you don't have the dry air and the shear. Look at the uh, wave heights that are being estimated right now. Uh, there's 15 to 20 footers there and that is going to bend its way towards the coastline as we work our way through the overnight tonight and continue into Sunday. Specifically where 
the shape of the land helps to catch those waves and you've got that wind pushing in, it's real tough for the water to get back out. And that's why that persistent onshore flow is going to create that water rise. It's why the worst of the water rise will be in that corridor with the storm surge warnings of three to five feet. But eventually, all that water has to come back out and it does so through narrow breaks in the sandbar and you get these rip currents. So a high risk of rip currents even well away from the center. Of course, preparations and evacuations ramped up today across areas of the Gulf Coast as Cristobal continues to move in. And meteorologist Chris Bruin is in New Iberia, Louisiana this evening with the latest. Chris, uh, it's a waiting game at this point. Yeah, it's a waiting game and it's really going to be dependent upon what side of the storm you're on because this is not like your usual tropical storm. We've been looking at it from the satellite and from the water vapor. It looks very unhealthy. It's got a lot of dry air in it and it's very lopsided. All right, so that means a lot of the action, a lot of the worst of the weather, strongest winds and some of the worst rainfall is going to be well east of the center circulation. Not to say there won't be bursts of gusty winds at the center, especially if this does strengthen even a little bit more before moving ashore in Louisiana sometime tomorrow. Um, but the worst of the weather is really going to be on the eastern half of the storm. We're on the western half. We're going to be on the west side of that circulation. We could be close to the center, but our overall rainfall totals may be less than two inches just because of the nature and characteristics of the storm. But it's still one you want to take uh, seriously. Then no need to panic, no need to, you know, mob the stores of supplies. Most are probably not even going to lose power on this. There could be some isolated pockets, but it's certainly not going to be widespread. I think storm surge is going to be a problem, especially in those low line vulnerable spots near Lake Pontchartrain and outside of New Orleans. Once you get outside of that incredible levee system that they have, especially upgraded since uh, Hurricane Katrina. All right, we drove down to the coast. You know, New Orleans is not like the rest of the Gulf Coast. We've got beautiful sandy beaches. You've got a lot of bayous and sugarcane fields and marshland all across the coastline. So even though here in New Iberia, we're not far from the shores, we still have about a 30 mile drive to a, a town, a Sippermore Point, where we talked to one of the lo local legends who's been there 16 years. Here's what he said about living there and helping one another out. We can do it our eyes closed. We, we're so used to hurricane prep. And then, like if I'm through, it, it's, like, it's, it's a close-knit coastal community. When I'm through, hey, my neighbor across the street, you need some help, you need some, hey, can you come help me with this? So, sir, I, I, yesterday I helped two guys pull out some big offshore boats and put them on the trailers just in case. So, you know, everybody helps everybody, so it's kind of it's kind of cool. I love that mentality. That's what a lot of communities here, from New Iberia all the way over to New Orleans and everywhere really in between, everyone kind of helping everybody. What they're doing in preparations of Cristobal is kind of just moving out any patio furniture, anything on the lower levels. Houses here are built up on stilts. They allow for that water rise, which typically comes in tropical systems. And it's very interesting, Mark. You know, he had so many stories. He's been there for 16 years. Of course, he's been through Rita. That, that actually happened a year after they moved there. And the water was taller than me. He has a marker of all the storms that came through. And one of the things I find most fascinating about uh, the story, remember Barry? last year. Sure. A lot of people refer to it as barely berry. It was very insignificant from what people were imagining it to be, but in Sippermore points, it was quite uh, damaging. In fact, the water level had a pretty significant rise at his home there in some local um, isolated towns in coastal Louisiana. So even tropical systems that aren't super strong, tropical storms and weak hurricanes can produce significant water rise, especially if you're on a vulnerable coastline like we have here in Louisiana. And, and you heard Chris say it, water over Chris's head is about double my height. So that's a significant amount of water. Chris, thanks so much for that update tonight. And Jackie, if there's any storm that is really a, uh, you know, a good example that the impacts could be really far away from the center, I think this one might be the one. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, what happened in Florida today has certainly been evidence of that having some serious impacts there from the outer bands of Tropical Storm Cristobal, uh, kicking up a couple of tropical tornadoes. Here's some video of that from earlier today in the Orlando metro area. We had actually two reports of tornadoes. They were kind of back to back 
back, one sort of after the other from two different cells that pushed on through. Uh, small amounts of damage reported, and that's about it. And that's a little bit of good news that we just had some power outages with this. We've got another view of this tornado, some other uh, video into the Weather Channel. And there you can see this one uh, was actually over water. I mean, told that this one was uh, more of a water spout than anything else. And once it made its way uh, over land, it kind of dissipated and lifted back up. So that's kind of typical uh, with tropical tornadoes. They tend to be short lived. They tend to spin up very quickly and can dissipate just as easily as they kick up. They're difficult to detect, even sometimes on Doppler radar, uh, but they can and do cause some damage. There is the threat of more tornadoes here for tonight. I'm especially kind of watching to the north and northeast of the Orlando metro area. And then tomorrow, I think the panhandle will be more at risk. And as I've been looking at the satellite imagery, there are just a couple of different things that I've noticed that we've got some new blow ups and some new bandings that are beginning to happen over open water. We'll have to keep a close eye on them and see if those continue to expand northward because that could reach the U.S. coast uh, later on for tonight. The rain with this has been really, really heavy. We've got flood watches and flash flood watches across almost every corner of the state of Florida. Radar indicating we've had as much as three to six inches of rainfall just outside of the Ocala area and rainfall still to come likely to be the heaviest in northern parts of the state now, but we could see anywhere between two and as much as five inches of rain ahead. Looks like they right now it's coming down the weather channel. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under fair skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 72. Winds light and variable. Sunday, intervals of clouds and sunshine. High. 90 winds south southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly to mostly cloudy, low 72 winds south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Alright, thanks for joining us here on this Saturday night live from central Louisiana. We're here in New Iberia, of course, monitoring the latest on Tropical Storm Cristobal off of the Gulf of Mexico. We're about 24 hours or so away from a landfall potentially in central Louisiana. We're looking from anywhere from here over to the Mississippi state line, likely going to be somewhere in between there. But again, don't just focus on the center. Typically with strong tropical storms and hurricanes, you would look more towards the core for the worst impacts. That is not how this is going to play out. We are going to have the highest water rise to the east, and that may extend all the way into the Florida Panhandle, just given the lopsidedness and the characteristics of our tropical storm. You can clearly see that with the water vapor. You've got a lot of dry air being wrapped into it, and I can tell you, being in Louisiana now for two days, we've had more sunshine than we've had clouds, okay? That's very unlike a typical tropical system or hurricane that would be approaching you 24 hours from now. You'd have a lot more cloud cover and a lot more outer bands. That's not how this has been. We have seen a lot more rain though in Florida and that's where some of the worst weather has been today. We're going to see more of that for many of us in the northern Gulf Coast come Sunday and especially heading into tomorrow night and early Monday morning when the worst of the weather will arrive. All right, let's take a look at our hurricane hunters and what their flight looked like today as they were flying into the storm and getting the latest measurements and observations. Again, this hasn't really increased a lot. And so they've been able to fly over uh, Cristobal and even see the ocean because it's kind of broken up. There's not a huge cloud deck. There's a lot of dry air being wrapped into it. And you can see that here as they're flying over the storm. Let's take a listen to what they had to say. The only thing I would say is uh, we also live here. So we, we know exactly every time we step to the jet, exactly who we're doing it for. Um, it's our families, it's our friends, and it's everybody that we're trying to protect. So um, just listen to your alerts, watches, and warnings. Watch the Weather Channel, 
and uh, make sure that you're adhe adhering to all the guidance that your government officials and the uh, Weather Channel is trying to give you. Uh, if it's time to get out, it's time to get out. Remember, you also have pets and you also have elderly people in your family. You need to take care of them. And I think he brings up an important point. Remember, the Hurricane Hunters, they're based out of Keesler Air Force Base right there in Biloxi, all right, on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. So they are in the heart of Hurricane Alley, we'll call it. And they're doing this not only for you, but for their own family and friends, letting them know as they get the measurements, that data then goes into the models. And that's how we get these updated tracks, updated intensity forecasts, and all of these maybe things that you don't think about when it comes to forecasting. These are essential parts. So. That brings us to Felicia Combs. She's live in New Orleans this evening. Now night, I guess we can call it, Felicia. And uh, how has the evening been? Has it been more dry than wet? Have you seen an increase in rain? How are the winds? Because we barely have a breeze now. The sun is set here in New Iberia, Louisiana. Yeah, Chris, so coming to you from Biloxi, and uh, you're talking about the, the hurricane hunters. Actually, uh, Keesler Air Force Base, just not very far from where we are right here in Biloxi. That's where they, they take off. The breeze, in terms of what we're seeing, has picked up just a little bit. This is really the transition day between the beautiful weather that we saw yesterday. Uh, today, we are starting to see things deteriorate a little bit more, but tomorrow is really going to be the day when we, we see the worst of it, where we see the rounds of rain, the possibility for that storm surge inundation really increasing. We spoke with Mayor Gillich a little bit earlier and he uh, talked about exactly what you can expect if you're, you're here in Biloxi and you start to see those conditions worsening maybe a little bit more than you expected. They will be in, in, a, in a mode of, of, of seeing who needs help and if they you know hang around too long or, or that sort of thing. We, well, we're limited because of the amount of wind or something that would, would uh, come about. But uh, we're prepared. You know, if uh, you know if you feel like you need help, call and, and we'll get help to you. And, you know, a wind is going to be one of those risks, but also the bigger risks here for Biloxi going to be the water, whether it be fresh water from the rainfall. Uh, Biloxi in that kind of window of four to eight inches of rainfall, but up to 10 inches in some places certainly possible. Uh, so we are under a flood watch, but then we also have that risk of storm surge inundation. Biloxi is kind of sits on a peninsula. So we have the Gulf of Mexico or uh, the Sound of Mississippi just to the south and uh, to the west. And then as you go around around northeast of the city, you've also got the Bay of Biloxi. We're going to have persistent onshore winds, so the forecast for storm surge inundation, the possibility uh, that we could see here in Biloxi, three to five feet. So we do have that uh, storm surge warning, that tropical storm warning in effect here, Chris. So uh, you talked about it a little bit earlier. The west side of the storm, uh, maybe not quite as bad, but certainly east loaded storm where we're going to see the worst of it for places like Gulfport and Biloxi. Yeah, Felicia, and I think that's some of the coolest things for people at home to watch, to see where different people are, different meteorologists here at the Weather Channel. We've got them stationed all over the northern Gulf Coast, from New Iberia all the way to the Florida Panhandle. And it'll be interesting to see the different impacts based on where they are located and where people live. So don't just think, you know, tropical storm is the same for everybody because it's not. Now here in New Iberia, we will be likely west of the core. Not to say we're not going to have tropical storm force winds. We probably will have gusts at times, especially in some of the strongest bands. We are under that tropical storm warning. Let's take a look at the forecast because today wasn't too bad. It was warm, but we had a breeze that slowly started to kick up. Tomorrow will be a lot breezier. In fact, it'll start being borderline gusty. We'll start seeing those winds over 30 miles per hour through later in the day. And then tomorrow night is when we see the worst of the weather. Heavy rain, thunderstorms, and gusty winds potentially up to 50 miles per hour. That will continue into Monday before things then quiet down. Weird Earth, premiering next Sunday at 9, only on the Weather Channel.
Welcome back to our special coverage of Tropical Storm Cristobal. We are live tonight tracking the growing tropical storm, which is moving towards the Gulf Coast. And if you live in New Orleans, you need to be ready and alert for heavy rain. We've already seen some showers here tonight. The winds have been gusting around 30 miles per hour. Tropical storm force wind gusts over 50 will be possible tomorrow. The governor issuing a state of emergency here and across the whole state. Now, if you live in Gulfport, Mississippi, you are under a tropical storm warning right now. We'll be watching you for strong damaging wind gusts, heavy rain, which could reach as much as perhaps eight inches. And we'll see some water level rises with storm surge here as well. We'll take you now live to Panama City Beach where you can see, uh, wow, look at those clouds moving by. That's kind of an eerie view, isn't it? Uh, the waves crashing in already. You'll see gusty winds. Uh, flooding is going to be possible with the heavy downpours as well as storm surge of a couple of feet here. And also severe weather tomorrow, especially Panama City, where you could get a few tropical tornadoes. So be alert for that. In addition to those three cities, here's what we know yet tonight. Mandatory evacuation orders are in effect for parts of Grand Isle, Louisiana, and for parts of Terrebonne Parish. The entire state is under a state of emergency. And along the Gulf Coast tonight, nearly 4.5 million people are under tropical alerts, and that includes parts of four different states. We have a team of meteorologists out live on the ground, and we want to get out to our meteorologist, Chris Bruin, and he is in New Iberia, Louisiana. And Chris, have you started to feel any of those effects at all? We've been seeing some stronger wind gusts in New Orleans. No, we have not seen much in the way of wind at all. There was a little bit of a breeze during the afternoon, Jackie, and now that the sunset, it is just stagnant. In fact, it feels hotter now than it did earlier. Even though the sun's down, it's that humidity. It is hot. All right, but that's typical summertime weather here in New Orleans and across the state of Louisiana. We're in New Iberia. That's about 20 miles south of Lafayette, about two hours to the west of New Orleans. So we're in central Louisiana, and this is going to be a very different storm here than, say, what we see in New Orleans or in Biloxi or Gulfport, or even Pensacola and Mobile, where they're going to likely have a lot more rainfall just because of the nature of the storm, where the heaviest rain is. It's a lopsided storm, and there's a lot of uh, weather on the east side of the circulation. So going to have maybe a blow up of thunderstorms or two near the core, but this is going to be a, a spread out storm, not your typical tropical um, tropical storm that's tightly wound up. And again, where that core is is where the worst the weather is going to be. That's not necessarily going to be the case with crystal ball. We will see the weather go downhill, especially heading into Sunday here in New Iberia and even up towards uh, Lafayette, where we'll watch for the clouds to increase, the winds to pick up. Tomorrow will be much more of a breezy day and gusty winds, potentially over 50 miles per hour, especially going into tomorrow night and early Monday morning. The rain will continue through Monday and then start to simmer down from there. But then, be, then it becomes an inland flood threat into the Ozarks mark and Midwest, where that'll be something we'll be following too as we head into the early and middle of next week. Absolutely. This is going to have far reaching impacts, including well away from its center when it makes landfall and then well inland from the coastline as well. So let's go through some of the details here. We'll start out with those latest conditions again. 50 mile per hour winds, storms moving north at about 12. Uh, that takes it to a path towards southern Louisiana. That's been a fairly consistent point in our modeling and continues to be in the forecast. Uh, some strengthening is still possible, especially if this blow up of thunderstorms that we have near that center right now continues through the overnight hours. So that is something that we are going to be watching in the short term. Uh, we're also watching this plume of tropical moisture way outside of the center. It's been affecting Florida. We had severe thunderstorms from Orlando to the Space Coast. Now we've got a new blow up of thunderstorms for the Southwest Coast. So yeah, the center is something that's important down the road. But right now it's all about this rain. My goodness. And that includes some uh, potential severe storms that are off the coast still. But if that circulation potential holds Holds together, they all have that kind of kidney bean shape to them, right? That indicates high levels of shear in the environment can never rule out spin up tornadoes when these storms are tied in a big circulation from the tropics. 
As for where the circulation center goes, we're talking about southern Louisiana. Maybe a, a little bit more strengthening, 50 to 60 mile per hour winds for that top speed. Uh, then you lose some of the wind speed once land interaction occurs, but the precipitation shield actually comes together a little bit. So I think we actually will have a core of tropical rains go all the way up through the Midwest. Lots of spin with that goes back over the Mississippi River again. That Mississippi River to the north is still in flood stage, and so more water goes into the big Mississippi River watershed, and uh, there could be a tornado threat well inland as well into the beginning of the week. Uh, just to show you how the impacts are so far reaching, here's the path, right? Here's our forecast of the uh, where the center goes. Heaviest rains almost immediately will be outside of that center. Florida will see a lot of the action as well. Uh, and so you, you can't just focus on, on uh, in on where the center goes. The flood potential is high, the, in, at least in the recent history, there's been a lot of rain in Florida. You're coming out of a drought in a big way, and so flood watches are up. Central Florida across the Big Bend, certainly flood potential near where that center goes and just east of there where the worst of the tropical moisture moves in. A quick look at some of the timing for the New Orleans and the Biloxi metro areas. It happens overnight tonight with banding features that continue to increase from there. A lung cancer deadline to disaster next Sunday night on the Weather Channel. And you are watching the Weather Channel. We're continuing to cover, of course, Tropical Storm Cristobal as it approaches the Gulf Coast. This time tomorrow, it's going to be very different here in New Iberia and really all up and down the Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida Gulf Coast. Today was your intermittent storms, but for the most part, it was pretty typical summer afternoon, maybe an increase in breezes at the beach. Uh, and a lot of the action actually was in Florida. That's where we had that tornado confirmed in Orlando and a lot of heavy rain and intense banding features that uh, situated along Florida's Gulf Coast from St. Petersburg, Tampa, even down to Southwest Florida. I want to show you some video from New, uh, from Grand Isle, Louisiana. That was from earlier today. Take a look at this. First off, people are preparing for the arrival of the storms. You have to when you're in a small little fishing village like Grand Isle and many of the other numerous spots here on coastal Louisiana shores. Uh, it's very low line. If you've never been to this area, they're essentially below sea level or right at sea level. And any additional, right, even a foot rise, if these homes weren't elevated, they would be inundated with water. That's why they're on stilts, typically 10 feet above the water line or higher in many cases just because they live in a hurricane prone region. We had heavy rain too and that actually caused some flooding in Grand Isle. That was from one of the bands that we had earlier today. Grand Isle is one of the hardest hit spots this afternoon with gusts occasionally over 30 miles per hour and intense bands. Uh, a couple rounds that came in late morning and then lasted through much of the afternoon. It was a lot cloudier in that part of the state than here in central Louisiana where we are. Still Pretty quiet this evening too, not noticing much of a wind at all. Of course, we're inland about 30 miles from the shore, 20 miles south of Lafayette, and I can't even hear a rustle of the trees. Of course, we've got these beautiful live oaks, Felicia, all across uh, coastal areas from Louisiana back into Mississippi. I know where you are. You're on the beach and or on the water. And what are you noticing weather-wise tonight? Are you noticing an increase in winds? How's the rain bit? Have you seen any thunder or lightning? So, you know, Chris, actually, this is kind of, I would say, a, a little bit of a, a transition. We did have one pocket of very heavy rain that moved through earlier in the day, and I was like, okay, here we go. And then that was kind of it for a while. We had some dry air in place. It has since eroded away, and now we're finally starting to see these showers coming down. But I'll tell you, there's a bit of a light breeze and um, a little bit of light rain, but I do expect the breeze to pick up, and I expect the rain to become heavier. We actually spoke with Mayor Gillich a little bit earlier and talked to him about uh, what some of the boats will be doing. We're here at the small craft harbor and he said not to worry that the boaters here certainly have a plan. There's been a lot of boat folks that have been moving from the harbors up to what we call Hurricane Hole and uh, that takes a, you know, it's like a parade of boats as you see, you know, taking shelter. But a lot of uh, folks are kind of just getting ready, uh, cleaning gutters off their houses like I did today and uh, just you know, keeping things just in case it does get you know, uh, uh, wind up there, 60 mile an hour. But we're hopeful that, uh, you know, we're just, this is an exercise, you know, that uh, an early exercise. 
So yeah, Biloxi is a, a city that is surrounded by water on three sides. To our south, we have the Gulf of Mexico, and then kind of wrapping around the peninsula, we've got the Bay of Biloxi. So Biloxi known for its water, also known for its casinos. It's kind of called the playground of the south. So everyone kind of sitting still and watching to see what's going on, the different hazards that we're facing here in Biloxi. Uh, you know, there's only a small chunk of the northern Gulf that is actually under both a storm surge warning and a tropical storm warning. And Biloxi is one of those, even though Biloxi is actually on the east side of the cone. Biloxi is outside of the cone, but as we've seen, this is an east loaded storm. So those hazards expected for Biloxi. We it, it appears that uh, that feed just uh, we lost that connection with uh, Felicia. Sorry about that. And uh, as uh, Felicia was uh, ending there, we got the new advisory in from the National Hurricane Center. So let's switch gears and bring you up to speed with the newest advisory in from the National Hurricane Center as of the 11 o'clock Eastern Time, 10 o'clock Central, which often does occur before the top of the hour. We have the latest uh, info uh, to tell you about. Now that does include the position update, which is now about 210 miles miles south southwest of the mouth of the Mississippi River that movement north exactly the same at 12 miles per hour the top wind speed holding steady at this point 50 miles per hour so no significant changes with this kind of alert setup for the tropical storm as crystal ball is going right on schedule at this point we uh, can take a look also at that uh, newest forecast uh, cone, uh, see if there's any significant changes with that. Uh, it does not appear to. Uh, we're getting the newest uh, lines in, the newest updates here, but 50 miles per hour is still uh, in the forecast. One change is that you're no longer seeing that forecast point just off the shore. Uh, off the shore, there's still a potential for some strengthening up to about 60 miles per hour. So that is something that we're uh, following also. As for any alerts, the storm surge alerts have not changed at all. We're still talking about a storm surge warning that continues across southeastern Louisiana and back into southern portions of Mississippi. And we still have those tropical storm mornings uh, over this, the exact same area as well. So let's quickly look at some of those uh, the current conditions uh, with regards to the wave action. Uh, look at this 15 to 20 footers near that center of circulation. That push of wave uh, action is going to move north and uh, get caught in that kind of mouth of the Mississippi and the shape of Louisiana into Mississippi. And that's why the storm surge threat is the highest here. And that's why these storm surge warnings continue. We'll continue to break down that latest advisory when we come back right here on the Weather Channel. Weekday mornings on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 78 degrees under clear skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 72. Winds light and variable. Sunday, intervals of clouds and sunshine. High. 90 winds south southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly to mostly cloudy, low 72 winds south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Welcome back to the Weather Channel as we are following Tropical Storm Cristobal in the Gulf. Now, the latest advisory is in from the National Hurricane Center, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, 10 o'clock Central, and they usually do get those out just before the top of the hour. So the latest advisory is now into us, and uh, the spoiler alert here is there is no significant change from the last advisory, and that's good news. You don't want big changes as a storm is barreling down on the U.S. 
mainland. Now, the, the latest stat does update the positioning. It helps the modeling. You make sure that new runs of the models get everything exactly right. They're all on the same page. And so the center location is now 210 miles south southwest of the mouth of the Mississippi River. The top wind speeds holding steady at 50. The movement north is holding steady at 12. Those are both right on track exactly where the forecast has been for the past couple of days. There's still a potential for at least some strengthening uh, north of where this storm is. Uh, but honestly, 5 to 10 miles per hour in wind speed is not going to be that much of a difference uh, when it comes to the impacts. And so if we get to 60 mile per hour winds, even if we get to a weak hurricane, I think the impacts are all the same at this point, whether it's a 50 mile per hour storm or a 70 mile per hour storm, it's all basically going to be the same. Heavy rain, a flood threat and a water rise that you do need to prepare for if you're uh, uh, near the coastline, especially in that kind of hook where the water comes in and cannot leave. Now, Tropical storm warnings are up across central Louisiana all the way back to extreme western portions of the Florida panhandle for that potential for tropical storm force winds. But that's not where the impacts will end. Notice how uh, there's actually far more action way away from the center of our storm, which is out here, than there is near that center. Now, there is a change that we do have at least some thunderstorm action near that center tonight and surrounding that center, which is also different from where we've been. So the potential is there for some strengthening through the overnight. But, uh, you know, in the shorter term, that rain going through Florida was still in the headlines. We had tornado warnings earlier in Orlando. These are rotating storms just off the Tampa Bay coastline. So as those come in, we'll have to watch them carefully. Rains are already picking up along the I-10 corridor through the Panhandle and some of those bands going through uh, just off the shore of Biloxi and then coming through the New Orleans region. And all of these areas are going to really considerably go downhill as we work our way through the next 12 to 24 hours. The landfall takes place late Sunday into Sunday evening uh, where those 60 mile per hour winds then tangle with land start slowing down and Jackie will follow this well inland through the Midwest by Tuesday into Wednesday over to you so New Orleans one of those places that's in line for some heavy rain and all the impacts from tropical storm Cristobal you've already seen some gusty rain showers the last couple of hours you can see it's raining right now and our wind gusts have been around 30 to 32 miles per hour New Orleans particularly vulnerable as they sit below sea level so we'll really have to keep an eye on those rainfall rates especially through the day on Sunday and into Sunday night. Well, humans have attempted to conquer the problems of changing water levels for thousands of years. One of the oldest weapons is the levee. Here's a look at how levees work and how they can fail. Like the roads and bridges you use every day, levees are just another piece of the infrastructure often taken for granted. Until there's a problem. Levees are surprisingly common in the U.S. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says one out of five counties have levees. About 100,000 miles of levees wind their way across the nation. But the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for just 14,400 miles, or about 15 percent. The remaining 85,000 or so miles fall under many different local, state, and federal jurisdictions. At their simplest, a levee is just a pile of dirt or wall of concrete meant to hold back the water. There are four primary reasons why levees fail. They include seepage, stability, erosion, and height. Water can seep through the levee, weakening the structure from within. When a section of levee slides away, that's called a stability failure. So-called toe erosion can steepen the levee slope until the now unstable structure collapses. Finally, the levee just isn't high enough. Water flows over the top, causing the levee to fail from the top down. But most well-maintained levees don't fail. And today, hundreds of communities depend on levees for their livelihoods and even their lives. And we will be keeping a very close eye on the river levels over the next couple of days, not just near the coastal areas, but well inland as the moisture from what will eventually become the remnants of Tropical Storm Cristobal uh, makes their way northward through the Mississippi River Valley. So that ridge of high pressure, which has been in place, is going to shift a little bit off towards the east and a new trough from the west will be uh, reaching the region. And that's going to help to draw this up towards the north, a cold front developing at the surface. And that moisture is going to work up against that cold front and trigger 
there are some widespread showers and thunderstorms, so you can see how far north that moisture gets, well into the middle Mississippi River Valley, well into parts of the upper Midwest. In addition to that, uh, with the jet stream and the remnants of our tropical storm, uh, that can enhance the wind speed too, so there may be some strong damaging winds associated with that. Now the risk for flash flooding will be most likely near and to the right of where this makes center. This will be for Sunday into your Monday morning, but then look at the areas on Monday into Tuesday. This will include a good portion of Arkansas and the western parts of Tennessee, even into the St. Louis metro area. This is the forecast of the river level gauges between now and the next five days. And when you see purple arrows, that means major flood. And welcome back into the Weather Channel's continuing live coverage here. We're live in New Iberia, Louisiana, where we are awaiting some of the outer bands of Tropical Storm Cristobal. The worst of the weather yet to arrive. What kind of impacts are we looking at? We're going to answer those questions and more coming up. Tropical Storm Cristobal forecast to make landfall here on the Louisiana coast sometime on Sunday evening. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel. The winds are ramping up. The waves are crashing on the beaches, and we've got concerns with a high tide on Sunday. We'll talk impacts coming up here on the Weather Channel. And I'm meteorologist Jackie Jarrett. So glad you could be with us tonight for our special coverage of Tropical Storm Cristobal. We're going to stay live until 12 a.m. Central Time, 1 a.m. Eastern, tracking this system. It's now about 18 to 24 hours away from making landfall. Tonight, tropical alerts are out for nearly four and a half million people as the storm approaches the Gulf Coast. Here's where the storm is right now. It's about 200 miles, just a little bit over, away from the mouth of the Mississippi River. The winds have stayed about the same all day long, around 50 miles per hour, and the pressure has been holding steady, and that's been verified by Hurricane Hunter aircraft that was flying into this earlier today. It's a very asymmetrical storm. It's very lopsided, and we've got some dry air on the west side of this, and the big blow-up has been far to the east. In fact, hundreds of miles away from the center of the storm is where we've had the worst of the weather today, and that has been in the Sunshine State. Florida has been hit hard with showers and thunderstorms, and and even some tropical tornadoes. Well, let's show you the latest and how the impacts are already beginning to change right now as winds are beginning to pick up into the coastal areas and we're starting to see some of those battering waves work their way closer towards the coast. So there's that center of circulation. You can see the last couple of hours, we've had a little bit more of an increase of thunderstorms surrounding the center of the storm, but way over here in the Florida is where we've had the worst of the conditions, the strongest of the winds, the heaviest of downpours and yes even a few of those tornadoes you can see a lot of that is beginning to push east of the Florida coast right now, but we'll have to watch southwestern Florida and the Tampa Bay area as new thunderstorms have been developing there. And look what's happening down in the Yucatan Peninsula and into the southern and central parts of the Gulf. We've got a new area there that's beginning to uh, develop and explode with thunderstorms. If that continues to stretch northward, uh, we'll be getting a little bit worried of that line heading towards the Big Bend area and into the Florida Panhandle, especially tomorrow morning. Here's a look at the radar imagery. We've got gusty showers around New Orleans, Pensacola. You've been seeing some wet weather here. And then here's those little storms I was talking about that are rotating offshore that could get close towards Tampa St. Pete. That's one of the many things that we're watching here for tonight. And what about those winds? We've had some gusts along the coastal areas between 25 and 35 miles per hour. Some of the buoys offshore have been reporting 35 plus mile per hour wind gusts. So that's becoming a little bit more common and getting closer and closer towards the U.S. coastline. Tropical storm warning staying in effect now from the intercoastal city, Louisiana, stretching all the way over into the Florida Panhandle. So we will expect those conditions to be developing overnight tonight and lasting through most of the day tomorrow before landfall, which would likely be just a little bit less than 24 hours from now. But keep in mind that water will work its way up slowly but surely over time as the wind pushes that water and inundates some of the coastal areas. And that's why we've got the storm surge warnings and we could see some surge levels 
levels anywhere between about one and five feet, depending where on the coastal areas you are. On top of this, uh, right now, we don't have any tornado watches or tornado warnings, but we've had quite a few already tonight, including into the Orlando area. We do have Torcons of two and three across the state. Uh, this is going to be the area that we're going to be watching the next couple of hours, but I'm also kind of watching that spot offshore. It hasn't quite cleared yet, uh, so that's an area where we could see a little bit of rotation. So stay alert with these. They can spin up very, very quickly. They can dissipate just as quickly as they spin up, but they can and they do uh, cause quite a bit of damage. All right, so we've got about 200 miles to go before this reaches the coast. We want to get the latest on where this is going to be heading and some of the inland impacts too. Storm Specialist Mark Elliott is with us and he's got more on that. Hey, Mark. Hey, Jackie. Yeah, this is not just a coastal, uh, you know, event. And as Jackie was correctly pointing out, you're nowhere near that center in Florida and you have significant impacts, heavy rain building in, tornado threat building that we've seen already and we'll continue to see. So be ready far away from this center. That is one of the take home messages from this event. Now the cone forecasts the center and there is still a good reason to forecast the center. We know that right that north, uh, that, that right front quadrant, that east side in this case, will be where most of the moisture is, where most of the tornado threat is, so it's important to follow that. Uh, should be coming up towards the southern Louisiana coastline late on Sunday. Now, again, some modest strengthening before we get there. Currently a 50 mile per hour top wind speed, forecast of at least a 60 mile per hour top wind speed by tomorrow morning, and especially if those thunderstorms near the center hold their own tonight. But then we go uh, with a, you know, a ball of tropical moisture and a lot of spin through Arkansas, maybe right over Little Rock, then curling around the Midwest up towards the Great Lakes Tuesday into Wednesday. Eventually, this does get swept up by an approaching cold front, the same front that's bringing severe storms across South Dakota right now with chance for tornadoes. That will be headed eastbound and will eventually be the thing that kicks this away and up and over our ridge over the southeast. But you got to get there first, and there will be an interior tornado threat along that path. As for when you need to be ready for the worst of what this brings near that center, you're really on borrowed time. The earliest arrival time of the tropical storm force winds is, is uh, basically a couple hours from now, 2 a.m. Uh, local time along the Louisiana and the Mississippi coastline, as well as just off of the uh, mouth of uh, Mobile Bay there, the opening of Mobile Bay. Uh, by Sunday morning, uh, 8 a.m. or so, moving farther inland and even uh, towards Sunday afternoon, just outside Alexandria and outside Jackson. That is the earliest arrival time, not necessarily the most likely arrival time. This is a little bit pushed forward from the most likely arrival time of those winds, but it's when you just have to be done with any preps because if those winds arrive, it's too dangerous to be, say, putting up uh, plywood and boarding up windows when those tropical storm force winds arrive. Uh, this is a look at the high resolution future radar. Uh, I would argue kind of notoriously bad for exactly nailing the path of tropical systems, but pretty good at giving you the flavor of what to expect. And that's that these banding features really increase as we go into the morning and they don't move all that much after they arrive. So that's how the bigger rainfall totals add up. That's how the embedded tornado circulations could go over the same areas again and again and again. And it shows us that way east of where the center goes, you'll be in those bands as well with heavy rain and a tornado threat. So I want a lot of you to be worried about that for tomorrow because I think that's going to be one of your biggest impacts flooding rains and embedded severe weather. This is a look at the, the, the kind of the general zone that could see severe weather near the landfall for tomorrow and also where we have that tornado threat. We've got a three out of 10 on the Torcon. Isolated tornadoes are certainly possible. Uh, as those bands come through. It happens with just about every landfalling system, no matter the strength. We've already seen some tornadoes around uh, central Florida tonight, way away from that center. Uh, as for the rain, there's going to be a pretty good swath of three to five inches of rain, maybe even five to eight, anywhere from southeast Louisiana across southern Mississippi into southern Alabama, and then some heavy totals in the western Florida panhandle as well. That's where most of the models are suggesting we're going to get those repeated banding features with the heaviest rains coming through. And the zoom in for you still pumps out those seven inches of rain numbers on either side of Biloxi. That is a significant amount of fresh water that's falling. Uh, that backs up the river systems. Those rivers are going to be trying to exit back towards the Gulf, but they can't because of the onshore flow, and that uh, makes it that much more difficult. Let's go back out to the field now. 
We're uh, watching for the new Iberia area where Chris Bruin is standing by. And Chris, there is a chance for those uh, heavy rain bands to arrive in the overnight hours where you are. Yeah, and you know, we've had a few storms uh, nearby this afternoon, uh, bringing with it a quick tropical downpour and then they're quick moving thankfully and they get out of here after about four or five minutes so they don't last all too long tomorrow they'll be a lot more persistent and we won't have nearly as much sunshine we'll also have a lot more wind to contend with now we are in that tropical storm warning here in south central louisiana just south of lafayette we have the western fringes of that tropical storm warning i want to bring in a family who uh was just happened to be out hanging out with us this evening it's kind of late but hey it's a saturday night right this is um the hike family you got michael and his wife carly and they're awesome kids i know duda and and friends right uh i mean how can you forget a name like duda and then all these other cool unique i can't remember everybody's um but let's talk about hurricanes. Have you guys ever been in one before or a tropical storm for that matter? Mm -hmm. I, I, so feel free one at a time. Tell me your experience. What was the worst one you guys have been? You guys are born and raised here in New Iberia. Mm, I've awesome. been in Katrina and yeah. Andrew. Okay, so talk about Katrina. What was that like here? Uh, well, Katrina brought in a whole lot of rain, a whole lot of wind. A whole lot of devastation, mm -hmm. a whole lot of patients, patients. to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was just devastating to everyone. Although we weren't in New Orleans, we still got a good bit of effects of Katrina. What about more recently? I mean, we, we had Barry not long ago, not maybe a major one that you remember forever, but something that is impactful. Right. Oh, yeah. last year, um, the cow, the like a cushion for the couch on the patio flew all the way to the front door. <laughs> oh wow! No way. Mm -hmm. So even in storms that don't have a ton of wind with them, they can still move things around. Have you guys been picking up your patio furniture and getting we that inside? We were, we were, we were. Yeah, you know, yeah. And we, we've seen a lot of storms, uh, but we expect it down here, mm -hmm. you know. And we we hunker down and we do what we got to do and we recover and we move on. What does that routine look like? You guys, it's part of life down here. What is that? It's part of life. It's a part of life. You yeah. know, uh, we, we we take it seriously, but mm -hmm. we don't want we don't overreact too soon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but but when when you know it's coming, you know it's coming. Uh, actually, it was funny today because uh, the kids are saying the weather's fine. There's no hurricane coming. Yeah. And then I teach them about the the whole uh, calm before the storm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, beautiful day today, but then you can see the bands coming in. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's a way of life, and 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 you get used to it. And like I said, you know, uh, you you, you hunk it down, you, you get through it, you get over it, you rebuild as a community, and you move on. And we know it's going to happen uh, from time to time, summer to summer, but we're ready for it. And here in Louisiana, you know, maybe you guys don't get directly impacted, but you guys are always helping neighbors out who are, uh, who are impacted. Maybe just down the streets. We were down in, you know, Sippermore Bay, and everyone's helping out everybody, and all of that. We love that mentality, 100%, right? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And that's what we do. Like we, we don't, we, we don't need to be told to come volunteer here, come volunteer there. Like we, we're all, uh, our communities are strong. Yeah. You know, and and uh, and that goes back a long time, and that's how these people have been able to survive down here. For so long. Yeah. So what is it? What does tomorrow night look like? Because we know it's not going to be quiet and calm, humid like it is right now. We're probably going to be dealing with wind and rain, maybe a few power outages. Right. What do you a guys be doing? Hurricane party, and if you know, <laughs> we're fortunate enough to have a generator at our house. So uh, if, if people that uh, are uh, you know not as fortunate and the power goes out and they want to come over, come over and we'll play games and do the same thing we did last summer. Just yeah. Have fun and make the best of it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's all we can do. I gotta ask, are you hot in this fleece? Uh, is, <laughs> no. I love it. You, you stand out compared to the rest of the fam. Uh, Feeling good? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chris, he was on the couch about to go to sleep. Uh, and then we came fine, y'all. So. We woke you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you guys. Certainly stay safe. And, um, you know, it'll be a quick, quick moving storm. That's the good news. And by Tuesday, sun's back out. 
the heat will return and you guys will be able to get outside and play again. Right. Thanks again for taking the time. Thank you. Thanks for staying up late tonight. I know yes, it's a little sir. bit past y'all's bedtime. Uh, but Mark, you know, it's a quick moving storm. We aren't going to be seeing the impacts that we saw in Mexico. We know with the mudslides, the torrential downpours, double digit rainfall totals. We saw that in Yucatan and some of those Central American countries. Uh, thankfully, it's moving a lot more quickly and it's a fairly mild tropical storm but these can still have big impacts, especially in localized areas. Yeah, 50 mile per hour wind gusts over even a, a really reasonably short amount of time with that kind of rainfall coming in probably means trees coming down and some power outages. Uh, Chris, you, you, you think you're, uh, have, have you taken a look at the tree cover around there? Have you seen a lot of uh, potential for that? Yeah, you know, if you've never been to this part of Louisiana, we got huge live oaks. They're shading most of the trees. You got canopy roads. It's beautiful. But if you do get a strong gust of wind on an area that's maybe vulnerable, those large limbs can come down. But that also helps protect a lot of property because those large trees will bear the weight. So tree limbs are likely going to be an issue. Maybe not the full tree itself, but if you bring a tree limb, tree limb down on a power line, you are going to have those sporadic power outages. We expect that in this part of the country, certainly from Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and parts of the Florida Panhandle. Yeah, near that landfall, probably one of the biggest impacts could be the power outages. Uh, Chris Bruin reporting for us tonight in New Iberia. Thank you so much. And of course, the impacts don't stay near the center with these kind of sprawling, large, uh, you know, disorganized storms. Uh, Jackie, we had tornado warnings already today in the big circulation connected to this all the way near Orlando. Yeah, and we still have a chance of a few of those tonight, and I think it could be an even bigger problem tomorrow. So take a look at some of the video that we had into the Orlando area uh, where we did have a couple of tornadoes that touched down. Uh, one came down as a water spout over water and then made its way towards land and lifted back up. The other one did cause mostly just some power damage across the region. But scary moments for uh, folks there, too. Uh, this came down over some pretty populated areas, so it could have been a worse situation. National Weather Service says weather permitting, they're going to go out and assess that damage tomorrow to see how strong it really was and also to see how long that path uh, may have been. We are watching the threat of a few spin-ups right now off the coast near the Tampa Bay area. We do have some marine warnings which are in effect there. So I just want to give uh, folks, especially on the west central coast, a heads up for some of that everybody else just looking for some heavy downpours. We also have the threat of some flash flooding across Florida, especially tomorrow and into the panhandle. We'll have to watch where some of these bands set up. On the ground. Right now it's coming down. The Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 78 degrees under fair skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 72. Winds light and variable. Sunday, partly cloudy skies. High 90. Winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy, low 72. Winds south southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. All right, welcome back into the Weather Channel the, tonight. Thanks for joining us here on this Saturday, continuing live coverage, of course, of Tropical Storm Crystal Ball. And that's what we're looking at as far as weather goes. It's a hot, humid night. We've been dry. We haven't seen a lot of rain. We've had a couple brief showers. I could probably count how many minutes, about six minutes today that we've been seeing a quick moving shower, and that's it. So there's a lot of dry air. Now remember, we are on the western side of the circulation, especially as it moves inland tomorrow. It's probably going to make landfall between New Iberia and New Orleans, and pretty much a lot of the activity is going to be on the east side. We will have some storms, and we are going to have those winds really increase here on your Sunday timing. Tomorrow night is really going to be the key uh, focal point with the worst of 
Cristobal. All right, let's show you some video out of Grand Isle that we had earlier today. This was some of the outer bands. Now remember, Grand Isle sticks out in Louisiana, juts out right into the heart of the Gulf of Mexico. So they're usually the first to see some of the impacts, and that's what we've been seeing. Winds here gusting close to tropical storm force. They've been getting up at times to 30, 35 miles per hour, and it's blowing that sand up and down the beaches. There are even uh, rainfall heavy enough to flood some of the streets. It did subside, but that's what you get when you bring in a very heavy rainfall in a short period of time, those tropical downpours. If you've ever been to Florida, if you've ever been to the Gulf Coast, you know what I'm talking about, those two, three inch per hour rainfall rates, and that's what's, a, that's what's gonna cause problems. We've already seen it in Florida, and we're really going to see it here heading into your Saturday. Of course, we are gonna be up around the clock monitoring the latest here with Cristobal as it strengthens and potentially um, gains strength as it approaches landfall come this time tomorrow. Let's head down the coast a little bit and get the latest update from our meteorologist Felicia Combs in Biloxi, Mississippi. Coming to you from Biloxi, Mississippi, actually in the small craft harbor right now, which is the oldest harbor in Biloxi. Now, if you know anything about Biloxi, there's a couple things you know. This is a water city. It's great for boaters. It's got a big shipping industry, and then also it's known for its casinos as well. Now, if you live in Biloxi, you probably really know how to deal with tropical systems, but we spoke with Mayor Gillich a little earlier today and talked to him about what to do if you are staying in the hotel and maybe you don't know about the tropical systems quite as well. In a hotel or one of these resorts, they'll people uh, they'll tell you, hey, you know, we, you're going to have to move on if you know if, if it intensifies to a situation where they need to close. Uh, of course, we will too. But uh, you know, just just stay tuned, and, and uh, you you can uh, kind of feel what's happening if, you, if you're watching the Weather Channel or some of these other you know uh, uh, forecasters. So we're you know real confident that we can handle the crowd that's here and uh, keep them welcome and keep them you know happy. So yeah, that's great advice. Just stay tuned to the forecast. The main thing that you need to know, especially along the northern Gulf Coast, is that those conditions continue to deteriorate as we head through tonight. We'll likely start to see those tropical storm force winds as we head through Sunday morning and throughout the day on Sunday. Sunday is going to be a rough day. That's going to be when we have the winds picking up. That's going to be where we start to see the possibility for storm, storm surge. The high tide for Biloxi Bay, which is right where we are, that's around 1143 tomorrow morning. Couple that with the onshore winds and that's something we're going to have to watch. And then of course the heavy rainfall and the gusty winds all moving in through tonight into tomorrow. All right, so a little bit more rainfall this Saturday is what we have seen in Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida than here in Louisiana. That's because this is a lopsided storm. There's a lot of dry air being wrapped around this. And so I want to bring in Storm Specialist Mark Elliott back in the lab. Mark, you know, a lot of people are wondering, well, why can't this become, you know, a hurricane or a major hurricane like Michael did? You know, it rapidly intensified. A lot of people think uh, the Gulf is just, you know, a hotbed for storms to rapidly intensify. We've seen that in historical instances, but it's not that simple. There has to be a lot of things to come together. And we know water temperatures are a little bit cooler in the northern Gulf than they were down near Mexico. And we know there's a lot of dry air. Absolutely. So those are two headwinds for sure when it comes to rapid intensification. When it comes to a, you know, a major hurricane, just about every storm that gets to that category goes through uh, at least one phase, if not several phases of rapid intensification, but they're often much smaller and well put together. And as you said, moving over warm waters, this is a big sprawling system. And one of the saving graces for that is that uh, it's hard to spin that big area of airflow uh, much faster quickly, right? It takes a long time to spin up those large storms. It takes a long time to spin down those storms as well. So because this is such a large sprawling system and it's moving over reasonably warm temperatures and not, uh, you know, insanely warm water temperatures, and the fact, as Chris mentioned, that there's some dry air on the west side, it is going to be very difficult to rapidly intensify. And Jackie, luckily, none of the major global models are suggesting that a rapid intensification right. phase is likely. Yeah, it's a slow, gradual strengthening possible for the next, what, 18 to 24 hours before this thing uh, actually makes landfall. And we really can see a lot of that dry air that you were just talking about. I mean, look at how clear conditions look over there into the western Gulf. And that drier air had been trying to wrap in on the southern side 
side of the storm as well. Though a newer development as we are seeing a little bit more thunderstorm activity and a little bit more of a blow up near the center of the storm, which we really haven't seen a whole lot lately. Uh, but that's kind of typical of what happens as the sun goes down in the nighttime hours. Uh, we will be watching widespread impacts here, especially on the eastern side of the storm. We've already been seeing some torrential downpours, some localized flooding and a few tornadoes into Florida today. The wind gusts are starting to pick up a little bit closer to the coast too. So this will continue to move northward throughout the night tonight and we'll watch for those wind speeds to pick up and by tomorrow morning a lot of folks especially on the Louisiana coastline will feel those stronger winds. Welcome back. We are live tonight tracking a growing tropical storm moving towards the Gulf Coast. And if you live in New Orleans, you need to be prepared for heavy rain, tropical storm force wind gusts that could reach over 50 miles an hour at times. The governor issuing a state of emergency here and across the state. You've already seen some gusty showers today, New Orleans. Now, if you live in Gulfport, Mississippi, you are under a tropical storm warning right now. We're going to be watching you for damaging wind gusts, torrential downpours at times possibility that rainfall amounts could reach as high as six, maybe even eight inches of rainfall and some water level rises here with storm surge. A live look at Panama City Beach, Florida right now. You can expect to see the gusty winds. There you can see the waves already beginning to roll in. Now, what are the other concerns here in Panama City? Not just storm surge, not just heavy rain, but also uh, some severe weather, including the threat of tropical tornadoes. We could see some of those heavier bands setting up into the panhandle, which could bring some of the heaviest rain and the biggest dangers with tornadoes. So in addition to those three cities, here's what we know tonight. Mandatory evacuation orders are in effect for parts of Grand Isle, Louisiana, and for parts of Terrebonne Parish. The entire state is under a state of emergency. And along the Gulf Coast tonight, nearly four and a half million people are under tropical alerts. That includes parts of four different states. Of course, we've got live meteorologist crews on the ground right now, including our own Chris Bruin, who is in New Iberia, Louisiana. And Chris, I know off to your east, they've already been getting some of the rain showers and a few of those gusty winds, but kind of an eerie calm where you've been lately. Yeah, it's so quiet. You know those summer nights, Jackie, you can hear the cicadas and the crickets. <laughs> you can certainly hear that. In fact, if I'm quiet enough, you can maybe even make uh, make it out for yourself at home. Just let's, let's listen in for just about a couple seconds. You hear it? Uh, and maybe, maybe, maybe you can't. And the cars are running as uh, it's hot, so we have air conditioning going in between breaks, so we can cool off at times. But uh, it's a muggy night. Dew points are in the 70s. That's tropical air, right? It's coming in from Cristobal, and that's exactly what we're seeing. All right, but it's been relatively calm. Why is that? Why have we not seen the storms like Florida has seen today? Well, that's because it's a lopsided storm, which is often a case, especially in weak tropical storms, when you don't have a close, uh, closely, tightly knit core, your thunderstorms kind of just evaporate out. And we see a congregation on the east side, which is typically going to be your worst side when it comes to any tropical system, certainly weak tropical storms. So that's why all the activity has been in New Orleans and certainly in the Mississippi, Alabama and, and Florida. Florida really bearing the brunt of the worst of the weather today. And that may be the case overnight and into tomorrow morning as well, certainly where we have the highest risk of tornadoes. Now near the core, especially if we get some thunderstorm development here before landfall over the next 12 to 24 hours, we may have another round of some very intense winds that may come in towards the core. But unless that forms, the worst of the weather is really going to be well east of the center. So when we look at the cone, so many people are noticing where, where the middle is going. If I'm not there, then I'm not going to have those 50 mile per hour winds. That's not the case with Cristobal. We're going to have some of the strongest winds well outside that center and some of those strongest rain bands that we see tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. The worst of the weather yet to arrive, and that'll be tomorrow afternoon through tomorrow night and early Monday morning. Then after that, we're going to have breezy, rainy conditions that rapidly move into the Midwest where they have seen a lot of rain and that will be the focus. So I think flash flooding and then that water rise, especially in vulnerable areas outside of New Orleans, 
Lake Pontchartrain and some of the low-lying coastline of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama are where we're going to have some of the worst conditions. The wind, manageable, Jackie, because again, on the strongest, this is likely not going to be much stronger than 60 mile per hour winds, and that's only gust at times. So the water's really going to be our biggest threat, and some areas may end up with over a half foot of rain or more. Right, and you mentioned this going far inland, right? This is going to be down the line into the middle Mississippi River Valley, into the Great Lakes, and we may get an extra punch of the winds, too, as it kind of hooks up with that cold front and that trough. So just a big heads up for folks there and into the Great Lakes that you could have some damaging winds uh, as we head into your Tuesday and Wednesday. We want to bring in our storm specialist, Mark Elliott. You've been tracking all of this, Mark, and what's the latest? What's caught your eye right now? Yeah, you know, at least we have some thunderstorm activity near that center. That was actually pretty lack through most of the day. This was looking very subtropical, kind of like a hybrid car. Gets some energy from the traditional uh, combustion engine, some from the battery. A subtropical system gets some energy from the warm waters and some from a front nearby. Now it's starting to look a little bit more tropical, uh, maybe full-fledged tropical with that thunderstorm action trying to organize and wrapping around that center. Uh, that allows for a little bit of a window of strengthening. Uh, the forecast still calls for a 60 mile per hour tropical storm to come in towards the Louisiana late uh, on Sunday, and that's why the tropical storm warnings are there, as well as in southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, and extreme west Florida. So it's a broad, big circulation uh, with those storms now near the center, but also widespread storminess well away from that center in the broad circulation east of town. And so that means flooding rains through Florida, uh, maybe southern Georgia, southern Alabama, well away from that center, a large area to follow. Thank you. Sunday night on the Weather Channel. Here we go. And welcome back into the Weather Channel's continuing live coverage here of Tropical Storm Cristobal. And we're looking at a pretty quiet night here in central Louisiana. Again, we're on the western side of the storm, especially once it moves inland tomorrow. So we're going to have a very different setup than, say, our friends off towards the east in New Orleans. It's going to look very different here than in New Orleans, and impacts are going to be different as well. We're going to have a different wind direction, and we're going to have a different amount of precipitation. All right. Um, we talked to residents, though, not only here in New Iberia, where we are, that's about 20 miles south of Lafayette, but also down towards the coast. We're not right on the coast because there's a lot of bayous and swampland and marshes, along with sugarcane fields that lie between here and the shoreline. But near Sippermore Point, so that's on a little fishing village with a lot of camps and many people, their weekend getaways or their retirement homes. Uh, we talked to many of the locals, and one guy in particular, a local legend here, has been there 16 years, have rode out many hurricanes, one of which being Rita, which was the worst this area has seen in recent history. Um, and here's what he had to say about pre preparing for this storm. We can do it our eyes closed. We, we're so used to hurricane prep. And then, like if I'm through, it, it's, like, it's, it's a close-knit coastal community. When I'm through, hey, my neighbor across the street, you need some help, you need some, hey, can you come help me with this? So, sir, I, I, yesterday I helped two guys pull out some big offshore boats and put them on the trailers just in case. So, you know, everybody helps everybody, so it's kind of it's kind of cool. And so what a lot of people in these towns, if you've never been to coastal Louisiana, the, the communities are pretty much in the water or just above sea level. So there doesn't take much for that water to rise and then get inside. So the homes are built up and anything on the bottom, they typically will have friends or their own storage units or some sort of warehouse that they'll take uh, some of their valuables to, outdoor furniture, grills, things like that that can't fit inside um, that they'll take to higher ground in some of the local communities like here in New Iberia as they prep uh, for the events of incoming tropical storms and hurricanes. So that's Sippermore Point. If we were to go to another coastal town, one being Grand Isle, Louisiana, very vulnerable here because it pretty much juts right out into the Gulf of Mexico, surrounded by water on all sides, and is very vulnerable to storm surge, which is a concern. We actually had a little bit of flooding there due to heavy rainfall today. Let's get the latest update with meteorologist Mike Seidel. As Cristobal draws closer to the Louisiana coast, the winds have been ramping up all day here in Grand Isle, and it's picking up the sand and blowing it right down the beach from east to west. These winds are blowing onshore east-southeast. We've had gusts here 30 to 35 miles an hour. Off the coast, the winds have gusted over 50 miles an hour at some of the buoys, and the buoy just offshore has seen a huge increase in the wave heights. 
This morning, 4 a.m., about four and a half feet. This evening, there's wave flights now pushing 12 feet, and they're going to get even higher, up to 20 feet between now and tomorrow. As Cristobal is expected to make landfall somewhere in this area, look at the Gulf of Mexico, a giant, like a washing machine. This is low tide this evening. Our concern is high tide on Sunday. Sunday morning, about 11 a.m., that is when we're going to have the combined effects of the strongest winds and the high tide. And we're likely going to see the water go up over the beach, as we've seen today, and into this area between here and the hotels. It's about 100 yards to the levee, with Hurricane Barry, it went about halfway up. The other thing, a lot of rainfall, four to six inches inland, we could have some freshwater flooding and some flash flooding. And even once Cristobal goes by tomorrow night, we're still going to have a strong southerly push of wind into Monday. So the wave heights will be up, the rip currents, the undertow, a concern going into the first part of the week here in coastal areas is a Louisiana. All right, it'll be interesting to see what morning looks like in Grand Isle, especially as we approach high tide. Be sure to stick with the Weather Channel. We'll have the latest on that uh, with Mike Seidel and many of our teams scattered from New Iberia, where I am, all the way to the Florida Panhandle. So tomorrow's really go time, Mark. Uh, it's been a slow moving storm for so long, but it's finally gained up speed and you know, we're pretty much less than 24 hours from landfall. So things are going to go downhill pretty quickly, especially rounding out the weekend. Oh, absolutely. Those rain bands will only intensify from here on out. You'll have about a day or so of that, uh, the worst of the weather, and then it does move on. But there is that potential for some significant coastal impacts, a small area for the worst of the impacts, but uh, impacts nonetheless. 50 mile per hour top wind speed right now moving north at 12, as Chris mentioned. Uh, let's focus on those coastal impacts. Storm surge warnings that are up over southeast Louisiana, then curling around through southern Mississippi near Gulfport. That's a, a, a very vulnerable part of the coastline because the uh, shape of the land holds the water kind of like a, a bowl. The water gets pushed in and it can't flow back out quite as easily. There's some pretty good winds and waves on the east side, uh, 15 to 20 footers for the waves on the east side of the storm circulation already. And that uh, gets kind of brought in and it moves the water in towards that very vulnerable coastline. Uh, and so much of that northern Gulf Coast will have some sort of water rise, but it will be worse where you have that kind of cupping feature, three to five feet of water rise. That could be a life-threatening rise if your home is not on stilts, if you're not aware that that water rise is coming. Uh, after that water gets pushed in, it eventually does want to go back out to the Gulf and it breaks through the sandbar. You get these narrow breaks and channels. And so the rip current risk becomes very high over the next couple of days, even after the storm is gone, even after the sun is back out in Florida and people want to go to the beach. Be very wary the end of the weekend into early next week. The rip currents will be high. Already the winds are starting to pick up. We're seeing Grand Isle gusting to near 30. And again, that that push of the wind into that very vulnerable coastline means that we're going to continue to see that water rising already some reports of a water rise compared to where we typically would be. And so the surge is beginning and will only increase from here. Your Richie Eyes Weird Earth, premiering next Sunday at 9, only on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 77 degrees under clear skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 72. Winds light and variable. Sunday, partly cloudy skies. High 90. Winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy, low 72. Winds south southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook.
Welcome back to the Weather Channel as we are following Tropical Storm Cristobal moving through the Gulf, still, uh, you know, making that beeline northbound at this point. It's been holding steady with that northward motion over the past couple of days ever since coming off the Yucatan Peninsula. Remember, this was a tropical storm with 60 mile per hour winds before making landfall there in Mexico and then uh, doing the curl around through the Yucatan Peninsula and back into the Gulf where it lost a lot of its tropical characteristics. It was a depression for a while, uh, then regained tropical storm strength and has slowly but steadily strengthened from there. And that slow but steady strengthening is still on the forecast, calling for a 60 mile per hour tropical storm somewhere off the south uh, southern Louisiana coastline. And then once land interaction again uh, occurs, there will be less of that wind over time. One thing that's different right now uh, is that we have some fairly you know, consistent thunderstorm action near the center of the storm. I know it's weird to say that's different right now. That's all that's almost always the calling card of a tropical system, but it has been reasonably lacking until basically the past couple of hours. Those thunderstorms really came back. The overnight helps with that, but if it can sustain, that will help to lower the pressures and you'll have a slightly more organized storm by the morning. So the tropical storm warnings were issued a couple of days ago. They continue to uh, be in the very same locations from central uh, portions of coastal Louisiana back into extreme western portions of Florida. And uh, this is a, a kind of an east loaded system. We've got a new feed of tropical moisture coming in here. We already had one of those come through Florida. Uh, there's some good thunderstorms off the Florida coastline. Some with rotation would not surprise me if we wind up with a few uh, renegade tornado warnings through the night. But now we also have some of those thunderstorms percolating near that center. It's not completely surrounding it. There's a hole on the east side. There's a hole on the west side as well. But both north and south, some decent thunderstorm activity. And if that can really surround that low pressure center, then you're in business for at least the potential for some uh, strengthening. But this is a big circulation. And so those big circulations are reasonably hard to spin up quickly. I don't think we're going to get any rapid intensification. It's going to be a, a, a real difficult time getting to hurricane status. I'd argue it's going to be hard to even add five to 10 miles per hour like the forecast of strengthening calls for, but we'll probably get to just about there and then land gets in the way or run out of a, a time, right? A space uh, over the open waters. And yet the rain bands have already moved through the northern Gulf. Scattered showers and storms have arrived and they're only going to continue to increase from here. Uh, as for those uh, larger storms just off Tampa Bay, look at these. These are uh, supercell thunderstorms. There's been some rotation with these. There's a nice little hook signature on this one. Uh, it's staying off the coast for now. The direction keeps it off the coast, but eventually these storms will continue to move in and that will uh, provide yet another risk uh, as we go through the rest of the night. Scattered showers are moving through, I say Apalachicola now, starting to moisten up that atmosphere. We'll have continued rains through the rest of the night and then tomorrow. And a few of those bands uh, just outside Biloxi to New Orleans. Uh, Jackie, again, as we get that center closer, those bands become more frequent. They become heavier and even a rainfall risk of flooding into the very low lying New Orleans area. Yeah, in fact, I was just uh, checking on conditions in southeastern Louisiana and, you know, we're starting to see some of those yellows popping up and that's indicative of around an inch per hour rainfall rate. So the heavy stuff is working its way slowly but surely into Louisiana. It's been raining the last couple of hours in New Orleans. The rain here has been relatively light overall, but the winds are starting to pick up too. You know, it's been about four or five hours now that we've been seeing wind gusts around 30 miles per hour and the latest gust is now up to 35. So conditions will continue to deteriorate. Of course, New Orleans is below sea level and it's one of the areas that we do get very concerned about for the threat of flooding because they've got to pump all of that water out. Well, humans have attempted to conquer the problems of changing water levels for thousands of years. One of the oldest weapons is the levee. Here's a look at how levees work and how they can fail. Like the roads and bridges you use every day, levees are just another piece of the infrastructure often taken for granted until there's a problem. Levees are surprisingly common in the U.S. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says one out of five counties have levees. About 100,000 miles of levees wind their way across the nation. But the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for just 14,400 miles, or about 15 percent. The remaining 85,000 or so miles fall under many different local, state, and federal jurisdictions. 
At their simplest, a levee is just a pile of dirt or wall of concrete meant to hold back the water. There are four primary reasons why levees fail. They include seepage, stability, erosion, and height. Water can seep through the levee, weakening the structure from within. When a section of levee slides away, that's called a stability failure. So-called toe erosion can steepen the levee slope until the now unstable structure collapses. Finally, the levee just isn't high enough. Water flows over the top, causing the levee to fail from the top down. But most well-maintained levees don't fail. And today, hundreds of communities depend on levees for their livelihoods and even their lives. And we will be keeping a very close eye on the river levels as the heavy rain moves in with Tropical Storm Cristobal. In fact, as we take a look at the map showing you all the river gauges that will likely be in flood, that's the forecast over the next few days. And when we see those purple triangles, that means major flooding. So this isn't going to be just a coastal problem. Heavy rain will move far inland. In fact, as much as three to five inches or so. A migraine hope. The win-win. And welcome back into the Weather Channel's continuing live coverage here. We're live in New Iberia, Louisiana, where we are awaiting some of the outer bands of Tropical Storm Cristobal. The worst of the weather yet to arrive. What kind of impacts are we looking at? We're going to answer those questions and more coming up. Yeah, Chris, and we were actually experiencing some of that dry air for a good portion of our Saturday here in Biloxi, but that has since eroded away and it is raining now and I think we're in for quite a bit more rain. We're going to talk about the risks that Biloxi faces, including storm surge that's coming up. Tropical Storm Cristobal forecast to make landfall here on the Louisiana coast sometime on Sunday evening. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel. The winds are ramping up. The waves are crashing on the beaches, and we've got concerns with a high tide on Sunday. We'll talk impacts coming up here on the Weather Channel. And I'm meteorologist Jackie Jarrett. So glad you could be with us tonight. We are live until 12 a.m. Central, 1 a.m. Eastern Time, tracking Tropical Storm Cristobal. It's now nearly just shy of 24 hours from making landfall tonight. Tropical alerts are out for nearly four and a half million people as the storm approaches the Gulf Coast. Uh, Gulf Coast, rather. Here's where the storm is right now. There you can see it's just about 200 miles away from the mouth of the Mississippi River, and it's packing winds around 50 miles per hour. Very little change in strength uh, has happened through the day, and it's also been very steady with its northerly track uh, at around 12 miles per hour. Cristobal uh, has been really acting atypical because this is an asymmetrical storm. A lot of times we'll see everything kind of compact and tight strong around the center of a tropical cyclone, but we're feeling impacts far outside of that. And Florida has been hit hardest today with heavy downpours, uh, some flash flooding, and even a couple of those tropical tornadoes. So let's talk about what's going on uh, analytically as we take a look at the latest satellite imagery. And we've got a lot of dry air, which is working its way into the western side of the storm. And because of that dry air, it's really been preventing this from getting any stronger. You've got a little bit of shear across northern parts of the Gulf Coast, and the water temperatures in the northern Gulf are a little bit cooler than they are into the southern Gulf. And so all those things are kind of working against it from strengthening, which is good news. But still, it does have that opportunity about another 18 to 24 hours that it could get a little bit stronger before making landfall. But we think that the overall results and the big impacts uh, will be fairly similar in the sense that uh, we'll see the winds, we'll have some storm surge, that onshore flow, and the, the flooding rain is going to be a big concern. This is the satellite imagery, and you can kind of see a little bit more of an explosion here, or the brighter cloud tops uh, beginning to return. And so that's showing us that this is intensifying a little bit with stronger thunderstorms uh, closer towards the center. We still have a lot of dry air out here, some of that dry air trying to work its way in here as well. So you know, it doesn't look like a very healthy tropical system, so to speak. We've got a lot of rain already widespread from Louisiana all the way through uh, the state of Florida. We've even got rain into 
southern Georgia. And we've got cloud bands that reach uh, into northern parts of Georgia. Now we do have a couple of supercells offshore here. Those are rotating storms and there are marine warnings in effect uh, over the waters uh, just to the west of Tampa Bay. If those make their way on shore, we're going to get some tornado warnings. So that's definitely an area that we're keeping a very close eye on. Otherwise, it's gusty showers for you from the panhandle over towards uh, New Orleans. Some of the wind gusts are as strong as 35 miles per hour now. So those conditions will continue to go downhill for tonight with our tropical storm warnings in effect from intracoastal city, Louisiana, all the way over into the panhandle of Florida. That's where it is right now, but everybody wants to know where this thing is going. And we've got some big impacts ahead, not just at the coast, Mark. Far reaching storm when you have these big circulation areas, you have impacts far and wide away from the center. And as Jackie mentioned, it's very asymmetrical. So the west side, say near Houston, you're reasonably close to the cone. It'll be sunny. Uh, Jacksonville, pretty far away from the cone. It's going to be raining for the next 24 hours or so thanks to that tropical moisture. So here's a look at that forecast cone. All the forecast cone does is tell you where the center has the best chances of going. Uh, mind you, two thirds of the time the center stays inside the cone. One third of the time it does not. This is a function of uh, mathematics and the forecast uh, errors over the past several years averaged together to get the kind of the width of the cone at all these forecast points. Uh, it's less forecast and more historical accuracy, uh, right? Uh, when it comes to the, the shape and the size of that uh, forecast cone of the center, it has nothing to do with the impacts, right? The cone will look the same whether it's a Cat 5 hurricane or a weak tropical storm coming in. So. Don't put all your marbles in the cone basket is basically the bottom line here. It does tell you something. The east side of where the center goes will have worse impacts than the west. And so knowing where the center goes over time certainly helps you prepare for what to expect. 60 mile per hour winds is the forecast point for tomorrow morning. So that also suggests that there is at least some modest strengthening still on the way. And over time, talk about impacts far away from the coast. This could hold together as a, uh, you know, tropical depression or at least that remnant tropical moisture and spin all the way to southern Canada. By the time we get into Wednesday, it eventually meets up with a front. We'll lose some of that tropical characteristics, but some of that DNA will be there. So heavier rain than you otherwise would have seen more severe weather and including tornadoes because of the spin that will be moving out of the tropics and all the way up through the center of the country. But as for when those winds arrive, we're basically on borrowed time now. The earliest arrival time for that southern Louisiana coastline is at 2 a.m. in the morning hours, uh, you know, a few hours from now. More likely that it will be a little bit later on in the day, but th this product exists so that you know your absolute must be done preparing time by if you're putting up, you know, plywood for a stronger storm later in the season, you can rely on this type of map to tell you when that preparation needs to come to a close because you can't be putting up shutters and plywood and hanging off ladders and all that uh, stuff when it's um, uh, when there's tropical storm force winds already. It also lets you know that those winds are going to be increasing as we go through the day, even pretty far inland. Uh, and this is a look at that. Now, this is one look at a future radar product. It's not going to have the exact details of the center exactly right, but the flavor is going to be there. The banding features, the organization to this storm, it really shows that onshore flow in those bands through the morning and continuing into the after early afternoon. And many of the same areas will get hit over and over and over with some organized tropical rain uh, uh, bands uh, uh, rotating around that center. They're going to have pretty high rainfall rates. That's how we're going to get to some of our bigger numbers. They're also going to have embedded tornadoes, so a severe weather threat for tomorrow. So let's look at that severe weather potential. Morgan City, New Orleans, Gulfport, all possible for to see severe storms, and that does include the chance for tornadoes. Not every band that comes through is going to have them, but there will be isolated tornado warnings tomorrow in, in that kind of Gulf Coast area from Louisiana into Mississippi very similar to what we had in Florida earlier today. So that is one area to watch. Uh, as for where we go from here inland, we'll talk more about this coming up, but look at the potential of rainfall near where that center goes all the way up to Canada with three, four, five inches of rain. That's a significant amount of tropical moisture coming through. So back near the Gulf Coast, conditions have been worsening all day in Biloxi. And as Cristobal uh, draws closer to landfall, meteorologist Felisa Combs brings us the latest. Coming to you.
you from Biloxi, Mississippi. Some call it the playground of the South. One thing about Biloxi is it's a water city, not only for fun, but also commercially. The blessing of the fleet that would typically kind of kick off shrimping season while well, that has been postponed. And it's not just Biloxi. Of course, the northern Gulf Coast is all about their boats. They're all about those uh, water activities and things of that nature. However, with that also comes the danger. Biloxi, one of those places that is included in both a storm surge warning and a tropical storm warning. Uh, and a really from the mouth of the Mississippi east to about less than five miles from Biloxi, that's where we see both of those. That's where we're expecting the heaviest rain, the possibility for that storm surge, and also um, possibly isolated tornadoes as we head through Sunday. So you can see some of the boats here as we go just a little bit farther to the west and past Christian. You'll notice the boats docked and really just set up for the storm at this point. Probably a lot more of those boats would be out and about if we weren't dealing with this storm that's coming in. But everyone is preparing and that's going to be the story as conditions continue to deteriorate tonight. Saturday, really the day of transition from the beautiful weather that we had on Friday to the messy weather we're starting to see on Saturday into the tropical storm weather that we'll see on Sunday. So get prepared for it and just know Sunday we will see these conditions worsening. Thank you, Felicia, for that update. We'll go back to you tomorrow, of course, as those bands really do come through. Now, uh, I want to talk about those coastal impacts. That is a combination of wave action and also the uh, wind pushing that water in and, and making that water rise because of the winds uh, kind of moving that top layer and not allowing the water to come back out into the Gulf. So a storm surge that the literal push of the water because of the winds with the uh, with the storm system approaching is what that storm surge is. And this is potentially a life threatening situation. If you're not aware that this is coming, if your home is not uh, up above that uh, push of the water, this could be a significant water rise in South eastern Louisiana into southern Mississippi. Part of that is because of our circulation. Here's our area of low pressure, big time winds pushing right towards the coastline with that type of circulation, including as the low moves in. So a prolonged period of that onshore flow. Then there's the wave action on top of that 15 to 20 footers off the coast right now. And we'll continue to see that uh, kind of push of strong wind and wave action uh, moving right on through. Look at that. By the time we get into Sunday afternoon, gosh, it is really going to be coming in in earnest with regards to that uh, push of this, the worst of the wind and the waves. That, that persistent onshore flow really does pile up the water. And so eventually, uh, after you get through this water rise of what, three to five feet here in the worst case scenarios, two to four feet in the rest of southern Louisiana, and then in a large area of one to three, that water that's been built up has a higher pressure. Uh, we usually talk about high pressure and low pressure with you know the wind moving from higher pressure in the atmosphere to lower pressure areas. But in this case, the water is your high pressure as it's pushed up near land and it eventually wants to back its way into the Gulf. And it does so through those breaks in the sandbar and through narrow channels. You get these ferociously moving rip currents so the risk of rip currents through the weekend is going to be really quite high. And that includes down through uh, Florida, Fort Myers. You're, you might be back into the sunshine halfway through the day tomorrow, depending on how that tropical moisture moves. But eventually that uh, wind and water that's been piled up is going to want to leave. So a rip current threat through the weekend. Be prepared for that. If you're going swimming, stay near the guarded beaches for sure. Uh, preparations have been in high gear across areas of the Gulf Coast as Cristobal continues to move in. And meteorologist Chris Bruin has the latest from New Iberia, Louisiana. Pretty calm night here in central Louisiana. We're in New Iberia, about 20 miles south of Lafayette. We are under a tropical storm warning. We're on the western fringes of where we'll see some of the worst impacts from tropical storm Cristobal. Expected to make landfall, by the way, uh, tomorrow night into early Monday morning. So we've got the worst of the storm yet to come. So far, it's really been tranquil. We've had pretty tranquil skies. You've got a few clouds. We did see a few passing showers, but overall, a pretty calm night and nice breeze that's slowly increasing but also taking an edge off of the summer heat here in Louisiana. So a lot of locals aren't worried, but they are prepared. 
and that is something that we've seen a lot of businesses and locals uh, doing, just picking up any loose items in their yard and in their carport, knowing the winds may be a bit breezy, even gusty, as we head into Sunday night and Monday. Winds here could be anywhere from 45 to 55 miles per hour at times, and those individual squalls and thunderstorms that we see are where the worst of the weather is going to be. But remember, this is going to be an east-sided storm. We're likely going to be on the west side of the center of circulation. So that means we're probably not going to see prolific rainfall amounts like we'll see in the other part of Louisiana near New Orleans and into Mississippi and Alabama. So that's really going to limit our flash flood threat. And also the winds will be more on the east side as well. Still expect tropical storm conditions through early Monday morning and then improving weather by early next week. That's Chris Bruin in New Iberia for us this evening. And uh, Jackie, Chris mentioned that asymmetric storm uh, way east. You got Florida, but already significant impacts there. Yeah, Florida is so far away from the center of the storm, but yet they got lashed today uh, with waves. They got lashed with heavy downpours leading to flooding and even some tornadoes. So bands from Cristobal moving in this evening to Florida, producing those tornadoes, heavy rain and even some water spouts. New video into us from Navarre Beach, Florida. This is east of Pensacola and Destin. Also, the storm producing some big waves and some rough surf. Take a look at that. You definitely don't want to get into that water. It's very dangerous. Dangerous. Cristobal also having some serious effects in Florida. The outer bands kicked up a few tornadoes and we do have video of one of them from earlier today. This is in Orlando. Look at that video. You can really see the funnel very clearly. Not a very strong tornado, but doesn't take much uh, for it to cause damage. And there was some light damage. No injuries reported. That's some good news. Uh, but there were some power outages as a result of this as well. So uh, in Incredible views that we also had of a tornado and a water spout too. In fact, one of them just made its way over water. When it's over water, we call it a water spout. When it's over land, we call it a tornado. Both can be damaging depending on the situation and you need to take them seriously. It's not uncommon for tornadoes to develop with tropical systems, especially as they're making landfall. You get some of that friction and of course there's a lot of vorticity in a tropical system. So you'll get these weak little spin-ups and they can come with very little warning and they can also dissipate very quickly too, but they can be dangerous and are dangerous and need to be taken seriously. So here's a look at our TORCON numbers for today. And really, this is the main area that I'm watching around the Tampa Bay metro area. We've got some uh, some supercells offshore right now that are rotating. They haven't made their way on land, but it gives you an idea that the possibility is there. And that's something we're going to have to track tonight and into tomorrow. We've got a lot of rain still out there. Tampa, you've had well over an inch of rain already today. Uh, the rain is spread all across the big band area and into uh, the panhandle here too. Tallahassee, you've been getting some of that rain and the rainfall amounts are going to be pretty heavy. In fact, we've got flood watches and flash flood watches in effect and that's going to stay that way and the rain has already brought as much as five inches near Ocala. Third Earth, next Sunday night on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 77 degrees under fair skies. Tonight, a few passing clouds, low 72. Winds light and variable. Sunday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high. 90 winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy early with increasing clouds overnight. Low 72 winds south southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Along the Gulf Coast tonight, the winds beginning to pick up as bands from Tropical Storm Cristobal begin to move in. Meteorologist Felicia Combs is in Biloxi, Mississippi, where we have a Tropical Storm warning in effect tonight. 
Coming to you from Biloxi, Mississippi, actually in the small craft harbor right now, which is the oldest harbor in Biloxi. Now, if you know anything about Biloxi, there's a couple things you know. This is a water city. It's great for boaters. It's got a big shipping industry, and then also it's known for its casinos as well. Now, if you live in Biloxi, you probably really know how to deal with tropical systems, but we spoke with Mayor Gillich a little earlier today and talked to him about what to do if you are staying in the hotel and maybe you don't know about the tropical systems quite as well. In a hotel or one of these resorts, they, they old people, uh, they'll tell you, hey, you know, we, you're going to have to move on if, you know, if, if it intensifies to a situation where they need to close. Uh, of course, we will too. But, uh, you know, just, just stay tuned and, and uh, you, you can uh, kind of feel what's happening if, you, if you're watching the Weather Channel or some of these other, you know, uh, uh, forecasters. So we're, you know, real confident that we can handle the crowd that's here and uh, keep them welcome and keep them, you know, happy. So yeah, that's great advice. Just stay tuned to the forecast. The main thing that you need to know, especially along the northern Gulf Coast, is that those conditions continue to deteriorate as we head through tonight. We'll likely start to see those tropical storm force winds as we head through Sunday morning and throughout the day on Sunday. Sunday is going to be a rough day. That's going to be when we have the winds picking up. That's going to be where we start to see the possibility for storm, storm surge. The high tide for Biloxi Bay, which is right where we are, that's around 1143 tomorrow morning. Couple that with the onshore winds and that's something we're going to have to watch. And then of course the heavy rainfall and the gusty winds all moving in through tonight into tomorrow. All right. Thanks so much, Felicia. Well, already along the Louisiana coast, we've seen the waves picking up the wind beginning to increase. This was the scene a little bit before sunset tonight from Metairie, Louisiana. Rain coming down here and folks are preparing for the storm. Many, no stranger to storms a lot like this one. I brought my golf cart and my riding lawnmower into town in a warehouse to keep it out. I had my boat hooked up just in case to pull the boat out. Uh, my tools and stuff downstairs and some of my valuables in my outdoor kitchen, we brought that up on the porch, you know, anticipating that it wouldn't get higher than the porch, you know. Yeah. A major, major hurricane, say a Cat 4, Cat 5 coming through, we'd have to haul a lot more of this stuff out to the north but with this we just we just call it hurricane prep and we just we pick everything up the valuables I still have stuff to pick up but I brought a lot on the porch yesterday and last night just in case you know and just waiting to see if it turns well then we got more to do but we're we're three quarters of the way done with the hurricane prep just in case because if you as you all know you wait till the last minute to do the hurricane prep and you, there's no way to get it all done Oh, we've got to prepare ahead of time. We've got some new video in now out of New Orleans where heavy rain came down in the Big Easy. Tropical downpours like these are what's to come over the next 24 hours and beyond as this moves inland. Wow, you can really hear that coming down too, coming in buckets. Well, let's take you live to the city tonight. Hey, New Orleans, how you doing? I know you've had rain the last couple of hours. A state of emergency has been declared across the state of Louisiana. And, you know, Louisiana really gets the brunt of this because we're going to be seeing landfall somewhere in the southeastern parts of the state, and it's going to take pretty much Sunday night through Monday afternoon to traverse or work its way all the way across Louisiana and likely head into parts of Arkansas. So almost every corner we think of Louisiana will get touched in some way from Tropical Storm Cristobal. The western side will get off a little bit easier because you'll have that offshore flow and the air is so very dry on the western part of the storm. In fact, hardly any cloud cover here at all and it's really been preventing the center of the storm from getting stronger throughout the day today but the last couple of hours we really have been seeing this trend of an increase in thunderstorm activity especially on the north side and the south side of the of the tropical cyclone so interesting to see that happens if that trend continues we may start to see those wind speeds begin to pick up a little bit more but it's really been all about florida all day today you've been the ones that have been getting the heavy, heavy rain. Uh, you've had some flash flooding. You've also had the tropical tornadoes with damage in the Orlando area. Now the winds are beginning to pick up and I do think conditions are going to be deteriorating tonight in Louisiana. These are a look at uh, some of the buoys that are offshore, but they're pretty close to the shore and you can see some of those tropical storm force wind gusts that are 39 miles per hour or greater. So there you've got one around 40. We've got 40 over here and as we're closer towards the coast, we've got, you know, 35 plus 
plus mile per hour wind gusts. And we've already been seeing that in, into New Orleans. So those gusts will get more frequent and they will get stronger with time tonight and into tomorrow. So this graphic shows you the most likely time when those tropical storm force wind gusts will arrive. So again, that's 39 miles per hour or stronger. And there you can see them right across the southeast Louisiana coast by 8 o'clock in the morning. They will work their way towards Mobile by about the middle of the day, maybe around noon, 2 o'clock, and then head inland towards Alexandria and in, even into Jackson, Mississippi uh, later into Sunday evening. So that's just when it starts, not necessarily when it's going to be stopping because it's going to last a while as it slows down just a little bit after making landfall. We've got tropical storm warnings that are in effect from Intercoastal City all the way over towards uh, the panhandle of Florida. And here's the latest forecast track bringing it inland. We think sometime on Sunday evening working its way across Louisiana, as I mentioned, and then Monday making its way across parts of Arkansas it will continue to track northward and hook up with a cold front bringing really heavy rain and strong winds to parts of the Midwest and across the Great Lakes. So we'll be dealing with what's left of Cristobal even into the middle of next week. Earth, premiering next Sunday at 9 only on the Weather Channel. Weather getting a little bit more active again as we've been watching these supercell thunderstorms just off the coast of uh, the west side of Florida. Well, now those bands are getting close enough that they are near land. And so tornado warnings starting to be issued once again. Let's get a little bit closer in. You can see that red box uh, well south of Tampa Bay. This is even south of Sarasota, but it is still Sarasota County with that tornado warning goes until one in the morning local time and really cuts right over I-75. Here comes that storm from the coast, uh, from off the coast and goes right on land there. So that's why we started getting tornado warnings. Lots of marine warnings off the coast, but this one's got a pretty good signature with it. So let's get a little bit closer in. You can see these different colors. In this case, the green color is going towards the radar site near Tampa Bay to the north, red color going away and where you have that, you know, meeting up in between that is our counterclockwise spin. So that is the area of concern right in here, crossing over state route 45 near 41 as well. And then eventually this will go towards I-75. Let's keep that circle on the map. Let's turn this to the correlation coefficient to see if anything's being lofted into the sky uh, other than just heavy rain. And the good news here is there's no clear sign of a dropout here, no sign of a tornado that's actually lifting stuff into the air but there's enough of a circulation here that that could happen at just about any time. So timing out that circulation for you will come right through Venice Gardens at about 1230, which is uh, now. OK, so this storm is basically uh, at your location now. If you're listening to me, put as many walls between you and the storm as possible. We'll be crossing over I-75 within about 10 minutes or so and then continue north towards Shinytown just before the top of the hour. So Jackie, a tornado warning, which we were worried about with those yeah. bands of storms just off the coast. Yeah, and as folks are going to bed probably shortly tonight, they need to have a way to be alerted, by the way, when you're sleeping. So if we do get more of these warnings tonight that you can wake up and get to your safe place. Well, we're tracking the growing tropical storm uh, that's heading towards the Gulf Coast. And if you live in New Orleans, you also need to be prepared for heavy rain, for tropical storm force wind gusts. Over 50 miles per hour possible here. The governor issuing a state of emergency in New Orleans, but also all across the state. Now, if you live in Gulfport, Mississippi, you are under a tropical storm warning right now. We're going to be watching you for damaging wind gusts, some heavy downpours. The rainfall amounts here could be three to six inches and possibly could be as much as eight inches, depending where some of these heavier bands begin to set up. Storm surge also something that we're watching in Gulfport. And a live look now at Panama City Beach, Florida. You can expect the gusty winds uh, flooding with heavy rain and some storm surge. You can see the ocean already looking uh, pretty rough there with some of those waves. And Panama City is one of the places we're going to be watching, especially tomorrow, for the potential of some of those bands to set up, some of which could produce tornadoes. So be alert for that. Well, in addition to those three cities, here's what we know tonight. Mandatory evacuation orders are in effect for parts of Grand Isle, Louisiana and for parts of Terrebonne Parish. The entire state is under a state of emergency and along the Gulf Coast tonight, nearly four and a half million people are under tropical alerts. That includes parts of four different states.
Well, all along the northern Gulf Coast, conditions are now deteriorating as tropical storm Cristobal pushes towards landfall. Meteorologist Chris Bruin has the latest from New Iberia, Louisiana. Tropical storm warnings extend all the way into central Louisiana. That's where we are in New Iberia, about 20 miles south of Lafayette. It's been pretty quiet up through tonight, but Sunday is really going to be a transition day, an increase in clouds, also an increase in the rainfall. You're going to notice an increase in the winds. Winds will become a lot stronger, too, by dinner time on Sunday, heading into Monday morning. That's when we'll have the worst of the conditions. But people are preparing, not only here along Bayou Tesh, but also to our south, especially along the coastal communities, the small little fishing villages that populate the Louisiana shoreline. One of those was Sipramere Point, just south of here. And we talked to one of the local legends, and here's what he and his family was doing preparing for the storm. And uh, we'll get back to Chris in just a second. However, I do want to update you on what's happening uh, in the Gulf. We've got a tropical storm, tropical storm Cristobal, uh, still 50 mile per hour winds. But all of this kind of recent activity on the west side of Florida has a lot of spin with it, a lot of shear, and we're starting to see more tornadoes getting closer to that west coast. So here's a look at the radar picture associated with that big spin with our tropical storm. And then on the smaller scale, we've got some pretty intense spin uh, just uh, south of Sarasota. There is a tornado warning here that continues until 1 a.m. Let's get a little bit closer in. You can see that storm coming in from the coastline, moving east of Venice and about to cross over that I-75 corridor. Uh, as for the motion of the raindrops, we can take a pretty good look at this, and that rotation has tightened up even a little bit more. That red-green couplet uh, even more pronounced now. So let's take another look and see if there's any debris being lofted into the air there. Nothing. Uh, uh, jumping out at me is suggesting that we ha absolutely have debris, but that is a strengthening circulation with this storm approaching I-75. Uh, let me update you with this timing because the uh, storm has moved north just a bit. So uh, heading th uh, past Venice now and eventually we'll get towards Shiny Town just before the top of the hour if this holds together. So we'll continue to follow this warning as the circulation from a potential tornado heads near I-75. Oh, we love our new home. HQ, weekday mornings on the Weather Channel. Welcome back to our continuing coverage. Tropical storm Cristobal still moving through the Gulf, heading north towards the Louisiana coastline, but it is embedded within a huge circulation with a lot of different spin. Uh, these tropical systems, as they approach land, very often produce tornadoes, and we're seeing that again. Now, I say again because earlier today around Orlando, we had some tornadoes. Jackie's going to be back to show us some of that. Let's go into what's happening right now. Tornado warning for Sarasota County, mostly south and east of Sarasota itself. If you're in Sarasota, the storm is going to slide east of you, so that is some good news. The bad news is that it is still looking pretty well put together at this point. Uh, still moving northbound here. There's a look at the, the, the traditional mode of the radar, how much rain there is, the brighter the colors, the heavier the rain. But let's look at the motion of those raindrops. And again, very clear couplet where the reds and greens are right next to, uh, to each other. Green in this case going north, northeast, uh, uh, sorry, north, northwest towards the radar, red, south, southeast, and away. So that's our counterclockwise spin. It's just about over I-75. So traveling I-75 75 south of Sarasota about to make that big turn across South Florida. Very dangerous spot to be right now with a potential tornado coming right towards the highway. Timing that out for you, it'll be crossing the highway imminently, crossing over I-75. Uh, so again, there's all kinds of concerns with that. Most people that are traveling, especially at night, don't know exactly where they are uh, county by county and don't know the weather that's coming, uh, in this case, coming up from the south. So if you know someone traveling here, please let them know. It's basically right over I-75 right now. Uh, and then eventually going north from there towards a place like Shiny Town uh, just before the top of the hour. Remember, this warning goes until 1 o'clock local time. By that point, it'll be right about at the uh, 72, Highway 72. Shiny Town's right in here, so a crossing 72. And then if it holds together, there would have to be a new warning after that point. But this is one of what could be several more tornado warnings this evening into the late overnight hours because, uh, Jackie, there are still several other supercell thunderstorms just off that west coast that are still showing right. signs of rotation. Yeah, so make sure you have a way to be alerted after you go to bed tonight. So important to wake up and 
and get to your safe place. Uh, we've got some new video to show you of that tornado that moved through the Orlando area today. Wow, look at that. I'm trying to tell us straight over that, but can you see that? That, that piece is a debris there uh, getting lofted up into the air. This is an incredible view uh, that we have of the tornado and lots of different pieces of things that it's hitting, uh, getting lofted up. And it's incredible to see too, because this is a weak tornado, right? Um, not a very tight rotation there, but it was enough to cause damage and really lift up uh, whatever it was that it hit and bring those large pieces of uh, flying and lofted into the air and, and just thrown out ahead of it. Um, this was one of two tornadoes uh, that developed uh, today. There you can see this is another view of a tornado. And this is, I wonder if this is the Lake Conway one. I've been seeing some storm reports of a tornado over Lake Conway. Of course, when it's over water, we call that a water spout. And you can clearly see that that is a, a big funnel and the water gets caught up and lifted up into that uh, updraft there. So it makes it really visible and makes it look uh, very ominous. I believe this was the one um, that moved over the water. And then once it made its way towards land, it actually dissipated and lifted up. So incredible that these move through really populated areas today. Uh, nobody was injured, so that's the good news. Uh, we did have a little bit of damage, a little bit of structural damage, but mostly just some power issues overall. So crystal ball still a threat, and it's going to bring all kinds of different hazards with it. And keep in mind, a lot of this is going to be far outside of where the center is going to be making landfall, far outside where we see that red cone of where that track is. Keep in mind that track is just where the center goes, and we've got lots of impacts out here into parts of Florida. So a couple of the key points that I just want you to know tonight is that conditions are expected to deteriorate along the Gulf Coast, and that will be progressive overnight and into tomorrow. Tropical storm warnings and storm surge watches and warnings for the northern Gulf Coast are in effect. Storm surge, flooding rain, strong winds, rip currents, and isolated tornadoes are all possible. We saw bands from Cristobal move through coastal Louisiana, producing gusty winds and heavy rain, and that includes Grand Isle, Louisiana, and that's where Mike Seidel is this evening. Mike? As Cristobal dwells closer to the Louisiana coast, the winds have been ramping up all day here in Grand Isle, and it's picking up the sand and blowing it right down the beach from east to west. These winds are blowing onshore east-southeast. We've had gusts here 30 to 35 miles an hour. Off the coast, the winds have gusted over 50 miles an hour at some of the buoys, and the buoy just offshore has seen a huge increase in the wave heights. This morning, 4 a.m., about four and a half feet. This evening, those wave heights now pushing 12 feet, and they're gonna get even higher, up to 20 feet between now and tomorrow, as Cristobal is expected to make landfall somewhere in this area. Look at the Gulf of Mexico, a giant, like a washing machine. This is low tide this evening. Our concern is high tide on Sunday. Sunday morning, about 11 a.m. That is when we're going to have the combined effects of the strongest winds and the high tide. And we're likely going to see the water go up over the beach, as we've seen today, and into this area between here and the hotels. It's about 100 yards to the levee. With Hurricane Barry, it went about halfway up. The other thing, a lot of rainfall, four to six inches. Inland, we could have some freshwater flooding and some flash flooding. And even once Cristobal goes by tomorrow night, we're still going to have a strong southerly push of wind into Monday. So the wave heights will be up, the rip currents, the undertow, a concern going into the first part of the week here in coastal areas areas of Louisiana. Frito-Lay Variety Packs present Weekday Mornings on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 77 degrees under clear skies. Tonight, a few passing clouds, low 72, winds light and variable. Sunday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 90, winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, 
Partly cloudy early with increasing clouds overnight. Low 72. Winds south southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. This storm a prime example that the impacts from tropical systems don't necessarily stay near the center. Well, we're going to talk about the latest conditions with Cristobal and where the impacts will be and why they're not necessarily right in here where our area of lowest pressure is. Uh, now we're seeing some thunderstorm action near that center now. It's sustaining at least north and south of the center. There's still some holes in there, but 50 mile per hour winds moving north at 12 and uh, tropical storm warnings that are up across southeast Louisiana and then and eastbound from there to extreme western portions of the Florida Panhandle. Uh, and yet, look at all this action going on on that east side. That's where a lot of that tropical moisture is going to hang out as we go through the rest of the overnight and really through the life cycle of this storm is going to be an east heavy uh, storm. Uh, with that in mind, that's where the tropical moisture is going. That's where the spin is going. And the Storm Prediction Center is watching a large area from the Big Bend of Florida all the way back down to Fort Myers. That area circled in red, uh, about an 80% chance of a tornado watch at this point. So kind of a watch watch. We're not there yet, but uh, pretty likely that within the next couple of hours, we're going to have a tornado watch be issued. We've already had some storms sh uh, show signs of rotation and need tornado warnings. One of them came uh, off from off the coast and went to the east side of Sarasota, really fizzled out uh, in the most recent couple of scans here. So that's why that tornado warning is no longer there. But this is a supercell. This was a supercell. So that potential is still uh, reasonably high that we're going to see more tornadoes or at least more tornado warnings through the nighttime hours. As for where the center goes, you got a landfall potential late tomorrow or well, at this point, almost late today, central time. Uh, we're looking at uh, 60 mile per hour winds Sunday morning by late Sunday landfall occurs somewhere in southeast Louisiana, a, kind of a, a, a more organized ball of tropical rain and wind uh, will then come together after landfall, which doesn't always work out that way, but it looks like this will actually get a little bit more organized in that regard uh, after landfall. And that kind of feed of tropical moisture will go all the way up through the Midwest. So when you look at that potential for heavy rains, it's not just a story here. It's also going to go right up through the center of the country with some steady rain. So first, Things first near the coast. We're talking about flood potential from southeast Louisiana, but then all the way around the Gulf Coast to central and portions of southern Florida. Jackie, uh, again, a great example that these storms are never exactly the same as another, yeah. and this one's going to be really loaded on that east side. Definitely. Well, New Orleans is getting ready for all that tropical storm Cristobal has to bring, and you're getting some pretty good rain right now. In fact, you've had rain the last couple of hours. The wind gusts have been picking up to around 30, even as strong as 35 miles per hour, and conditions will continue to deteriorate tonight. Of course, New Orleans below sea level, so they use pumps to help bring any water that comes in from the rain out and it will be one of the places we'll be watching as well as along the river here too and you know humans have attempted to conquer the problems of changing water levels for thousands of years one of the oldest weapons is the levee here's a look at how levees work and how they can fail like the roads and bridges you use every day levees are just another piece of the infrastructure often taken for granted until there's a problem. Levees are surprisingly common in the U.S. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says one out of five counties have levees. About 100,000 miles of levees wind their way across the nation. But the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for just 14,400 miles, or about 15%. The remaining 85,000 or so miles fall under many different local, state, and federal jurisdictions. At their simplest, a levee is just a pile of dirt or wall of concrete meant to hold back the water. There are four primary reasons why levees fail. They include seepage, stability, erosion, and height. Water can seep through the levee, weakening the structure from within. When a section of levee slides away, that's called a stability failure. 
So-called toe erosion can steepen the levee slope until the now unstable structure collapses. Finally, the levee just isn't high enough. Water flows over the top, causing the levee to fail from the top down. But most well-maintained levees don't fail, and today hundreds of communities depend on levees for their livelihoods and even their lives. And we'll be keeping a very close eye on river levels over the next several days. In fact, at least over the next week. And the forecast is showing that many different river gauges, especially along the Mississippi River Valley, are expected to go in flood or at least some stage of flooding. Minor in the orange triangles, moderate in the red, and some of these uh, purple triangles. That's major flooding, and that goes way into the Midwest. So what this tells you is that this is not just a coastal storm, that we're going to see that moisture tracking from Cristobal get pulled far up towards the north and this will make its way into the Midwest and that energy is going to hook up with a cold front and a trough in the upper levels of the atmosphere to bring the heavy rain but also some pretty strong wind gusts in parts of the Midwest as well as into the Great Lakes so that's going to be more of a Tuesday into your Wednesday event so we just really want to give folks a big heads up that there will be a quarter of some damaging winds and the threat of flooding stretching far inland as for your Sunday the flood threat primarily for parts of Louisiana as well as in Mississippi, but we got to watch some of those bands and where those set up, they will likely bring some flooding rains. Expect that into Florida, especially the panhandle will need to be on guard tomorrow. Domino's is serious about.